going to be doing some DS1 remastered randomization with enemies and items. Um, I have all of the settings in a video that I recorded that will be in the YouTube video when it's done. So I'm just going to tell you what the settings are, but they'll be shown on screen so you can verify that it's legit. And also there was a comment about the jelly beans of how you're going to verify that that's legit too. So we're going to make Let sure that unless you think that off camera I have a second thing mended. open, I'm going to show you every single time I so spin the, the little wheel. Mended. Every time I pick a jelly bean and also I'm going to open it dude. so you know it's sealed because um, obviously somebody could easily just lie about it. These things don't taste that bad. I I've eaten 75 of them at once before. It didn't taste great, especially because some of them are spiked, like some of them are super, super flavorful, which is not good. It doesn't taste that good, so we're going to have to suffer a little bit, but not as much as the average person ready for this one. So settings for the randomizer, we got um, replace bosses only with bosses, replace normal enemies with bosses or normal enemies, replace NPCs with nothing, so just leave them the same. The replacement chance is 100% for all of those. Then the mode is fully random plus easy asylum, just because uh, since we're gonna be making this like a one day thing, hopefully, I don't wanna be stuck in the asylum for an hour. That's kind of unnecessary. I think most people would wanna see me probably move out of that. So that's just, you know, basic, most people would do that. Enemy placement is only where they physically fit in the map because there's a lot of large enemies that clip through the environment and it can cause problems. 10% chance of randomization for um, boss bosses becoming, or sorry, normal enemies becoming bosses. So you'll still see maybe Gwyn, maybe, hopefully not Seath, but you know, like Manus, maybe something else randomly roaming around in place of like an undead soldier or something like that. Let's That's where it gets kind of fun. So Those are the fun things. And then for items, so the world might be mended. We got. Hope all is well and happy Friday, Squeal Prey. Vex, thank you so much for the reset, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through the alerts in a second. Um, so the difficulty is unfair. Um, so there's fair, unfair, and very unfair. Very unfair doesn't make sense for a one day thing. I can definitely just crank the settings and make it almost impossible on a day where we're not timing it, and it's not just a single thing. But unfair key placements not shuffled just because that's just unnecessary amounts of of uh, time wasting right now at least. Soul items are shuffled, starting uh, items, I don't really care what we start with, but it says shield and one two hand weapon. Fashion souls is uh, enabled, laundromat mix up I've never even heard of, but I enabled that as well, which I think means that the starting class has really weird uh, items on the Let's armor slots. But that's the settings. The uh, these are the, the jelly beans. Let me just so open, the world might be mend. let me open OBS really quick. Glad to see so I can you see back. myself, Wheel there up. we go. So these are the jelly beans. They're the American version. I live in Canada and I believe that when I did this the last time, uh, because we did do just a regular Dark Souls run with the jelly beans, um, I think it was the Canadian version. So one of the flavors was different at least, maybe even two of them. We got liver and onions, cappuccino, old bandage, pomegranate, rotten egg, buttered popcorn, toothpaste, berry blue, which is a weird name. Barf, peach, stink bug, which is completely new. I've never seen stink bug before. Um, toasted marshmallow, booger, juicy pear, dirty dishwater. I don't recommend drinking dishwater. If you know what that tastes like, that's just gross. But I think the closest comparison, if you've worked at a restaurant before, you know what the dirty dishwater smells like. It's probably going to taste like that. Birthday cake, uh, stinky socks, tutti frutti, dead fish, and strawberry banana smoothie. So there's some good flavors. I'm going to be basically eating all of them no matter what. So at the end, no matter how well I perform, I still have to eat everything remaining. And I'm going to open these on camera right now and get the spinner ready. Every time I do the spinner, I'm going to show you. And every time I pick a jelly bean out of here, I'm going to show you as well. And then I'm going to catch up with everything in chat before we start this. I don't actually have a sharp object near me right now, which is actually... An assailant's best case scenario if someone was going to walk up. I usually do actually have sharp things around me at all times. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I could use my nail. I guess I could just like dig into it. I just don't want to like break the box completely. There we go. Okay, we got, we got it open. There we go. Cool. Seamless. Boom. It's open. You can see inside. There's a bunch of stuff. I don't want to spill any of them. Um, the board... I believe is underneath. It's underneath the ones on the side. So I'm gonna have to like pour some of these over. And this is the little spinny wheel. It's really hard to read. But I mean, you can pause it if you need to read a little bit better to verify the spins. I'm really just not, I'm not trying to, to screw with you guys today. Like I'm doing this for real. It's not, I don't really care about trying to fake this. This is uh, This is fun. I've been looking forward to it. Long overdue. So 
just to get us started for fun, I'm just going to spin. Let's, we're, we're just going to do it right now, just to see what we're getting ourselves into as a freebie. So it's not really spinning that well. Okay, let's, let's see what that is. Uh, we got Barf or Peach. Let okay. be so that one looks like mended. orange with red specks. So, the world might be mended. so I believe it Yo, is this one right back. here. Orange with red specks. I got Peach. The universe was in my favor today. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Also, if there's any issues with the audio and everything like that, since we have been doing some music on the stream here and there, let me know. I think it's all back to how it was. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Um, Sir Dash, thank you for the 33 months. Vex, thank you for the 46 months. Uh, that all is definitely well. I appreciate it, man. Hope everything's going well for you, too. Um, Orca, thank you for the 33 months as well. Double 33s. Damn. Zymor, thank you for the 49 months and for the Prime sub. Welcome back. Why are you torturing yourself again? Because I just like doing things that are crazy. This is wild, dude. <laughs> no, I'm joking. This isn't even, this is just like, this is nothing. This is just, it's fun. I, I was like, if we're going to do a randomizer, we got to spice it up a little bit. It's a good way to do it. But any, anyone that says the jelly beans are like an actual challenge, I think they might have like taste buds that are really powerful or something, or they can't control like the response to nausea. I don't know, or whatever. I have, a, I have a friend that can't drink things that taste bad, but like, I was like, why don't you just not breathe? And it's like, I don't know if it's because they haven't learned how to do that or it, it overpowers that as well, or the flavor after, I'm not sure. But I was used to eating a lot of stuff where I just wouldn't breathe when I was younger. So <laughs> some people might be able to relate. All right, let's go with Jelly, Jelly Boy. And we have all these classes that are randomized right off the bat, too. So Warrior has the Silver Knight starting armor with the Knight boots, it looks like. And I think that is a Mail Breaker, Hollow Knight shield. Um, we got Domnal of Xena, or Donal of Xena mask with, I think that's the Thief or Assassin like armor. Uh, that is the... It's that weapon. It's the ghost weapon. It's the weapon you get from the ghosts. And then we got the crystal ring shield from Butterfly with Alder Knight leggings. We got stone armor, chest piece, black knight helm on Wanderer with the bandit knife, the heater. It looks like a heater shield. And I don't know the boots. I think they might be Hawkeye boots. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, by the way. It's been a while. Also, that's another thing, too. It's been a long time since I've played this game or just like these kinds of games consistently. So uh, thief, crystal armor. Uh, brig brigand headpiece. We got a wooden shield of some sort with a crest on. I think crest wooden shield or something. Some sort of spear. I don't know if that's the partisan. I think it's wing spear. And then boots are sorcerer or something like that. Same thing with this guy with the bandit as the uh, was it the the knight? Got the ghost knife. Oh, heads in the way of the character. No, no. Okay, we'll just pretend that that's actually not happening. <laughs> I'm going to run through them again as well. We'll just overlay the audio or something like that. Yeah, I'll take the face cam off. We got, again, boom. This dude. This dude. This dude. This dude. And then the aforementioned bandit who shared the knife with the knight that I was talking about before my head got in the way. Uh, that's a cool shield. I think that's the regular crest shield of some sort. Um, we got the uh, Oswald of Kareem hat, the judgment hat or something like that. Brigand armor and then chain boots. Hunter's got Solaire's armor piece uh, for the chests. Crystal ring shield and then I don't know if that's washing pole. It looks like it. And crystal boots. No helmet. Oh my god. <laughs> got the uh, Xanthus crown. Looks like wanderer armor. I don't even know what that armor is. Reminds me of the Dark Souls 2 and then some sort of I guess it's like a long sword or a short sword I think. Probably short sword. Some random boots. Black Knight chest piece. Uh, battle axe. I don't even know what that helmet is. That looks new. Oh, it's because of the collar. It's clipping through the helmet. Okay. And then you got the uh, Chandler robes on the bottom. More crystal armor and Havel boots. Ooh. Okay. It's going to be kind of an advantage having some crazy armor, I think, right off the bat. And then this guy's just pretty much naked, as Deprived would be. Normally, you got the bloated head. And then the tail from the Sanctuary Guardian that has poison. 
I don't want to pick that just because it's a bad weapon. I think I'm just going to go with something that's like kind of well-rounded here. So stats-wise, that would be the warrior or the bandit. But the, the weapon on the bandit is a little sus for me. I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with bandit. Let's do it. Master key, and then just... You know what? Let's give this guy here. Just in case. Give him a ponytail. Make it green. Is there green? Not really, no. <laughs> Why is there no green in this game? Okay, I'll make it dark blue. And then I'll start the clock. Let me just make sure the hotkeys work for it. Yes, they do. Okay, perfect. Let's go. Bring back the face cam as well. In the age of ancients, Boom. the world was unformed. The distortion on the theme song. So that actually happens on Twitch sometimes with the audio encoding. Like, I wish it was on my end, but I'm pretty sure you could reset the browser and it'll actually go away. Okay, so we got the dungeon cell key. I did like a really brief run through of just the first like minute just to see that, that it worked. So we got a capper demon in there, T-posing. The rat, capper demon down in the uh, the place where the asylum demon would be. Also, uh, El Nombre, what's up, dude? Welcome back. Anyone that said hi or asked a question, you guys can just repeat whatever you said, just because I was trying to explain everything thoroughly so you guys know what we're actually doing here. Um, and again, on death, on specifically death, is when I spin the wheel and we pick out the jelly beans. And then at the very end, I eat everything that's left all at once, one bite. And I have to savor it too. I have to show you that I'm enjoying it. It's got to be nice and slow. I got to leave it in my mouth for a little bit. Get it, get it nice and marinated in there. Hey, who do we got? Who do we got? Oh, it's Taurus Demon. Okay, that's gonna be easy. That's fine. I think. Uh, repeat of a question, Gandalf. You want to ask me something? As a person who always appears to be very nice to people, why do you choose to be nice as opposed to being an ass? Uh, so I don't actually believe in, like, that kind of stuff. I don't believe in nice and mean. It's kind of like, um, so, easiest way to explain it, uh, the way that you, um, like, ultimately believe and view things is how everything gets influenced. So, like, if you're just going to be an ass, it's probably because you view that other things are, like, kind of antagonizing you, like, that you're being, like, a vic you're a victim of some sort. If you're not a victim, you can't really, like, waste time trying to cause trouble or give other people problems as often, right? Like, it's... Unless you just need to learn a lesson, but... It's based on your view, so, like, the ass thing would just be good because your perspective is flawed in the sense that you're not serving yourself the best you could because if you were, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that's how I look at it. But, like, nice and mean and all that to me... Like, I'll say those words, but it's a little bit more oh, complicated than that. you, thank goodness. There's a lot of context to I'm things. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I wish to ask something of you. You Dude, he's looking I, fly today. Holy dead. shit. Here That's a are. really cool armor set combination. I like that. Wait, is that because of the um Wait, he's got a mask on and he's got the, the the judgment thing that we were just looking at. Is that normally like that? I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. That's weird. Regrettably, I have failed. You believe in don't be a dick? <laughs> but perhaps well, you can The way the you torch act lit. in that sense is going to be family. reflected, right? So, you know, it's it's kind of like um, as above, so below sort of thing. Like the laws of how things work are just, it's it's a mirror. So um, I was having this conversation with a friend. They didn't believe me, they, but I guess that's probably why they had the problem in the first place. Um, that like the reason certain things happen uh, could be a little bit more profound. It's not just because like, oh, I'm going to visualize this or I, I'm putting my focus into this and then this happens. It's more so if you portray the idea of not like the the thing missing or whatever the thing is not actually happening at the current state you're actually putting it out there that that's actually how reality is rather than if they already become the thing right there's no actual like the transitory period for change of things like that is a decision it's not actually like this time frame it's that you think it might be because it's not it's not like a linear matter that's that's how i think of stuff forest even stuck dude Ooh. All right, let's use the ghost blade. We're gonna die right here. Wait, okay, let's see if we can get behind him. Can you jump? 
Dude, he's just wrecking everybody. Okay, if he can jump, I'm... Yep, there we go. Oh. Imagine this was every time I got hit. So now, what happens here? Do I automatically... Oh. That's awkward. <laughs> That's kind of weird. I thought I, I thought the one that was down that jumped down was the guy outside. So he, so that's really really lucky or unlucky I guess that there's two Taurus statements. <laughs> Your breath is gonna smell so bad. I I'll tell you how it is after I'll ask somebody. <laughs> also marvelous. What's up, dude? How's it going? Holy shit, hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of just going wilderness right now with the hair in general. I'm not gonna scare anybody too much. Don't worry. <laughs> like I still I still cut it, but like. A lot less. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, okay, we're healing. We got it still. This weapon's not too bad on Taurus Demon. Oh. Okay. Oh, that was under the weapon. <laughs> Yeah, I need to fast roll. All right, there we go, out of Asylum. So this was a technically easy Asylum. Uh, Fuzz, I'm doing good, how are you? Miss the deep thinking, Marvelous? <sighs> I'd like to call it deep thinking, but it's almost kind of just like, a thing you can do like so what I just said you can try that and you can prove to yourself that it's actually how things work like you, you can test it over and over again it never fails there's a consistency with that and you'll actually you could read a ton of books and it'll tell you the same thing um and there'll, there'll be a reason for it um and it's kind of like intuitive too so you like everyone already knows why that's the way it is and you can actually identify with it but you might not associate it with what I'm talking about properly so when you make the connection and realize that's how things are working then it, be it becomes a little bit uh of a different way of explaining it, so it might not be easy to understand me explaining it that way. Because, like, you might be like, oh, one plus one equals two, but maybe there's, like, a way more, like, fundamental thing happening before we even get the numbers, right? To make the one a one or something like that. Or for the purpose of the equation. Because, like, if I just say one plus one equals two, why? Why are we even calculating that? Why? What's the importance of it? Right? So, if there's no context, it becomes... Hard to actually answer. What's randomized? The enemies, the items, um, and then the key items are all the exact same as they normally would be. I also am randomizing the jelly bean selection by spinning a wheel, picking a flavor, and the flavor could be one of two things. It could be a nice flavor like peach or uh, barf, <laughs> for example. But it's every time I die. So if I don't die on this, it'll actually kind of be a little bit disappointing. Like I almost want to die. I think if there's a likelihood it's going to happen, especially like maybe four kings or, you know, look at this area. We got two gargoyles. We got the bloated head guys. But they're T-posing though because they're kind of glitched out, right? So some enemies you might get lucky where they're not actively able to do anything in these areas, just depending on exactly how it shuffled them. And then other ones might just surprise you completely. Worst bean flavor that I have on tap. Dirty dishwater sounds like the, the worst one, or dead fish. Because I remember dead fish in the other box that I had before. Let's there, there was one that was like super so flavorful, and it was so bad <laughs> that it was really hard to get the flavor out of my mouth made. after. Like it was almost like stuck in my teeth hey, or something. Smile. Like the the actual, whatever the, the, like maybe there's a powder they put in it or something, but it was like there was like grains of the powder like in my teeth. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh shit! Oh dude, we got- Whoa! Okay, this is bad. This is very bad. We were talking about trying to not die. This is terrible. <laughs> dude, he died! Wait. Oh no, he didn't die. I thought he died. Let's see if we can get him to jump off. See ya. And then we might actually have to fight the, the king right here. Got Drake's sword. Ooh, okay, I'll use that. Thank. Oh, I can't. I can't even two-hand. Whew. Pie Creek, thank you for the three months. Jim, thank you for the good luck, dude. Look, look, he's streaming DS. 
I've, I've seen that comment on so many different genres of videos and I'm, I'm wondering if like people actually do wake up somebody in their household to say like, yo, they dropped the video. Grant, so the I just imagine someone made. jumping on the bed and like annoying their family so the <laughs> or their significant other or something. Six years and you never told me you had the juice card, man. Come right on in, man. Oh yeah, the, the juice card. So anyone that didn't uh, hear the story from TwitchCon Vegas, I, I went there and there's a parking lot where the guy didn't let us in, me and Fox were in the car. And we had to drive back around the city twice and go back to him again because we're like, this is the right parking lot. And he's just like, he saw the passes after we came back the second time. He's like, damn, baby, I didn't know you had the juice card. And there, there we go. Apparently the four kings have the juice card too. And then he let us in after that. All right, we got to pick one. Here is the uh, the wheel. And I also can't see any of this right now. Like, it's, it's hard to read in the first place, but I can't actually see through the thing and read them. So... That's like a legit spin right there. Oh, we got Peach and Barf again. That's crazy. Okay. So we got one right here. Peach or Barf. <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> That's Barf. <laughs> that is Barf. That's barf, but it also kind of tastes like if you took, like, Chef Boyardee ravioli in a can and let it expire on the counter for a really long time, and then you ate it. It tastes what I would imagine the tomato sauce tastes like on the edge of the can when it's gone bad and it's turning black, and it's, like, dry because it's it's exposed to the air and you didn't seal it up properly. Oh, my God, dude. Still chewing? Ooh. Because you need, you need to, It sticks to your teeth. That's the problem. It just the flavor will remain if you don't get it out of your teeth. Tastes like cold ravioli. Dude, it tastes like expired ravioli. <laughs> like, that's the only way I could put it. tastes like it had a milk product in it, it like our cheese, and it, the cheese expired or something. It's like there's like mold or something like that. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, but that's that's what my mind goes to. <laughs> that's a powerful flavor, dude. Holy shit. Hope your stomach's doing good. Yeah, today I, I ate some decent food beforehand, but I made sure to leave room for a lot of jelly beans. Because they still have sugar in them, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think it's still the same thing. I want these items. Ugh. Oh. Okay. Got the dragon headstone. There's one more still? So this guy's gonna one-shot me no matter what. Unless I uh, put on armor, which would not be safe around him with the, the slow rolling. I wonder if I can go up here. If he does overhead, he might be able to hit me. Ooh, parkour dude. He's so fast. Oh. Zyklonic, I'm doing good. How are you, man? How have you been? The timer's messed up. Oh, it's uh, shaved off a little bit on the side. Okay, I'm going to fix that. Must have been uh, when I moved the chat or maybe the, the box for it. Wasn't the right size in the first place. Under boots, okay. This guy didn't see me. I can't remember if they drop anything good. I know they can poison you or toxic or something like that. He's confused, okay. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so Valley of Drake's already is terrible. That that like Sanctuary Guardian, one of the kings, and the um like the the zombie dog thing, whatever the hell this thing is. The dog skeleton? That's crazy. But the bridge looks pretty safe, though. Looks like some hollows. And then a butcher at the very end I can see in the distance. And a... Is that a regular dog? Okay, let's get the bonfire and then we'll come back there. Just gonna try to grab as many items as I possibly can because the way it's randomized... Um, I didn't tell you what the settings mean. I'm gonna go more into detail on that when I actually make the intro for the, the video for this. But... Um, the... The items that are more out of the way are more likely to be good items, so it's it's not easy to find good items unless you actually search for them with the way that it's shuffled. So I'm not going to just run into a Black Knight Albert in the middle of a path. Most likely, you know. <laughs> uh, Aiden, uh, it has been a while, dude. It's been a while since I streamed, man. I'm doing good. How are you? Like, technically, I came back yesterday. Uh, I was doing some, some Clone Hero. 
And anybody that wasn't there for that stream, um, to catch you guys up on what I've been doing, so I made a music channel, I uploaded a bunch of stuff to it, um, basically learned how to play drums competently enough to pull off videos, and then the goal is to just scale the, the skill level for that till the end of the year, the point where I can play live with a band and, you know, people like it and stuff. Um, and also just be decently fluent in four different genres, uh, improv-wise. So that's the goal. The start of it would, was just using Clone here to practice a little bit, um, and then just get coordination down. But, the channel has a bunch of stuff uploaded to it. I'm gonna be teasing those videos. I'm gonna show you a minute, or like 30 seconds to a minute of each one that is already uploaded, and then it'll be live on Sunday. Um, with probably, a, I wanna say about an upload per week right now, just because I don't think it'd be smart to do more than that since I only have like three videos, four, four as of today is the goal, but I only have three videos right now that are already on there. So you'll see a band with Faraz, that'd be amazing. <laughs> um, here, let's fix the time really quick. And in the magic of Hollywood and cinema and all these other things behind the scenes you guys don't see, it will be like it never happened. Oh, you know what it was actually? It wasn't even uh, OBS. It was because the actual timer itself wasn't fully on the screen. I've never seen that before. Hopefully it looks better now. That's weird. Um, yeah, ban with Faraz would be crazy. I remember the thing with Faraz that was interesting is he asked me a question that no one has ever asked. I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever asked it that's not even in the music in general, like it's a question that's kind of weird. He wanted me to explain music theory to him and just like the idea of like vibrations and different things like that with sound in a simple way that a layman can understand. And he said that he actually could differentiate between intervals in sound after I explained it to him as someone that has no sense of like what music is or anything like that at all. And he's like, that was a really good explanation. I was like, that's cool that you wanted me to explain it to you. I'm surprised, you know, most people don't want to like understand anything. Well, it's Friday, you're off work with a pizza, and I'm playing DS1. It's a good day. Also, oh, shit. <laughs> what? Dude, he's still the same, but he's got different armor. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> what? I didn't... Oh, okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have stopped there. I shouldn't have, like, slowed down. That's bad. <laughs> okay, we'll do, we'll do another spin. Let's see. I wish this thing spun better. He's like a bearing or something like that. There we go. That's a uh, birthday cake or dirty dishwater. Damn it. Hey, wait. Birthday cake's pretty cool though. So this one is white, and then it has like the rainbow speckles, kind of like actual birthday cake. So I think you just make sure it's the right one. Yeah, it's this one. Pretty good. Oh boy. Okay, it's dirty dishwater, but it's not. It's. It's different than I thought it would be. It actually tastes like soap. But like really strong though. That's not even, that's not even like really bad, but that's kind of like weird though. That's like, that doesn't even taste that bad. Okay, I'm not, I'm not as worried as I thought I was. I thought dirty dishwater would be one of the worst. It's, it doesn't taste dirty. It just tastes like actual water and soap. They used real soap for it, really? Do they actually? Oh man, turn on the stream and lo and behold, he's doing uh, Taekwondo. <laughs> uh, oh man, Jonald McDonald, what's going on dude? The run, it's just beginning, you made it here. For the very beginning, I'm gonna try to see what is in, in place of Taurus Demon. And not die to Havel. I don't think I can kill him right now, he's probably gonna one shot me no matter what. I could try to parry, but... Ugh. Just gonna make sure he doesn't slam me at the door. Yeah, and we've eaten two jelly beans so far. Or three technically if you count the first one before we started, but two two deaths. Let me see if I can remember how many. And what I can do too, as an uh, just like an overlay detail, in the actual video for this that's edited, I will put the total deaths on screen. We'll have a counter. Um and yeah, as far as the stream goes, I'll try to remember. So two, oh my god. Or, or more like you guys will remember. I'll just, I'll forget and I'll be like, 26, no, 20, 28. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally remembered that. Oh, we got Priscilla, is she gonna go invisible? Damn it. What? Oh, it's one of these guys too. Okay, I gotta kill him before he sees me. 
These things are dangerous. They're very, very hard to engage with head on. Yeah, that's like almost dead right here. That's really bad, dude. The hitbox is like just invisible. This is going to be a fun run. I'm super excited because I haven't done a randomizer for a long time. And if I'm going to play any of these games just casually, randomizers are really fun. That's one of the best ways. Oh. I had another idea um, yesterday, though, and I was talking about it on stream a bit where I want to play a game that is like turn based at the same time as beating this game. And I play with one hand and maybe it's also randomized at the same time. And I have to beat uh, at least a certain objective or goal on one of the like, on like the turn based game and then also beat this game as well. And I'm trying to think of a way where like it's not a game that's so long that maybe maybe I could beat both. Okay, she's invisible. I don't think this is gonna work too well. I have 33k too. Uh, you know what? Wait, do I have homework bones? Oh, we could plunge. Baldur's Gate 3. I was thinking of like Pokemon or something like that, or maybe like Final Fantasy. I don't know if she can jump on you. That didn't do anything. Maybe she doesn't have a plunge animation. Uh, Pi, thank you so much for the 65 months. Welcome back. The run you're describing sounds awful. <laughs> it's it's more appealing because of that. I don't have a homeward bone. I have dark sign. That's it. Oh, this is bad. She's going to be like right here in a second. Oh, there, there she is. Yeah, okay. Like, it's possible to do this. I just... I think one hit from her will kill me. So let's... Let's put the armor on. Take the... Is there a shield that I have? I don't have a shield at all. There we go. Came a little bit faster now. We could literally just do this over and over again. <laughs> you saw someone play a match of SC2 and Hearthstone at the same time, but a long turn base game is difficult to find. I'd say, yeah, that's... That's more of the issue there. Okay, she doesn't kill me in one hit. That's good, but the bleed, though... So I can't take a back-to-back -back hit. You should play more Dead by Daylight. You kicked butt as nurse. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you like the, the nurse gameplay. Like, the thing with me with multiplayer games is, like... I'm, I'm always up for playing them. It's just... I also like doing the single-player stuff like this a lot, too, so... But if there's a really cool multiplayer game... Like, that comes out in the future and pe people from this community actually like it, that would be amazing. You know, Dead by Daylight, I think some of you guys like it, but some people just, obviously, it doesn't carry over. Okay, she's right there. Nope. We can't even see footsteps. They didn't even animate, like, the, the effect on the snow. So I guess that's the actual environment, not, not her or something. The knife is also such bad reach. Okay. There we go. 44. Oh my god. No, oh, there we go. We're dead. Rip 33k. Let's continue. So if I can stay alive until I get a homeward bone, I can go back there and then just save the thing that we dropped. The 33,000. Alright. Let's do another one. There we go. Let's see. Got oh, it's right between berry blue toothpaste and strawberry banana dead fish. You guys can vote. You want me to do toothpaste or dead fish? And if I get lucky, it would be berry blue or st strawberry banana smoothie, I believe. The fish, okay. Just want to make sure it's like actually the right one. I think. Oh yeah, the one that's not clear is the. Uh, the because there's two that look almost the same. This one right here. Okay, here we go. Because then that would be bad if I was eating the wrong one. There we go. Oh! Oh, God. Dead fish. Yep, dead fish is the worst so far. <coughs> Shit. 
That's actually fucking strong, dude. <laughs> my eyes are watering. <laughs> oh my God. Dead fish worse than barf. Uh, I don't know if I ate. Did I eat? Yeah, actually, no, I know. I know. I ate the barf one. Yep, you're right. Uh. <coughs> oh, the dead fish one's strong, dude. Dude, the dead fish one's pretty strong. <laughs> Doesn't it just taste like fish? No, it tastes like the smell of when dead, like actual fish die and they wash up on the shore. And then you drive by and it's like, well, we have to literally like die while we're in the car, you know? <laughs> Your family just does the windows up, but it still can't get out of there. It's just already in there, you know? Rotting, it tastes like rotting fish, yes. It tastes like the smell of rotting fish. But this, that one was like really strong in the beginning and then it kind of dies down. So even though it's still like in my mouth, my teeth, not as bad as the barf aftertaste the barf but like the initial hit is like rotting fish all right we got Havel's ring and we got tiny beings ring that's really cool or sorry no this is steel protection my bad so we got physical defense increase uh just drake sword i still can't use that's not too bad of damage there's no crystal lizard here I wonder if he's going to drop an item. Oh, that's not good. Spam. So many chemicals in chemistry labs smell like rotting fish. Not fun. I can imagine. I mean, the like the first time I ever had pure iodine or whatever the concentration of iodine it was, it was the dropper. Th that flavor is the worst flavor I've ever tasted in my life of anything. It's like the only thing worse than that would probably just breathe, be like breathing sulfur for like 24 hours or something. I don't know. But, but like pure iodine, if you have enough of it. Is, is absolutely disgusting. It's so strong. So the tree guy. Oh, he's not even running. You don't have sweet ones to get the taste out? I do have sweet ones as well, but I'm not going to eat the sweet ones randomly. It'll just, or like because I want to get the taste out, it'll just be if I spin the thing and it selects a flavor. So whenever I pick one up, I don't know what it's going to be. One of two flavors. I'd have to get lucky. What would make you consume iodine? Uh, so you want a healthy amount of iodine in your diet. It was when I was doing a restricted diet that didn't have a high amount of iodine in the foods that I was eating. So I would just supplement with it. And even just a drop of it was really strong. Benefit of iodine? Uh, it's good for thyroid health. Like, most commonly is what, that, that that's that's a good reference as well. I'm sure it has some other benefits too, but I know a lot of people cite the benefits for thyroid health and just being overall balanced with obviously every nutrient, micro nutrient out of the spectrum and all the metals and all the things you can have, you know. Faster than light? I actually have never played faster than light. It, it'd probably have to be a game that I played before so I can actually have a chance of beating both of them, right? So, you know what actually would be crazy? Like, maybe, um, oh, I have, uh, I don't have the cartridge for it anymore, but I'm pretty good at the, uh, the old Yu-Gi-Oh games. That'd be a good one. Prevents goiter? Yes, you could, you can also prevent a lot of, like, issues that would form around that area. That's why there's iodized salt. Exactly. But, so that's the thing, like, some people avoid the, uh, iodized salt. Or, if you don't have a lot of dairy or seafood or something like that. Um, there's still amounts in other things, but I think it's a little higher in, in those. Goes down easier with a tablespoon of cinnamon. <laughs> oh, I got a mushroom guy. So these guys are really strong, as far as I remember. I'm gonna kill him, but I'm gonna go back over here. Get the bonfire first. Remember you talking about micro-needling a while ago? Do you have any tips on how to actually do it on your scalp? Yeah, so actually it's funny. I literally just started the, doing the micro-needling again for the first time. I've done two two sessions of it. I do it once a week at two millimeter, or just under two millimeter depth, but like I used to do it a lot. Um, I'm trying to remember. There's a reason that I, oh, I stopped doing it because I had a roller and the roller hasn't, like the way the actual things are angled, if you don't do it perfectly, 
Like, no matter what, even if you stamp it, like, you get an angle that can actually damage underneath the skin. So I was like, I'm not going to do that if there's a chance that it's just kind of being counterproductive at the same time as helping. So I, wait, I waited until I could get one that was just vertical. It was like a stamp. And um, you just want an essential oil of some sort that's really good for stimulating the, the deepest level of the skin that it penetrates. Um, and then make sure the skin's moisturized enough, but, like, it's all dry and everything. And then you stamp, I would say at the most, one... 0.5 millimeters to start would probably be a good idea at the very very most but you could do 0.5 millimeters um, use the essential oil diluted with another carrier oil so I use jojoba um, and I dilute it with uh, I think it's like a very very small percentage like it's mostly 90 something plus percent um, jojoba and then like f less than 5% essential oil put like maybe four drops on each spot and then you do I think I do like 20 stamps um, 10 10 square and then 10 diamond so you like rotate it so it's like it's hitting a different type of shape depending on what shape your stamp is and it's really it's really good for scarring it's good for a lot of different things acne obviously uh, most people obviously use it for their hair and for their their skin quality but um, i have a friend that has scarring that's like um it's been very very like it's been there for a long time and it's a huge scar on their face and i want to see if uh, it helps them so i, I recommend it to them they got it we'll see if it does anything I won't be seeing. Be careful. But it's a really noticeable scar, so we'll see if it fades. Okay, I don't have any souls for anything right now other than just... We can keep... Keep kind of going and see. And kill the mushroom guy and then go see what gargoyles is like. Do you use minoxidil? No, I would never use minoxidil. So I don't use anything that's unnatural in my body. Um, even for, like... Well, actually, I can't say that completely because technically... I have a face cleanser that's not... It, it has some chemicals in it that you don't really want in your skin because what it does is the reason that it works is because it actually dries your skin out and then continues to make it drier than the baseline of what the oils would be on your skin. So depending on how much oil content you have, you got to be careful because that's actually what makes you need more is because you use it in the first place. So if you don't use anything, like then you can get a really good idea of it if you need certain things or not. But a lot of my things are natural, derived from fruits and extracts and stuff like that. And then there's just certain things I just don't do on the, like most days that most people do. It's hel helped me not have to spend as much money and then avoid certain problems too. Is this for hair growth? So for me, like in the, the nature of the question, I'm assuming it is, but for me, why I originally started doing it was for that and for skin as well. So, um, you know, other areas of the face. I still use it on other areas as well. Yeah, much better than paying someone to do it, because, like, the only thing they have an advantage of is their technology is a little bit more high-tech and automatic. Um, so they can make more... <clears throat> more little pricks in the skin quicker, but, like, it's not really a big deal. You're pretty good at it. Also, like, if you don't like pain or you don't like blood, like, bleeding a little bit, <laughs> or redness or anything, like, don't, obviously don't do that then, but... You can tolerate, um, like, the sensation, then you're fine. That's the only thing you have to really worry about. Or some people don't like it. Pinwheel's dead. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to bleed a lot. Like, the thing is, the high, the larger the depth, there will be a little bit of blood. Like, a tiny, tiny bit. And that's completely fine. Actually, when they do the real sessions, people bleed quite a lot, actually, I've seen. And that's that's perfectly fine. Think of it as, like, a baby tattoo, almost. Like, a baby low-speed tattoo. Oh, we got the Black Knight, dude. Is he gonna drop something good? Wait, I'm gonna parry this guy. Ooh. That probably would've killed me. I've ever gotten a tattoo? Yeah, I have two. I'm gonna be getting a lot more, but... Um, I have an artist that I went to for both, and we're just waiting for him to be available. I've had family and uh, family friends that have gone there too, and he is supposed to be doing some touch-ups and some new stuff for all of us, but we'll see. Um, yeah, but the goal is to get my back covered almost completely, like really intricately, and then that's about it. I don't think there's going to be any other places I'll put any.
Man, there's a lot of enemies here. Wait, wait, two Black Knights. Like, what is that? <laughs> and we're obviously not getting a lot of souls for doing this either because it's like pretty early, right? Oh man. Oh, there, he's stuck. <laughs> he's just chilling. What did I get? Um, so I have the a quote from Dune uh, on my arm. Uh, Fear is the mind killer. And then I have a phoenix that's in a Celtic knot uh, design on my back. And then the goal is just like the Celtic knot theme will be present in pretty much everything. Um, and then I, there might be some supporting pieces that are a different style that kind of just outline or like kind of complement them. But a lot of it is just Celtic knot. And then the font for the uh, the quote is also the same font as this game, like the title of this game, the Optimus Princeps. It's my favorite font, so looks pretty uh, pretty edgy. <laughs> Posted any pictures? Yeah, they're on the Instagram. If you type in exclamation point socials. Or the one is, sorry. The, the Phoenix is. When it was fresh. Doesn't look like this is uh, too dangerous. We just chill right here. But I want the key, though, because the key is still there for the depth, so. Let's do that. Just in case we need to get, like, an ember of some sort. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all the content specifically in this run, but I'll try to do the most possible. And I think it's going to speed up quite a bit. I'm also trying to get used to talking to chat again and playing at the same time. It's been a while. <laughs> With the music streams, it's a lot easier. Because you don't actually talk to chat too much while you're playing. Thoughts on Liza P? One of the best games ever. When we get in the autobiography. <laughs> it's actually funny. I was thinking about, like, um, there's a lot of topics and a lot of books that I have interest in where... It'd be cool to put them all into one book, but only because then I could easily explain things without having to talk to people. I could just be like, yeah, I wrote this thing. You can just read it if you want to know about this more. Um, and it'd also be cool because it'd be super easy if all those ideas were already kind of um, put somewhere in the first place. So I could just refer back to them and then retroactively write the book, right? Instead of actually sitting and writing it, I do things that like kind of demonstrate the concepts then go back to those things then write the book from those things I did that's what I was talking about if I do a discussion channel we have enough topics that are interesting to talk about that I actually know a little bit about we could make like a an interesting like book out of it or something like that I don't know not 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 even backstory of me but just topics that I have interest in that I've learned some things about what oh there whoa <laughs> Getting stretchy. What do you think about Liza P? Page 50? Yeah, it's basically every chapter is a concept of something that people have asked in chat. Like, a, is Dark Souls better than this? Is Dark Souls 3 harder than this? What's the hardest run you've ever done? Streamer, why aren't you paying attention? And then the, the epilogue is, uh, please don't ban me, streamer, or something like that. <laughs> that Phoenix is really cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was a tattoo that the artist really hated doing, so I really appreciate that he did a good job because he does not like doing stuff like that. He doesn't like intricate tattoos. He does realism specifically. But he did a really good job. He just absolutely hates line work. Okay, is this even doable? If, if this is doable, then I might cry. Because <laughs> we have Cap Demon as well. <laughs> oh, that went over me. Like, as soon as this dude starts flying, if he tries to, or does the lightning, that's game over, I think. But what I've noticed before, I think Sanctuary Guardian tends to not do that as much on Randomizer, depending on the area. So let's just see. Oh. The roof, the roof saved me. He actually did. just stay in this little square. That could have been really bad if it was four attacks. It'd 
It'd be so funny if like phase one was the, the Capra in this, but then there's like the second gargoyle is not even the Capra demon, it's another thing. Like Manus just comes in randomly after. I remember we've, we've seen some funny things like that where you think it's like, oh, that's just... Oh, Ornstein and Smoke, like they're both right there, but then there's like four enemies or something. <laughs> And then there's that mod where they made the, the, the super gigantic Orsine and, and Smell, and they're both there at the same time. Death by a thousand cuts. What's going on, Sulfur? Oh! The fake out! No! No! <sighs> Alright, we're gonna, <laughs> gonna definitely have to spin this again. Oh, man. Kind of hard to like actually hold this up to the camera because the stuff in the way. Okay, that's a good spin. That was actually like a legit spin there. Nice. Uh, we got juicy pear or booger. What does that even look like? Yellowish green? I think it's this one. That's pear. Okay, we're good. No harm done. <laughs> yeah, rip the 39k, unfortunately. I'm trying to think of like what we can do here. We can get the key to the depths. We can keep going. Looking for other items. I have the hand axe as well. I think the ghost blade actually is pretty good though. That's the thing. Like it's not as bad as I thought it was. It does have bleed too. It has 300 bleed. So I just have to be able to hit him more often. Um. Dragon Torse or the Dragon Headstone's not gonna do much either. I'm trying to think of what we can do, man. <sighs> we could go and try to ring the first bell in, in Blighttown. And just like take a chance on whatever's there, but <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Is this gonna be available tomorrow on the channel, Quark? Uh so on the second channel, it'll it'll be on the second channel before it actually makes it to the the main channel. Cause uh, on the main channel there'll be an edited version that is cut down to basically the best parts. There's a second channel, there is. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, so some people don't know that. There's technically three channels now, or there will be a third one by Sunday. So there's the main channel um, for gaming, for any kind of like notable run. It'll be the full video, it'll be unedited. For anything that's just like a fun challenge of some sort that doesn't need to be like verified in full, will be edited. There'll be a bunch of discussion videos and like mini doc type, you know, documentary kind of things, discussions. And then there's gonna be all of the stuff we used to put on the main channel on the second channel in long form, where I used to just upload almost everything. That'll be on the second channel. And I'll still be kind of choosy with it. It won't be every single thing we do. I'm not making it an archive. I'm just making it like the highlights of what we do, the things I like the most probably. And then if it's a brand new game, obviously the first playthrough. So there's a bunch of playlists on it. Um, and then the music channel, I will actually link in the chat. Oh, it already is linked. Exclamation point music. <laughs> Dude, that was the craziest death I've seen in the game. <laughs> what? I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay. That, that, yeah, that was a spin. Okay. Uh, we got Dirty Dishwater again. Or birthday cake. <laughs> Dude, it's so strong. You can't you, you can't let it hit the back of your throat, dude. It's so strong. You're also hit with toxic? I was, yeah. That probably wouldn't have gone well. School plays is like OG unedited, feels nostalgic. Just sleep to it. Yeah, that's the thing. So if you guys want to, like, if I know there's a lot of people that watch the stream, they want to sub, but they just don't have the money. So I'm, it's very obvious that most people don't have the budget nowadays to be able to just be like, I'm just going to give you a subscription or like, you know, contribute to your content monetarily because it just doesn't make sense for you. And I actually would recommend you don't do that. But what I would recommend if you want to help and you don't want to actually spend any time at all other than like a minute just setting it up, you can just put on a video from the second channel, let it run. Even the main channel too, you can just let it autoplay. Even if you don't have autoplay, just put a long one on, and that's it, and walk away. If, if you don't have the time to watch it, you don't, but it does help, because it does generate the ad revenue, and then that gets invested back into making more content and also supports what, what I'm doing, so. 
That's a free way to do it. That's super easy. Why is that guy holding his head? He was like confused for a second. Man, there's almost too much going on over here. Hmm. I'm wondering if there's a way I can make the Sanctuary Guardian bleed. Because, like, even if we find another weapon, it's more so the fact that the upgrades for this are zero. It's not that the weapon's bad. I think we'll be in the same position no matter what, unless I get something that can stagger. But I bet you three or four hits two-handed would stagger anyways. So that's got to be a bit more aggressive. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Woo! Help! Help! Somebody. Ah. <laughs> Why is he still alive? No. <laughs> Emotional moment. No, it just makes your it makes your eyes water. Recommend you not to pay. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm, it's not that I'm recommending you not to sub. It's just kind of like one of those things where I know people are not going to be able to in some cases, and there's no pressure to do that at all. It's more so. It's just. It's actually even more beneficial to just leave a video running, in my opinion. It, that, that's just my my take on it. It could actually almost be the same thing at the end of the day. Uh, you're one of the few streamers who takes care of your own life first and doesn't sub or tip if you shouldn't. You mean, like, doesn't ask people to? Um, there's plenty of people that don't, like, pander for money, but the thing is, like, think of it this way. If you think that, like, doing this is your all, like, you just have gone all in on streaming, of course it's going to be way more important that your revenue from the channel over here is a certain way, so let's say somebody, <clears throat> they depend on like, I'm, I'm trying to think of like an example, they depend on a goal, like a sub goal per month. Like I'm not trying to like hate on anybody for doing that, I can understand, but it's because they put all their eggs in one basket, right? It's very clear, because if you have even just like another network or a channel that's uh, monetizable, you don't actually ever need to ask anybody for anything, it's almost impossible that you would. Uh, the only way that that would make sense is if the actual platform attacked you and what you were talking about or doing was demonetized, which means you're probably like kind of just touching on subjects or things that you should be aware are not uh, monetizable. Or maybe they're saturated because a lot of uh, flags are going out to channels saying if you do something that too many other people do within a short time, you can't be monetized for it. So it has to be unique enough, right? Because then people, um, well, not even people, the, the YouTube algorithm thinks that you're actually stealing the content for somebody else. So they have to actually verify that you own it. And I've, I've even heard of people having to actually per, like show their ID that like a picture of their face if they don't have like their face on it. And they have to show where they've gotten their information from the sources and prove that the information's theirs. So it really depends. I really wish this toxic thing wasn't a problem. But, got humanities. Waste them. Oh no. I don't know if I can actually outlast it. Okay, we'll, we'll run back. We'll just run back. I'm pretty sure I can kill him with just spamming the, the blade. We need overpriced Squilla cookies. I heard about that story. That was funny. I remember I was cooking and I, like, Moist Critical sometimes comes up on my recommended, so I just put that one on because it sounded funny. Let strength be and, um, so the world like, might be mended. The products like that so the world might are interesting be to me. Like, I buy stuff like that. I do eat snacks like that sometimes, especially the protein ones. So I was like, hmm, I've never heard of this, this whole story. And then, oh yeah, jelly beans. Yeah, I'm not going to sell you overpriced Let's cookies. There is something I actually have as a so little bit of a surprise. We'll see how it goes. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, so but it is something I'm planning. And um, yeah, Moist it might be like merch related. Less than three but stuff you can use. So we got uh, old bandage or pomegranate. That is red. That's super easy to see. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Why does that taste so bad? What the fuck? <laughs> Man, I'm trying to be <coughs> trying to be a hundred hundred percent transparent on the flavors here. Why does that one taste like that? That doesn't taste like a bandage, dude. <laughs> it's most certainly not a pomegranate.
That was the first one where I actually had to hold my breath a little bit, dude. Holy shit. Like, the initial flavor of that was not nice. Also, I, that was crazy. You must really not like pomegranate. I love pomegranate. Oh, do I have enough jelly beans? I should, to be honest, man. I really should. There's a lot in here. And the last run that I did like this, it wasn't randomized. I'm pretty sure it was, uh, or maybe it wasn't randomized fully with the items, but it took a long time to go through the jelly beans. And I still had like 70, I think it was like 70 something at the end, 75 or whatever. The command for the music channel is exclamation point music. So you'll notice there's no branding. There's no videos on it yet. There is videos uploaded. They'll be live periodically once a week starting Sunday. So the first upload goes up on Sunday or goes live Sunday and so on. And I'm going to show you guys what those are. So I'm going to be teasing like a 30 second preview of each at the end of the stream. And again, I'm not trying to be super picky with it, so it's not perfect. It's not going to be as like, I don't know. I wouldn't say that the, the guitar channel or, or the stuff on the main channel that's guitar related, it's perfect, but I am, I was a little bit more like particular on how I wanted it to be performance wise. So. Um, the video quality definitely is going to be going up quite a bit, like the atmosphere of it, but the actual performance is not going to be as good in the beginning compared to like, you know, the later videos as we go. So just keep in mind, I'm not competing with anybody yet, but I think they'll be pretty good very soon. And I'm also trying to pick music that everyone can get into. So if you guys got suggestions, what I would like to see in the comments of the, the music channel videos as they come out is what songs you guys want to hear. Because I will be picking from the comments and using them anytime I don't have an idea or there's a there's a little bit of time to do something extra. The command's not working for music? What? Oh, maybe I didn't uh, verify it before. But dude, how am I getting toxic again? Stupid blow dart guy. <sighs> like, I could wait it out. I don't think the humanity can climb the ladder. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to, though. <sighs> yeah, we need to make sure we don't get toxic. Two beans skipped. Did I skip two beans? Okay, I'm going to spin for three now. Three now, okay. We got... Strawberry, banana, dead fish. Strawberry, banana, thank God. We got berry, blue, or toothpaste. That doesn't matter. I love this taste of toothpaste. I used to eat it when I was good. Easy. And then I was toothpaste as well, just so you know. And we got peach or barf, which if this goes in with the toothpaste and the other one, oh, not nice. I don't want to ruin the good flavor. I think this is it. Here with some specs. Oh, it is the bad one. Ew. I don't actually... I, <coughs> why is that one so strong, man? I don't... I don't think it's a good idea to like put lots of them in your mouth at the same time, even if they do taste kind of good, because it makes the flavor even worse somehow. Maybe it was just the combination. I feel like I literally just had some fruit and then I brushed my teeth, but at the same time, there's just a powerful aroma of dead fish in the air. Okay, let's be extremely careful on this one and just do this properly. <sighs> you visibly took damage. <laughs> Why multiple at the same time? Just to get it over with. Why not? Because at the very end, no matter what, I'm putting every single jelly, be jelly bean in my mouth that I didn't eat. So you're going to see... Oh, you're going to see that anyways. And I know the end doesn't seem possible right now. You don't think that this is even going to be completed, but it will. Trust me. All right. We got... Dirty dishwater birthday cake again. That's dirty dishwater. Dirty dishwater for sure. Ah. 
I really don't like the idea of eating soap at all. Oh man. You're so confident at the start of this. I still am though, 100%. Time to order another box. <laughs> I can't, I don't know if, I, can I order this one? So this one's like from 2018 and it's an American one. I don't know if it's the same if you get the newest one. The age actually like ferments it, I've heard. Flavors mingle a little bit longer. Okay, uh, because when we go to Blight Town, we can't go back. That's the reason I'm trying to avoid it right now, because we can go down there like I usually would without doing any kind of checkpoint, and then if I die, I go all the way back here. Just to see what's there. Just just to, you know, to entertain myself, see if I can actually do it. So, I'm gonna just take a chance and check it out. See if we can even make it through there. But there is a chance that if, like, let's say I go down there, and... It's not that bad, I still could die. Dirty dishwater sounds like Bud Light Lime. <laughs> That's actually funny. I, I think I've tried Bud Light Lime when I was younger, and there's an aspect of it that I can I can relate to that flavor, or what I would imagine in my memory it tasted like, but it, is, it almost has kind of like a little bit of the lime taste from like if you had like a, like it's, wasn't there a lime Coke at one point too? Why is your jaw doubled in size? My jaw didn't double in size. I have a really big beard right now. So, like, my jaw is, like, not here. It's, like, inside my beard. Super long. My hair in my head, I think it's, like, I measured it. It's about three and a half inches right now. But it's obviously, like, coiled pretty heavily. So you can't really tell. But super fucking long. Longest it's ever been. And then... The beard's probably at least, like... At the peak of the longest hair. At least, like, two inches or something like that. It's all curly, though. Watching 360p, you didn't notice? Yeah. <laughs> Giga? Yeah, I'm just like... <laughs> the crimson chin. I got I got chin implants. That'd be hilarious, man. You like my hair? I appreciate that. Thank you. I've been trying to just do the exact opposite of what I'd normally do. I'd usually be, like, m having moderate hair or, like, very, like, short hair on my head. And then it's moderate facial hair just to not have to, like, maintain it too much. I'm just trying something different. Ever grown out an afro? Oh yeah. I mean, it is an afro right now. You, I, if I actually combed it out fully, you, it, would, it would be like twice as long as it looks on camera. But I shaved uh, my head around it, so it's only on the top. Um, but I've had an afro before. I still think the longest my hair ever was was shorter than it is now, though. Or it was before I did the sides. But when I was a kid, I usually would have an afro. I'm trying to remember even who convinced me to shave my head, because I, I had a phase where I went, like, just near bald for a long time, since I was, like, I think it was, like, maybe in my 20s, I can't remember. How long did it take for my hair to grow this long? I can't even remember, but my hair grows really fast, so I have no clue. Um, definitely wasn't that long, though. Because I still cut it, like, every once in a while. I take it down here and there. How many hours have I spent playing this game, DS1? <sighs> if I had to guess like a real number, it would be over 2,500 hours easily. But like Steam itself won't track it properly, so I would, I'll never actually really know, but like minimum 2,500 on DS1. Maybe, m maybe over 3,000. And then I think next to that, the only other game that's more than this one, it's, it's Dark Souls 3 is like, like 6,000 easily or something like that. Um, and then, I'm trying to think of, two would be close to this one. They'd be almost the same. It's it's getting close to like five figures for everything across the board that they've made. But I th I think that's kind of coming to a halt now because I don't really play as much as I used to. And that's that's also combined from my idea of like when the games came out and I didn't make content. So I'm trying to think of like my first playthrough, all the PvP that I did, and then like when I actually started streaming as well. Like, lifetime. How many people went to a surgeon and said, make me look like a good chat? I saw a thing, there was a video about a guy that got a surgery to make himself taller, and they had to, like, I was just really interested on how they actually did it safely, and they were explaining that they just, like, put a thing inside the bone. I don't know if it's, like, where the bone marrow is, and it, like, just separates. Oh, they, like, they make a small, like, crack through, and then they just separate it by, like, millimeters at a time. Oh, this is really bad, dude. Worst case scenario. 
Bat you got Big Ornstein. <sighs> I don't like that. <laughs> That's really bad. Oh, I missed the chest at the top of Blight Town. Ugh. Bad. Is he just gonna stand still? Wait, do we get a freebie? Yo, there's no cutscene for phase two on this. I think we got a freebie. So this happens sometimes. It's it's very rare, like for an actual boss to do this, but it might be because he's not um, a phase one enemy, right? So because he has to have a cutscene to trigger him to move and stuff like that, he might only be active on a fight where he comes in in second phase after a cutscene. That's my guess. Yeah, the bell will be rung, and then we're just gonna warp right back. That chest isn't looking too appealing after all now because we got the easy win. Cosmetic surgery where people break the leg bones and stretch the legs. Yes, that was the one that I was watching, and it was in. There was these people just like reviewing, like the video of it, and then they were showing a couple other examples of other people that had gotten it, and just asking people if they would do that too. And the funny thing was, like, the one dude said like the most, the, the best point about it. He was like, you could say that most people might want to do that that are interested because of the appeal from like you know the perspective of other people they think they look better taller but this dude that got it he he was presumably very successful for being able to afford the surgery and he also was like married and like had a good life as far as i could see so they're like that's kind of interesting that he chose to do that even though um you know everything's like in place that other people would want to gain from having that appeal i guess but the funny part was that, like, that actually, in my opinion, makes it more of a thing that's personal to him then if he does it that way, right? Because then it's not actually because of other people. Because it's proven that everything else that other people would use it for is achieved in most cases. But is that healthy, though? It's like, I don't think that's healthy for the mind because you're tricking yourself into thinking something the same way as any cosmetic surgery, right? Like, unless it's going to actually really like save you or like help something like I can understand if you can't breathe and you like have to like get your nose like opened or something I don't know <laughs> it's an insecurity oh 100% I think he admitted like 100% that it was I don't think most people at that point making that decision are gonna be like no it's not <laughs> you're the one that's insecure <laughs> this double amputee says that he's glad he gets to pick his height is that was that a joke or is that actually like a thing you've seen before? Oh my god, look at the look at the boys over here. <laughs> and there's the guy still freaking out in the corner. Okay, uh I have one homeward bone. So like what we could do, I could run down there and try to check Cecil's discharge if it's not bad. You know, I'll try. Or I can homeward bone. But I'm still gonna I can still homeward bone once we get in the fight, either way. I could just check and see. So I'm debating it's just the run down to there. Also, I didn't did I sit at the Chaos Bonfire, Daughters of Chaos? Same thing with your transition galaxy. Um, the fact that, like, it's kind of being done for you and not anyone else. I can, I, I totally believe that with, with the case you're talking about. Because you're in a situation where, again, like, you're settled down, right? Cis men getting height augment augmentation is basically gender-affirming surgery. How is that? I'm curious. I thought it was more to do with, like, um... Kind of, I don't know. It's kind of. It seems more like a societal norm thing, right? Or it's, a, it's not even societal norm. More, more like uh, media, because I think media and like uh, a lot of things are more superficial that are shown in cinema and like the portrayal of certain things. Always, it wouldn't. It wouldn't show a story typically of someone that's like a certain height and then like maybe you're in a relationship and like the. It, it's like the opposite of how you'd expect it, because I know that, like, it's a hard, hard topic to talk about, because now we're in a time where you say certain things, you get in trouble in 2024, so the easiest way for me to say it would be 
I think that there is an expectation that's just designed within the media, almost. It's not actually a normal thing, because if we looked at actual information, you'd see, just base it on exactly everybody's average height. Don't base it on the portrayal of something. All right, we have Manus. That's really bad. So I'm gonna Homer Bone. But I can probably grab the item. Uh, Chexiak, what's up, dude? Lots of hair now, yeah. <laughs> It's so funny, actually, because I remember someone said that they were like, why are you bald? And I was like, it fell out because of playing the game. Because <laughs> I was so mad. <laughs> and I think they might have actually believed me because the way the light was hitting, it actually did like I didn't take an actual straight razor to my head. But I remember I went zero and I'd go like over it a lot. So it did kind of look a little suspicious in the light sometimes. It's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, we got 21,000. Let's go and see if we can upgrade this weapon, because right now I think it's our best shot with the way that it bleeds. I don't think it can be buffed. We need Twinkling Titanite. Does he sell that? Oh, he sells these though. Soul of Brave Warrior 2000. Large Nameless Soldier. I can't remember the value of that one. Um, all right, levels. Godly TC, what's up? You haven't popped in the stream for almost two years. You've been busy, but awesome to see you're still pushing great content. It's funny because the timing of you making it back is the timing of me coming back from not streaming. Um, I did a really small, well, not even small, but like like a fun, just chill music stream yesterday. And then today's like the first normal kind of stream. So we got dexterity to scale the weapon. Does it do that? No? Why? Wait, is this a strength weapon? Why is strength scaling it? Is there anything else that scales it? Wait, I'm so, I'm so confused. Okay, I'm just gonna go with vitality and then I'll put in a bit of strength and I'll put in a little bit of endurance, like the tiniest bit, just in case. Well rounded. All right, we got both spells. No, we still have this spell. We still have this spell. 24 dating profile, 6'3", big feet, have puppy, I go hiking and respect women. <laughs> and see, like, that's a thing. So if you even reference that, like, why would that be a measure of appeal? And it's probably because, again, you feel that that's something that is a, a I'm trying to think of, like, the way to put it. Like, that's a relevant um, way of, of navigating things, right? Like, that technically should be less important than actual data if you go and, like, use your eyes and, the, and research stuff yourself, like, in real life. But if you're paying attention to that, you can... It's kind of like social media. If you look at a news feed, like, people are putting up, um, you know, one single post of something. It's a perspective, right? So I think using actual things that you're seeing or experiencing is a little bit easier. But I totally get it though. Like it's it's um it's interesting because most people I know that are really tall want to be shorter. Most people that are short want to be taller. You know, I'm one of the people that want to be a bit shorter. I would want to be like five eleven to six feet at the very most, and specifically having um like a different bias with like bone structure for like the stuff I like to do because then I can have better leverages. I can be stronger, and I can be um, more impactful for certain types of sports and stuff like that. So everything I like is very disadvantaged from being my height, um, other than basketball, which. I never actually took super seriously, so that's about it. And volleyball, I guess, but again, never took it super seriously. So it would be beneficial for my life in general, like um, on a mechanical level to be shorter, but it doesn't matter. It's like you just gotta, how tall am I? <clears throat> so I'm just over 6'2", at the moment. And I say at the moment because I do believe you can change your height <laughs> without doing the surgery. Just depends on how much leeway you have for your, your uh, spinal structure and the muscles and obviously your alignment with everything. Or you can just go and get into the uh, the table that stretches you. The medieval table. You missed the music stream? It's okay, dude. We're gonna be doing more of the music things. Uh, probably not super often, just because that snare drum that's broken, I gotta... Or not broken, but the one that double registers. It's being a little silly. I have to screw around with that a little bit more because I prefer using that than the nice one that I brought into the, the room yesterday. 
since it's gonna wear out before all the other pieces on the on the big kit that I have. So we won't be doing that like all the time, maybe once every week and a half. Maybe once every week. And I'll probably not do it for five hours next time. That was actually so um there's that was so taxing that I actually couldn't move after. I had to like lay down for an hour and just not move. Um and the the worst part was like the adrenaline was still there, so I couldn't really like s like just take a nap or sleep right away. Bad posture, and you swear you dropped two inches since eight years? 100%, yeah. Like, I gained a, a half inch of height just by fixing my posture. Like, my um, my cervical spine wasn't that great. My lumbar... I have um anterior pelvic tilt that's pretty severe. Or it's not as severe as it used to be, but it was more severe, so I had to, like, change the, uh, the lengthening of the lower back a little bit, like the lumbar. And um, just do some exercises for stretching that. Actually strengthen the muscles a little bit too. But some people think that strengthening them actually changes it the most. It actually doesn't as much as you think it will. Unless you're in a condition where they're so weak that like um, that's your main issue. And like you just kind of need that to supplement or complement as you're doing other things. But I know some people that are like, oh yeah, you just do posterior chain, instant height. It's like not really, not exactly. <laughs> Oh, the game freeze? Game froze. And I died again, didn't I? Two beans. Okay, we got dead fish or pot or the strawberry banana smoothie. And toasted marshmallow or stink bug. That's a new one. Let me open the game again. Yeah, so this happens sometimes when we're playing randomizers. It will just crash randomly if there's weird things going on. Okay, so dead fish and stink bug. Stink bug's almost the same color. It's actually kind of fun. Maybe we will run out of them. I don't know. <laughs> it's funny because certain ones I can't see as many. now. We've eaten a lot of the, uh, the strawberry banana. Find it. Oh, here we go. All right. Dead fish. This one is the stink bug. <coughs> They're both bad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Why do they make your eyes water so much? I don't remember. I feel like they've made them stronger since the last one, or the Americans are just crazy. The Canadian ones must be way better, man. They're so much stronger. It's like the one, I remember, again, there's a spiked one every once in a while where it's really strong. It tastes like every single one is spiked. Two at once? Yeah, we gotta make it interesting. <laughs> That's my punishment for not paying attention, right? This part's crazy. This part's really hard, yeah. Um, it's because just some of the enemies can't fit through the door. That's it. If they could all fit through the door, we'd be fine. Not to mention, if I go to the door, um, there's things that can poke me through the other enemies' bodies, too. I could try the dragon head. Let's see. Six. It pushes them back though. Okay, it's not too bad. It's a flying humanity, I know. And these guys are so dangerous, they just walk into you and then you just die really fast. Deadlifts might help with anterior pelvic tilt. It's possible. I don't know. I, I haven't um, looked into all the ways you can fix it. I just know that, like, the same as how I corrected a little bit of the posture with my shoulders position so I didn't have impingements is the is a very similar way of how I corrected some of the anterior pelvic tilt because you're using a wall and you're just trying to like align everything along the wall and hold it. Um, but again, it's not a big deal. Like you can have a slight amount of it. It's not a problem in either way. You could even have it the opposite. So we're doing trap bar deadlifts in the gym. Apparently those are really cool. 
I've never tried that. Wait, was there? There was an alert I couldn't see. Who was that? Can someone tell me what that alert was? My Streamlabs is not actually open. <laughs> Wait, he, how is he still hitting? That's really far away. Yeah, Streamlabs, when I open it to try to check my alerts, it doesn't show most of them nowadays. I don't know why. And then on here, it can't because I'm using that to run the uh, the tips, right? See news about the music channel, open music channel, music channel empty. Yeah, it's not live yet, so there's content on it. I haven't actually launched the channel, it's just one of those things where I'm telling you guys so that you can be ready when the first video's out, which will be Sunday. Um, but they're already on there, right? There's a few weeks of content there, and then it was supposed to be about a month's worth. Um, as of at least today, so if I can record the next video after we're done this, then there will literally be a month's worth of content on it. still have the Aristides. Oh yeah, definitely. I haven't played it in a long time though. I've been playing a lot of the uh, the Tim Henson signature, the, uh, the Ibanez TO D1. Because uh, my goal was mainly just becoming a little better with using my right hand instead of like the, the, the pick all the time. So I did that for the last little bit and then literally just completely stopped playing guitar for a bit to focus on the drums and then came back to it. But I do have some stuff that's just specifically guitar, no, no other instruments, acoustic style, and I'm going to be putting up videos of that too. Still have a few things practiced for that. Dude, yo, Ryan, thank you so much. You, you didn't have to do that. Thank you so much, man. Oh, the timer. <laughs> Wait, what's the in-game time? Does it say? I don't think it says right here, damn it. <laughs> Give it to Henson guitar. Uh, your range is more of a hundred dollars than second hand. Yeah, the thing with the guitars and all that is like you can get a guitar that's like that, and I would actually recommend it. And then all you got to do is understand how to set it up, right? So I've had plenty of them where they're really cheap, like they're actually like more beginner budget, and you can make them play really good. So you'll notice if. Well, I think I deleted, well, they're not deleted, they're hidden, but my first videos, if you had watched the main channel, were on a, an Epiphone, um, Les Paul Jr. that's from Rocksmith. It's not even an actual, like, it's not even, like, the, the, the real standard or, or Epiphone Les Paul. It's, like, a version that came with Rocksmith. My friend gave it to me for free, and, uh, I just used that for covers for a while. So you can use anything, and that was just, like, a mic amp, too. It wasn't even, uh, direct input. So the question of the hour with this particular doorway is, is it worth the squeeze, man? Are we getting juice? That's what you're looking for to start learning. So if you want any advice on how to set it up specifically or to, what to tell somebody to do if you go to somebody, I can tell you some, some details that will help you um, kind of upgrade it to a mid-range feel, like a little bit of more high-end guitar feel. Obviously, certain things you can't change, but it'll help a lot, though, because um, my first guitar was not even a full size. It was a three, three-quarter size acoustic, very hard to play, not a full scale length, and then very short scale length, beginner um, electric guitar after that that had super high action, and I never set it up properly, and it probably stifled at least, like, years of progress. So, yeah, you want to make sure. There's, there's the, the, the money's not the problem. It's more so just the knowledge of what you're looking for. We're doing the full- Oh, you know what, dude? We could have just went through here. Oh, I don't know if this is dangerous, though, because we got the rat. We got ratatouille. Oh, maybe it is. Ratatouille and dog. Oh, no. Can he make it? Oh, dude, the safe spot heal. Look at that. <laughs> the safe spot heal. Whoa. Ah. 
Ever tried Strandberg? So, um, actually, before I got the Aristides, it was between a a uh, Strandberg, a Black Machine, a Mayonez, and um, a Ernie Ball, Music Man, JP22 at the time. It was the decision. So, I had tried some of those. Obviously, some of them you can't buy in a store. You'd have to actually get them made, but the Aristides was my choice just because uh, the way they do it is really cool. Stupid toxic guy got me again. <sighs> this part's ridiculous, dude. The first bell is the hardest I think I've actually seen it. Other than the boss. The boss isn't as bad. Sanctuary Guardian's hard, but like, the Capra Demon part's easy, so like, that's crazy. And it would be amazing if I could freeze Capra Demon, or sorry, freeze Sanctuary Guardian, then do Capra Demon the other way around. But yeah, the, the Aristides was really cool. I think the use of carbon fiber and fiberglass is really awesome. Just wanted to do an actual spin. That was kind of a bad one at first. Uh, we got toothpaste or berry blue. That's super easy. I actually like that one, and I dropped it. So now it's dusty. Still have to eat it. Might die. But yeah, I think that Strandberg, um, Strandberg specifically, is really cool, and I would love to play one one day. So we'll see. The closest thing I've ever tried is a Kiesel. Because Kiesel's like almost, um, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it was a w the wash originally Washburn. They turned into Kiesel, and then they laser cut with parameters that are mimicking a hand-made um, uh, guitar. And then they basically just make the headless design for way cheaper than Strandberg does. And they still play super nice. I'm super, dude, I'm like lost at what to try to do to get these guys out of the room. This is crazy. Oh, you know what? Okay, wait, no. Big guy fell down. Okay, so if we chill there long enough and he falls down, if he's... Oh, but then they're there. If I can just get him to move, that might be it. It's just not getting toxic, getting the crystal guy to come down, and then not having two enemies in the stairs, and I'm pretty sure we can, like, just run at that point. Been looking for an ook. Oh, a ukulele. Casual strumming. Looking for a tenor for a low price. Oh, that's cool, man. I've played a couple of ukuleles, but I'm not, like, great at it or anything. I play them kind of like a guitar still. <laughs> Tips would be awesome. Just going to wait for your first semester exams to be over to buy a guitar. Yeah, just let me know. I can actually... I've, there's tons of people that have asked me about music and stuff like that, and I've recommended them things, and they seem to enjoy them. Like, one really, really good buy, in my opinion. Like, the best buy I can actually recommend to you for... It might be a little over the price range, but if you can get one used, get a get a second-hand Jackson Dinky 6. That would be a crazy good guitar to start out with. Because I have the Dinky 7, and it's like above, it's like two or three hundred dollars above the price point. It's like almost a double or triple. <laughs> it feels almost three times better than what it's supposed to be. Um, in fact, I did a lot of stuff with it, um, but I think there's only a couple videos that you can see it in, but it just, it sounds great. Oh yeah, we gotta have a bean again. Okay, wait, 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 toxic guys right here. Okay, uh, ladder, oh wait, 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 ladder, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Okay, so he's gonna... He's gonna shoot, and then he's gonna do that, and then... Oh, can I can I do it? it? Oh, it didn't miss me! I still have to kill him every time, dude? Oh, that sucks. Okay, wait, I'm just gonna go in the fight and try, even with Toxic. I don't know if it's gonna be possible. Yeah, Jackson Dinky Six String used. See if you can find a used one for 150 bucks. If you're American dollars, under dollars. This is harder than Millennia, this is crazy. So two beans. There's gonna be lots of cuts in this video. Uh, we got the bar, sorry, dead fish or strawberry banana. And it's a tie between old bandage and stink bug. Which one do you guys want me to do between old bandage and stink bug? I'll do the, uh, the dead fish first.
That's dead fish. Yeah. And then bandage. The red one. <coughs> Ew. They're both bad. Ugh. Oh my god. Does the guy still make black machines? I don't think he makes them anymore, but you can still find them floating around. If you go to Reverb, it's a Canadian online merchant. Uh, they might have American representation too, but you can find a lot of good secondhand stuff. So you find Aristides, Mayonez, black machines, like all these like boutique things, like people just sell them pretty much close to what they paid because they hold their value, but like they usually take care of them. I was even considering getting the Aristides from there instead of custom doing it, but it was almost the same price. So I was like, why not? And by the time I decided they had the raw version that doesn't have paint and that's a thousand dollars cheaper. So I was like, why not? They even said it sounds better because it doesn't have um, that extra layer that seals in the resonance. So it's like it's a little bit more resonant and you can't really scratch it. It's almost impossible to mark up. So, this crystal guy got stuck again. We're gonna have to run down, but at least there's a clear path here. So first we run up, we kill these guys, this is the plan, and then we go over here. They fall down, and then we kill the toxic dude before anyone can pinch me in the corner, and I think this is it. Crystal guy's still stuck though, oh my god. So he, we, oh, no he's not. Okay. Fall, 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 thank you. There's just so many of them. This is funny. Oh, you can you can laugh as much as you want. It's the whole point of it is just pure fun with a little bit of suffering. Suffering on the side. Still driving the RX-7. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm thinking of selling it, actually. Um, I've started to have like a lot less interest in wrangling multiple vehicles, if that makes sense, because I can't really use it as much as I want to. Um, even if it was like fully stock, I, I would barely drive it. That's the problem, right? So, I think somebody that could use it for something that's cooler would be better suited. So, if the price is right, I probably will sell it at some point. I know that's like, that's probably unexpected. But with the way I think of things, if I really care enough, I'll get another one in the future. I can't really restrict myself to saying the value of it is a barrier of entry. Because if you want something bad enough, you figure out a way to do it, so. And it's also kind of like... The test too. If I really, really, really need it or want it or whatever, then I'll get it. I'll figure it out. I got it the first place. Well, things legendary. It is, but like, again, I'll just get. It. They've made multiple. You know? <laughs> do you go for cruises or rip occasionally? Yeah, I do. But like, it's just like it, it's not like I don't really care that much about um physical objects as much as I used to. I started to kind of like get more into the idea of like experiences more and the experience of it is cool but it's not it, there's experiences i can generate that are free that are better than it which is kind of like if that's possible then why would you want to like struggle like not even struggle but like put in more time and effort and money and all this stuff to have an experience that's less quality than something that's free right so the uh, like when you start to become less nostalgic specifically because I, I have a lot of nostalgia for it um, there's nothing there. It's just it's just literally transposition transposition of physical molecules or material that's arranged in a certain orientation, right? Like like a cup. It sounds ridiculous, but like at the end of the day, uh, it's really not going to do much for me, right? I'm gonna have to do a lot for it, but it's not gonna do much for me. And it, as an investment, I can understand for sure. Like again, like I said, if the price is right, I might make some money, but I don't even care about that at this point. I kind of just. Uh, want to think more about, like, okay, does this feel like it makes sense? Spiritual consumerism. Yeah, that do definitely does change things, for sure. But, yeah, um, that's the story with that, so we'll see. I might keep it, but I'm also planning on moving, so I'd have to ship that in another vehicle, and that's kind of, like, unnecessary if I'm not even going to use it much there, and where I'd be going has longer winters, so I can't use it as much, right? There's tons of different factors. To me, as long as I could keep an open communication with whoever gets it and I can see what they do and they, I can see they enjoy it, to me, that's amazing. That's actually just as good. But um, 
like my association with it in the first place wasn't to like identify with it. It was more so because the nostalgia. So like I've let people dri drive it. That's not me. You know, I I don't care if it gets it gets blown up. I don't care if it gets stolen nearly as much as probably other people would. It's just the basis of why I got it. Right. It's very much so not part of an identity of any sort. <laughs> oh my god. There's another one. Becoming Canadian or Alaskan. I'd still be in Canada, but it would just be like a different province specifically. All right. So we got between rotten egg and liver and onions. Oh my God, that's a new one too. It's a brown one. Oh, buttered popcorn is the alternative to rotten egg. That's pretty cool. So it's yellow and white, and then we got the brown one. I'm gonna do both at the same time. Ugh. Because it was right in the middle. <coughs> <laughs> oh god. Dude, liver and onion sucks, dude. <coughs> Chopped liver is not even that bad. <coughs> Why does that taste like it's gone gone like spoiled or something? Ooh. Any interest in bikes? Oh, I love I love like um like engineering in general. Like anything that's like um a machine of any sort. Like if they had robot suits, I'd have one of those. Like there'd just be you know, if I had a if I have a plane or a tank or a boat or something like that. Still have a dream to get a turbo jet ski for sure. I really like jet skis, but other than that, like, don't need to. I don't care that much, but I really do like um, the sports side, the engineering side, the R&D, and then the trickle down effect for consumerism or consumers, right? I like the whole system of how that comes about, but at the end of the day, it's like, think, think of it this way. If you're not attached to something, then what is it? It's, it could be, it's just the relevance of how you look at it, right? So I've had really good experiences. I think those will be the most memorable. That alone to me has already made the value of it um, worthwhile, right? So if something gives you cool experiences, good enough. All right, we got booger. And I think this is green. Wait, yes, the greeny bread. That's pear, okay, thank god. You seen an exosuit on the market? Run faster and longer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'll probably get my the license to be able to operate the sports bike because um, the way I look at it is the more things you can actually operate, you're more versatile and useful as a person in situations of emergency or like, you know, where it's more convenient. So it would be very, very beneficial to be able to use like a sports bike, um, you know, something that's a little bit more aggressive in terms of a regular automobile, something that's really simple and all, everything in between. Even like, dude, if you could do like a 16 or 32 gear transport truck or something like that, grand, so even better. Be like what if that's the only option, right? You're gonna have to know how to do that. So Sounds ridiculous, but it's just like, to me, that's appealing love, more than the than actual three, less than three, less than three. things themselves. It's like the game too, like we're playing this. The, the way we've set this up is more appealing to me than like the pixels. It's the idea, right? Because <laughs> to make the game the game, you have to use your imagination. Someone could be like, oh, this sucks. Someone could be like, this is amazing. It's all the perspective. Yo, get out of here. Why is, ah. So they didn't, they didn't all quite funnel out of the hallway. I gotta wait a long time. <laughs> Another bee. <laughs> I bet you as soon as we get out of this area, everything goes really fast. All right, we got the liver and onions or cappuccino once again. Verifying that it's dark brown. <coughs> Dude, I don't know how you could eat that, but not, not like get a little something going on in the in the eyes there the tears <laughs> mango thank you so much for the 49 months welcome back dude i appreciate it can ride a bike but you know a bike not a bike so like a bicycle i bet you there's people that don't know how to ride bicycles man there's people that don't know how to swim that are like adults and stuff i saw a video of a, a dog in water that was like drowning because it, it i guess it couldn't like swim either or something like that, and the people just like, they were scared. They were scared to go into like four foot water. 
like water that would only be up to like their thighs or their I don't even well I guess maybe their waist or something oh maybe even less than four feet then it would be like three feet or something and they're just waiting so I mean yeah what if there was a situation where you need to escape on a bike and you couldn't bike It's less likely someone can't ride a bike than someone not knowing how to swim. Oh, probably less likely, yeah. Because I think that you can learn... You can learn both fast, but the swimming will kick in if you're... If you're, like, really determined on living, you'll find a way. Like, the, the flinging and flailing of the limbs might actually just carry you. It's possible. Maybe not in the ocean, but in, like, a, a pool. There's a possibility. It's just kind of the, the panic level. Yo, David Frank, thank you so much for the host, dude. You guys want to see someone that's actually very, very good at music, because we've been talking about music quite a bit. Follow David Frank. I was watching him a little bit last night, and he did uh, he did his, like his take on the animals as leaders track. I think it was Gordy and Not. Which was really funny, because I asked him if, if he could play Red Miso, which is easier in my opinion. The game just crashed again. David Frank crashed the game. Apparently he's that powerful. <laughs> But yeah, I asked him to play Red Miso or to see if he could, and he he was just like, I don't have that one down yet, but I got these ones, as if it was, like, really hard for him. But I think Gordian Knot's way harder. So, like, he literally destroyed it. It was just disgusting, man. It was one of the best performances I've ever seen of the song, next to the guy that actually made the song. So, yeah, go follow his stream. If you like music, he, he drums very well. I would, wouldn't be surprised if he plays other stuff, too. But, like, if you request something... Most certainly, he's going to make it better than it already was, or he's just going to do it exactly how you expect it. And if not, then you have a you have a problem. It's your fault, not his. Oh, we made it, dude. We're here. Okay, never mind. The crash wasn't a bad thing. He he crashed the game so we could actually make it to the fog gate. So anyone from David's stream, if you're wondering what we're doing, I play a lot of Dark Souls games. Usually, I do a little bit of uh, music here and there on Clone Hero specifically. The plastic drums and then I, I just started a music channel to migrate some of my older guitar stuff over and jam with myself essentially on other instruments but mainly just game we're randomizing the enemies of this game so they, they all get switched around i have no idea what's going to happen until i see it the items get randomized other than the keys to open doors and progress and then i have to eat a disgusting or tasty jelly bean on every death and the flavors range from old band-aids to dirty dishwater, dead fish, stuff like that. We've been stuck on this guy for a while. Alright, so the wheel has decided we do rotten egg or buttered popcorn. I think we got rotten egg the last time when I put the liver and onions and the, the popcorn in my mouth. <coughs> Ew. <coughs> oh my god. How much damage am I doing to Sanctuary Garden? I think it's like 40-something per hit, but you can make him bleed and stagger him if you can hit him three times. So I will kill him super easily if I can manage to get in a good position. Which I'll show you. But we really need to focus. <laughs> are there good ones? There are good ones. So the one I just ate could have been buttered popcorn, for example. Love the Toy Biz Spider-Man figures, that's awesome. Oh, thanks, man. They were a gift, actually. Oh, well, some of them. Some of them were a gift, some of them were... were mine? I think most of them were a gift, though. That's actually cool that you know that, as well, because, um... There's, there's a lot of people that thought they were comic books or posters. Which is really interesting. I was like, why would a comic book have, a, like, the exact same layout on every single one, right? But, if I didn't know what I was looking at, maybe I'd think the same thing. I don't know. Is the camera having issue focusing? Oh no. It's probably because of the crazy lighting I got going on right now. Is it blurry still? Bean time? Yep. You collect figures yourself, so it's all good. Okay, that's why you knew. Oh, right in between berry blue and uh, toothpaste, as well as strawberry banana dead fish. So I'm going to eat both. That's the new rule. I have to eat both if it's uh, in between. Oh, 
Oh man, I'm gonna be so hardened by doing this first part that by the time I actually progress, it won't even matter anymore. We would have eaten so many of them. And I'm having a hard time trying to find where these ones are. There might not be any left. Is there any? I might have actually eaten all of the one kind. Oh, right here. Here we go. I think. Yes. This one just doesn't have as many specks on it. It's the same color, though. Oh, they're both good. Thank God. It's been a while. <laughs> Looking extra fluffy. Perry, oh yeah, we're going, like I said, wilderness. How's my stomach feeling? I feel pretty good. I ate some good food earlier, so like... I left a little room for the jelly beans, but I I also took like a um, probiotic and stuff and a prebiotic, so that might help. We'll see. I actually don't eat candy, believe it or not. There's not much candy I like. The only candy I actually buy, like purchase myself, is um, Smart Sweets, but that's super rare. Um, but I just... Genuinely don't really like candy as much as, um, I don't even know what, like, I guess, like, baked goods are probably above candy for me. Even chocolate would be above it, specifically dark chocolate. So if there's a chocolate version of this, that might be a bit better. Calorie-wise, it might not be, though. Oh, no. Okay, we, we can't, we can't die again. Do I fast at all? Um, depends on the day. So intermittently for a very short window, yes, but uh, sometimes also by accident, which depends, but I do try to uh, give myself some time before eating my first meal, unless it's a certain type of day. It kind of depends on how much, um, how many carbs I need in my system before I do something. Protein-wise, I, I don't really look at that as a timing thing as much. As some people might, I just look at it as the total value. And also, most of the value has to be eaten after exercise. Okay. We got stink bug or toasted marshmallow. Add this one. That is toasted marshmallow. Ooh, that's good. Do I write original music? Yes, I have a lot of original music that you guys have never heard. Some of you have. Some of you haven't. I've been in... One online band since I started streaming, and then I've been in bands before that as well, and just wrote my own music. So uh, there's a couple of originals I was practicing earlier that I'm gonna be putting on the music channel that are just solo pieces on guitar. Um, maybe I'll spice it up and add some stuff to it if I really feel it's cool, but um, yeah, there's a couple songs of mine that will be on the YouTube. And then I have a drum part that I wrote for something that was someone else's song, and I've been sent two tracks by Soul Fruit and Chat that he wrote, and we we're gonna collab on those, or at least one of them specifically. I just gotta build the click track for it. But yeah, most of the music you guys um, hadn't heard from me, like, you might have heard it, but not known it was me, because I have played my music on stream before, like some of the tracks that I did completely myself. And then a lot of the stuff that is my own doing that's like not written specifically by someone else's interpretations or transpositions, so like the video game music stuff. Specifically, uh, Final Fantasy and uh, what else? The Final Fantasy cover and uh, I don't know if you can count the Gwyn theme because the Gwyn theme was transposed specifically, but it's not originally on guitar, so that, I don't think I count that. But the Final Fantasy one is um, you can you can literally you can't you can't actually play it on guitar unless you have a lot of strings the same way, and it's, it's I think it's sung and also on a harp specifically. So I, I use the bass to emulate the vocals, and then I use the guitar to emulate the harp with a smaller octave range. Alright, we got buttered popcorn rotten egg. Ugh. Oh boy. This is gross. This is very bad. <laughs> You love lemon cake? Lemon stuff is really good. Those are the Harry Potter ones? No, these. this is just the regular Bean Boozled, not the Harry Potter edition, but I have done that one before with just friends. Okay, how, how do we get up here, man? I 
I'm ready to almost go to Moonlight Butterfly at this point. Like, we can't buy the, the Crest of Artorias to get to Sif. Oh, wait, but... Oh, is that a, that's a key item, right? So if I kill Andre, he should still have it. He should drop it. All he sells is basically just souls, so like killing him is not a big deal. Hope you have enough beans. There's still quite a few left. Like, I'd say a good... Looks like almost 100 or something like that. Okay, so we're running in circles. Everybody's clearing out. The humanity fell down. Looks like everybody's there. We're hoping. Oh man, that was just... That's the problem. See, it's just the three guys there that don't move. And then this is easy. As long as he doesn't hit us as we turn the corner, which I don't think he can. Because he's supposed to shoot the thing as soon as he can sense you. Which is through the wall, usually. You tried the bean boozle and even good flavors tasted so chemically gross, Mushu. Really? You didn't like the, the good flavors? So are you not a fan of candy and synthetic food? <laughs> oh no. Oh yes. Never mind. <laughs> That changed real quick. Oh, man. Okay. Here we go. This is it. One, two, and then we do one, two, and then we do... Okay, that's see, that's a really big chunk of damage right there. That's all we need. One, two. And then he's going to stagger again if I can hit him soon. Like right here, maybe? Maybe two in a row? Okay, so he can do eight attacks in a row. Like, small pause in between. Damn it. Thought he could only go into something that has a back step right after the combo of four. Never mind. Or something that's small. So we got... Peach or Barf. Also, by the way, Capra Demon's super easy. Like, I'm not gonna die on Capra Demon. I can do Capra Demon first try. I will eat four beans in a row if I don't. That one tasted kind of different. That... That, did, that didn't taste like barf or peach. That doesn't taste like anything. That tastes... That tastes like a mistake. Or is that actually supposed... No, the peach... Maybe that is peach. I don't know. That doesn't taste normal. <laughs> but it doesn't taste bad either. It's kind of like... It tastes like, uh, the, like the soap one a little bit, but really, really light. That's weird. Taste buds are starting to adapt. No, 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 like that one gen genuinely was not as strong as the other ones. Maybe maybe Mushu's trying to tell me the peach tastes like soap. Not a huge fan of the synthetic food, not an expert though. Well, if you eat a lot of like natural foods, your taste buds would be different, right? You have to eat a lot of stuff that's, um, you know, more flavor enhanced or chemically structured a certain way to have a different profile where um, you'd be more used to like salty stuff, sweet stuff, different types of flavors, and then you would almost like be missing that in regular foods. Whereas if you eat the regular foods, the other stuff's so strong. If you have a bit of both, it's like not really going to be noticeable anyways. Whoa. Okay, we can move him out of the way. Dude, this is it, this is it. We got it. Dog, don't kill me, don't kill me. Okay, dog's breathing fire, we're good. This is it. Okay, we have an actual strategy to get up here now. I don't know why that took so long. It's like dollar store reject jelly beans that weren't good enough to sell normally. Which is surprising because Jelly Belly is the best jelly bean, supposedly. Like, at least for the, the mainstream affordable ones, right? What about 3D printed food? I've always wondered about 3D printed food. Did, didn't Timmy Turner do that? In the Fairly Odd Parents episode? Or was it just, like, other things that he... I thought he printed food at one point.
gonna do the four and then back off. Because I'm pretty sure if I'm on his side, then he does sidestep. And if he attacked, I could kind of wrap around. And then on this, it's not safe to go in there. I gotta wave. So only on this attack. Three. This was the kind of RNG. Oh, wait a second. Is Capra Demon getting summoned? No, wait. He might not be activated. I think we're good. Are we? Yes, I think. Oh, I see him walking. I see him walking, dude. I see him walking. Okay. Chill, chill. Everybody's fine. Everybody's everybody's fucking good, dude. Everybody's chill. Everybody's fucking chill. Dude. <laughs> Help. <laughs> This is an unforeseen uh, circumstance here. I didn't think, I was making jokes about this. I was saying like, what if he actually does chase me? Okay, so now we literally need two more bleeds. Or Capra that gets taken out in Sanctuary Guardian and we chill on, which could be really hard. I can outspace Capra with just running. Like, I don't think his jump can even catch me, but the lightning though. So I have to use the move and then we'll, we'll test this, we'll see. How, how weak is he? He's a little weak. This is one of those crazy debates, though, because like if I get caught in something like that, he can combo into the stagger from the wave attack. And I'm guaranteed to get the wave attack more time, so I could just punish that. Like right here, but then Capra can hit through. Or he can walk. So we almost need Capra to have walking animation and be far away, and then I can attack twice. Or Sanctuary Guardian to be in a combo, and then he jumps at the same time. I could move. Couldn't move. I actually couldn't move. I actually literally couldn't move. That's a really good angle on the roof. Maybe that part of the roof is going to be good. See, like that, that right there is ideal if I was close. I knew that was gonna happen. Oh shit. Oh! Alright, so the new plan is we're gonna run all the way across the roof and try to kill Capra Demon first. <laughs> and see if that's better. Because he doesn't have as much health and he can stagger too. Alright, we got. Uh. Birthday cake, dirty dishwater. I think it's this one? Yeah, I see a speck of blue and on this one. Wait, what's the specs? That's dirty dishwater. Bad luck? Nah, it's not bad luck. I, I genuinely have to outwit the game here, right? So think of it this way. The only way I can attack that I can see is if there's openings like them being really far apart, or if Capra is doing his longest animation almost at the same time as the wave happens. For either one of them, I think those are the only two opportunities, because there's so much stuff going on. Beard looks sick, Turco. I appreciate it. Thanks, dude. Um, it's actually funny. There was a guy that came to my door and said that, like a stranger. And but it was it wasn't like recently. It was a while ago, and I was like, I think that was the first time someone ever said that before. I was like, that's weird. Well, like, super nice, but just... Like, it was a weird thing to say because it was the last thing he said. So thank you for making it the first thing you said. <laughs> you sent him, did you? Well, he didn't come to the door just to say that, but you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, thanks, man. I, uh, I feel warm. I have to go into, like, Antarctic freezing temperatures. We're good. Okay. Birthday cake or dirty dishwater again? <laughs> I know that the camera has a hard time focusing when I hold it up. I just want to show you that simultaneously I'm picking the jelly bean out of the thing and then eating it. I still haven't gotten birthday cake yet. That's still dirty dishwater. But that one's not as strong as the other one. That one tastes pretty good. It's a little fruity or something like that. 
Or not even that, it's like just sweeter. What is birthday cake? Um, it's basically like a vanilla flavor. Of some sort. It's not even... What it seems. It's basically vanilla and it just has like little specks of different colors. It makes you feel like you're having a different thing. It's like a red velvet. So, the top three things in life that people don't want to hear is that Dark Souls isn't real. Birthday cakes, vanilla, and red velvet's chocolate. And I'm here literally ruining your life simultaneously. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> oh shit. The, why is the Black Knight? Yo, he, he's gonna just kill me every time. He does so much damage. I need him to somehow run out of there. I think we got this if I go for Capra first. I actually think we do. I'm almost too stubborn to like go and do something else. Uh, stink butt. Cause like this is the main progression. If we beat this, we're already like almost at the, I would say we're 30 to 40% through, right? All right. Oh, that's really good. That's toasted marshmallow. That tastes so good, man. That's my favorite one. That almost tastes like ice cream more than marshmallow. Oh. If I toasted a marshmallow and it tastes like that every time, I probably wouldn't eat other food. Meblo, not too much. We're, do we're doing a gross jelly bean randomizer on this little spinny wheel at the same time as randomizing Dark Souls. So every death I have to take a chance of eating a good jelly bean or a bad one. If I spin on the line between two of them, I eat both at the same time. And if I complete this run, which I plan to do today, I'm eating all the remaining ones at the end, but we're dying so much that it might not even happen that way. I might finish them before we finish this. That's like the next thing to see. And again, Falbo, thank you so much for the host, dude. What were you playing? I'm not even gonna get the, the blood stain. Oh. Okay, here we go. We're just, we're gonna run through this much health, doesn't matter. I think that's the mistake I make sometimes. I try to save the health as we're running through here. We don't need to, though. That dog's not going to kill me. Like, no one's fast enough to get me other than the, the, the poison dart guy. You're playing Resident Evil 3 randomizer? Does that randomize enemies as well, or is it just the items? How does that work? Dude, stagger lock. <laughs> so what happens is like right there, the first time I got hit, I was already dead. And you can't get out of that. It just basically locks you in. All right, we got in between toothpaste and birthday cake. Or sorry, uh, berry blue birthday cake, dirty dishwater toothpaste. I think this is the last toothpaste one. There wasn't that many in the box. Dirty dishwater. So I'll have to respin if there's none left. I got toothpaste and I got the dirty dishwater, but the dirty dishwater tastes worse than the other one. <laughs> you know, it's the comic collection. So it's not comic books. Turco, they're action figures that are sealed from 1994 um, in the middle of the screen. And then off to the, I guess it would be technically my right left from your perspective, uh, Avatar and the newer Batman, like the DC figures from the new Batman movie, Avatar figures. It's an Avatar book, um, and then off to the other side off camera is 1996 Star Wars to 98, and there's some X-Men below that, and there's some other Marvel Legends, like just Avengers type stuff, some other characters, villains and heroes and all that, and then you can't see the Funkos, they're not displayed anymore. I moved my whole desk into the, uh, the other room to record and stuff. Forgot about the green guy, Neck Reacher. If I could get Neck Reacher as an actual character, that'd be amazing. Making an action figure of that might even be better than making merch. Avatar is in um, Atla or the blue one. James Cameron Avatar. So, like the movie. And then I have some Dune figures as well, but I can't hang them up. They're too heavy. This is brutal as Scorch Conch. Dude, he hit me through the thing. No. Okay, we're just going to test this. We'll see. 
I wish there was some sort of glitch or like a, like an exploit I could do that wasn't technically cheating to make the bar go down faster on this. Like the only thing I can think of is just putting on more toxic resistance stuff, but then I'm gonna die fast from slow rolling. And now he's just right at the flock gate, dude. Oh, he missed. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Maybe in T pose I can get him. This is just chilling. He's not spawned in, right? That might be it. That actually might be it. Oh. Probably unlikely. I'd have. I'm gonna have to kill Sanctuary Guardian right before he pops up, dude. Uh, a neck reacher plushie. That'd be cool. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Uh. It's gonna be dead fish. Potentially, or rubber. I wanna make sure this is the right one again. Oh no, that's that's the I might almost be able to dead fish as well. Yeah, there there is not many left <laughs> compared to what I thought. It's okay, there'll be there'll be a comeback. There'll be a second one, I'm telling you. Be fine. I don't think there is one left for uh Dead fish. I think we ate all of them. Unless. Wait, is there one that's orange with yellow on it? Instead of brown? Okay, this one looks kind of like it, but I'm not sure. It has a. It's like orange with yellow specks instead of orange with brown specks. That's strawberry banana smoothie. Okay, that is it. Yeah, that's the right one. So we do have some left. They're just weird colors. Did you trade. Um, a cow for those beans? I did not know. I uh, I randomly found them, and I don't know how, but I didn't buy them. I I genuinely oh oh no 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 I was sent them by um, uh Children's Research Hospital um because I donated quite a bit of money to like the uh, the Children's Network Hospital so like they gave me a box that had this in it. Snacktive, so like these chopsticks for your fingers so you can eat without getting your fingers dirty. They sent me like um, a letter and then they sent me the jelly beans sealed with a bunch of other stuff and things that you can do on stream to obviously help raise more money for charity and stuff. It was like a charity box as a thank you, but also giving you some things to do more things with. So I had them for years. This one's from 2018. Like, I think I received the actual thing in 2021, but the actual box is dated 2000. I think it's 2018, 2019 or something like that. So they must have been holding on to them for a while. Or it was on the shelf. They, they gave me the overstock. They didn't even give me the fresh one. Okay, I'm going to do a quit out here. Let's, let's see if this does anything. In the beginning, you were worrying you wouldn't die enough. I genuinely thought this through, and I was like, I'm pretty decent at DS1. I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, the Black Knight's in this room. Okay, that's scary. And I'm not running fast enough. Okay, with poison, this is doable. This is com completely fine with poison. You promised to make an animated neck reacher movie? I said that I would love to make one. I, d I didn't say that I could guarantee that it was going to be made, though, right? I'm pretty sure I said if I could find someone to animate it, I would love to make a neck reacher cartoon. But that's a, that's a hard thing to ask for. <laughs> Although, actually, you know what? You know what's funny? Uh, I do know somebody, and they said they have somebody they work with that does animation, and they actually have a portfolio. So if I if I like their portfolio, I told them to send it to me. They probably forgot, but I'll remind them if they actually do send it. Maybe there will be somebody I could work with to do animation stuff. The only person I know right now, though, is uh, Matthew Shesman. So I want to heal. I'm just going to try it. Nice. Whoa! Yo, he was at a map. He was on the other roof there. I 
I think beating this is going to feel almost better than the Hitless Trilogy, dude. It's, it's been long enough. Attention spans aren't like they used to be. It's just going to be so crazy. It's going to feel like it took 20 years. That's last heal. And then that was nice. Now we're getting really bad RNG. It's because I said something about the wave. The game noticed. Should have expected that. Oh, and then he follows up. Oh, okay. I got lucky there. This one kind of sucks because I'm probably going to die in one hit, but if we do it, even better. Um, just based on that capper situation. So it's like I got to get two bleeds really quickly once Capra gets out there. And then I have to have a plan where if, like, if Sanctuary Garden starts the four-piece attack, <clears throat> I have to be able to, like, escape it horizontally every single time. Like, there's got to be an option for that, because right there, I would have died if I started it at a different time. Or if I got a different placement when it started. So here I gotta like roll three times, I think. Oh, it started again. <sighs> AC6 hitless, that'd be crazy. <laughs> I enjoyed that game just playing it normally, it was fun. Oh, we got right in between liver and onions and stink bug. What's AC6? I'm assuming it is uh, Armored Core. Is this the weapon that drops off the Ghost Ladies? Yeah, and it's, it has a 300 rating on Bleed, so it bleeds really well. It's not actually a bad weapon at all. I thought it kind of was at first, but it's not. Will every boss enemy type just appear once, or can they spawn multiple? Oh yeah, you can have multiple. We already had uh, a Sanctuary Guardian in Valley of Drakes as a regular enemy. So because I have, there's a 10% there's a chance a regular enemy can become a boss. Any of these guys right here could be like Manus, Gwyn, Arto like it could be Artorius or something like that. It could be so bad that to get into a fog gate, you have to fight something that's harder than the boss that it would have originally been, and whatever it's replaced with. With like almost no upgrades or whatever the hell the current point of the game is, right? So it can it can get scary. <laughs> you think I'm starting to like the, the bad jelly beans? I'm not actually getting I'm not starting to like them, but I'm getting a bit more used to it. I think some of the flavors are spiked though. Like there's there's one that you get once in a while that's super strong. And only reason I say that, it used to be the case when I tried this before, but most of them were strong now, and then I had a couple that were weak, so I'm like, I think it's the opposite. I think now, every once in a while is a weak one, instead of, you know, the preferred way, where most of them are just not that flavorful. Doctor Who, what's up, dude? Ooh. Okay, here we go, we got a good chance. <sighs> this looks like the worst experience when you die, then... If you did the eight-hour Rich Piana arm workout and you died that way. <laughs> you know, it's actually really funny. when The funniest thing, I believed a lot of really silly things when it came to fitness. like But the Rich Piana thing never got me, though. Like, I always knew he was just, like, a little bit more crazy than average. And it wasn't necessarily, like, that you had to do that. He was just being a little bit extreme because he liked doing that stuff, right? Some people actually took that seriously. They're like, I tried it. So that's just disgusting. Eight hours of resistance training would be ridiculous. Maybe. I don't even think an Olympian does that. Oh, there's game crashed again, but at least we're at the fog gate. Okay. I'll pause the timer. That's not the worst crash ever. As long as I don't enter the fog gate and I get attacked immediately. I got back in Armored Core this week and you're at the end of your, your playthrough. 
I wonder what ending you're gonna get. I can't explain the one I got, I don't know the name of it, but apparently it was one of the better ones, so yeah, tell me what you think of it when you beat it. The pacer eating those is crazy. One time you ate a small pack in one sitting and just looked at... Looking at the beans made you nauseous. <laughs> oh, he is attacking immediately. Oh no. Oh, I could also go on the side right there to cancel. Okay, okay, I just learned something. I just learned something super important. That changes a lot of stuff. I can heal on the final attack there. When you go underneath. I forgot you can make him sidestep if you just run. Sometimes. There's another option too. Like I could try to hang out in the area where Capra is. Like if this doesn't work right now, I'm gonna do it on the next one. And I just fight him as if Capra's not there, then attack Capra every time he does this attack. If there's time. And that's that's another method where if it does actually allow you to lower his health before he spawns officially, then maybe we can do that. there would have been at least one or two there. Damn. Because, like, sometimes you have to do that to save yourself in the position that we're in because we can't space it. We don't have the endurance. All right, dead fish. Gotta look really carefully now because, again, it's, it's getting slim. And some of them kind of look similar. Actually, you know what? Wait. Is that marshmallow? I think this one's dead fit. Oh, wait, 2D Fruity's in there. Wait, no, no, no. Man, they didn't get the color. The picture on this thing does not match some of these colors. Or the way they designed it. That's dead fish. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely dead fish. That one doesn't taste as strong, though. Hopefully the hospital is very close to the gym. <laughs> Uh, Gang Graniso, what's up? And Not Seal, how are you doing? Welcome back, randomizer. Yeah, randomizer for enemies, items, and jelly beans. So it's kind of like a triple randomizer. Imagine if all items scaled with random stats. <laughs> if, if that was the case with this, I don't know if anybody would be good enough to do it in one sitting just because. <laughs> you could get unlucky on that one. Like, there's definitely things we can skip or, or I guess, like, kind of use the method to overpower the circumstance, if that makes sense. But some methods wouldn't be enough if it's, like, a time-sensitive thing. And this is one of those ones where it's debatable, right? Like, I believe you can do this perfectly fine. But because there's a time event that happens, it looks like it just is unlucky. So I have to get them to attack at the same time in certain spots. But I still think there's, there's a reality where you kill Sanctuary Guardian. And um, Capra Demon can't catch you yet. Because we were close to that. Can this dog get my ankles? No. Oh, that was so close, it almost did. This is training for when you sh you're shipwrecked on a stranded island and you have to eat fish that wash up on the shore. Exactly. <laughs> Those 90s Spider-Man figures are cool. Slevin, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, apparently, they are uh, mostly bad guys. Because, like, if you think about it, Spider-Man is a hero. But, like, most characters in Spider-Man are bad guys. So, it's interesting because I wonder if anyone only collects villains or only collects heroes. I, I have mostly the villains because, like, there's no... Like, who, who helps Spider-Man? Daredevil once in a while. So he's on the wall there. Like, there's a small Daredevil, but it's, it's about it. Like, Punisher's kind of like anti hero, so I'd count him as bad sometimes, too. But yeah, and all the other 
series like Batman and stuff like that, I feel like there's more good guys. That's what it seems like. Okay, there we go, we got a stagger. He's jumping. Uh, he's gonna do a tail attack, heal, jump. Ooh, that's brutal, doesn't do too much damage though. It's completely fine. This is really good. Oh, oh, he went over me. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, okay, I think we got something here. So we need lightning to hit the roof at a long distance and then him to jump as well. That's another opportunity. So like from over here, if he does lightning, for example, that would have been it right there. And now he's just completely spaced out. One, two, three. That was just lucky. I don't know why that's happening. I'm actually very concerned. But I can't show it because I need to win. All right. What happened is Miyazaki finally got back from lunch break, finished his sushi and his sake, and turned on the button that makes the game easy. What, dude, what the hell's going on? What? Didn't he, didn't even break out of the animation from Stagger? Wait, can I get a tail cut on this then? I wonder if I have a weapon that's tall enough. I don't think so. I still can't even use Drake. I should have like spec to use Drake Sword so I could do the special ability. I don't even know how that happened, dude. I wonder if okay, you know what I'm thinking? And let, oh, he, he resumed. Okay, he resumed. Never mind. We're good. I'm thinking that something to do with being in that other area for too long actually confused him, and he lost uh, where my placement was. But it couldn't reload based on what was happening when it froze or something like that. Because I've seen that happen on a single boss. Like I had that happen on a run against Smo on like just the regular game. And even though I hit him, he still couldn't figure out like what was going on for a second. Second, if I don't leave. No. Nope. Yo. Stamina. 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 Please. Please. Yo. There's one. Dude. Okay. Now Miyazaki's pushing the button to make it scary again. 100%. Yo. <gasps> He's gonna be a <laughs> I don't even know what I got for winning. I didn't check. Was it one of the masks? Did anybody catch what that was? <laughs> Skipped it. Some of your favorite Spider-Man villains. Uh, Mysterio. Mm, Carnage, Venom, Shocker. Mm, Scorpion's pretty cool too. There's a lot of them. I think my number one favorite would be Eddie Brock, probably Venom, just because like he is also anti-hero as well. And I like Punisher a lot too. Punisher's kind of like Batman style, and then uh, Eddie Brock's sort of like uh, like supernatural and also, well, I guess Spider-Man's sort of, he's not supernatural, but Eddie Brock's technically kind of supernatural or like intergalactic as well. So like the storyline ties everything off Earth, which eventually it gets to the point of, I think, the creator of the universe in Marvel, um, who can also end the universe as well, which is like a huge story in the comic books, but... Um, he kind of bridges out into like the you know the outer spaces of different planets and different species and stuff. So that that brings a lot of extra stuff into the series. It's pretty cool. They also have so much material they can work off of with that. But the ones that are like local to Earth, though, definitely Punisher. Definitely, I like Shocker quite a bit. I like Mysterio. Stoked to play uh, through and 100% Armored Core Six. You're gonna get 100% on it. That's insane. Okay, we're going to go talk to Oswald and see what he's got. Heart rate monitor? My heart rate doesn't really go up when I play this. Like, I know that you might not believe me. I, I, I'm i going to get the heart I keep I keep saying I should. I remember even Faraz told me to do it because he got one. And he recommended me the one he got. Damn it, I should get one. If I had to guess right now, my heart rate is like... It's resting or even lower than what it would be normally if I was just sitting and chilling. Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> Like, I feel super calm right now. I think I got a little bit more stressed, like, trying to get into the fight. 
Because I couldn't see the, the way of doing it as easily. <laughs> Over two years. All right, we got humanities for 200. Dude, I'm getting three of those. That's easy. Gonna get two of these as well. Large soul proud knight. I think that actually does pop for a thousand technically. So I'm gonna get the other humanity, and then we'll get about 15 homeward bones. Oh, they're only 50. Okay, we're gonna get like 25. Cool. I don't actually know if the alluring skulls will matter. I probably shouldn't waste 2,000 on it. No one will from any time. Oh, is Proud Knight 5,000? <laughs> Too bad. Do you know what Marble I'm... Ruins is? Uh, I don't know. I'm not actually, so the thing is like, despite having all this stuff, I actually no don't know a lot about Marvel. I just know some things here and there that I'll hear from like, maybe a video or like I'll read, or maybe someone tells me that knows more about it. I know some people that are like fanatics, but uh, I'm kind of like well-rounded. I just have the nostalgia for that specific year because um, that the cartoon that is based on those toys was my favorite Spider-Man. Like in general, it's still probably one of the best ones. And then Batman, favorite Batman movie, the new one. So I got it. Basically, if, if I have something that's a favorite, I'll get the stuff from it. Cuphead, I have the whole, almost the whole collection of the Funkos from that, but I don't want to collect other Funkos necessarily unless it has some sort of meaning. So, you know, favorite Dragon Ball Z character, favorite basketball player. Um, stuff like that, but no full sets other than, like, things I'm really, really into. So wait, if Proud Knight was 5,000, that means Soul of a Hero for 15, is that... Is that a good deal? Wait, I'm gonna buy a Brave Warrior and pop it, so 2,000, let's Don't see. Get your... I can't remember the soul values. Five, oh, okay, Brave Warrior's 5,000. So yeah, we can buy those. That's kind of funny. I could have, dude, I could have done. Okay, here's the comments on YouTube are just gonna be like, streamer, you should have bought Soul of a Brave Warrior before you did Gargoyles. Ah. You're gonna be so mad, dude. These are probably all good buys. Like, I actually didn't know. Boy, where are you off to? We could have started a small business in the beginning of Dark Souls, dude. <laughs> I could have probably uh, went international. We could, we could have sold items to people in Elden Ring. Toucan, thanks for the 25 months. Over two years. That actually is a legit two month or two year resub because on the 24 months, you can technically be subbed for like 23 months in one day or something, I think. I believe for it to actually be past two years by a single day, at the very least, you have to see 25 months. So that's cool. Actually, wait, let me level up first before we do anything else. Comics Explained YouTube channel is a holy Bible. I think that's actually probably where I learned the thing about the like the universe creator for Marvel, because I remember there's a video I put on, I was just listening to the audio for it, and it explained some story for one of the movies, but then like tied comics into it. Can you play Playing God by Polyphia? If not, you should check it out. Can I? I can't at the moment, but I did a cover of it, so I technically, I tried to. Um, it was a very bad take because I was in a rush to travel, so I was about to get on a plane literally right before. And I was like, I just got to do this, pack up and leave. So I did it super quick. Um, my, If you look at my Instagram, I have me playing pretty much like all the important riffs from the song. And then I have the full cover. But the riffs that I did on Instagram, some of the practice I did was much better than the actual video. So there's that. And the mix was terrible. I, I screwed up the mix quite a lot. Because I was doing the audio on Faraz's computer and I just couldn't get it like what I needed to. So it was bad. But I'll fix that because I'll do the drum cover. And then I'll find a way to kind of... I guess maybe uh, remaster the guitar audio. Just bring it out a little bit more. But yeah, can I play it well? No, can I play it? I could make someone think I can play it. Oh, there's nobody up here. See, see dude, this is what I'm talking about. We're, we're in the clear. What is dying anyways? Like, I, I haven't seen a death for a long time. I don't recall there even being one. Like, in fact, I think this is actually a challenge run. We're, we're doing deathless, right? <laughs> you wanted all the alien versus predators, but you couldn't find them? Isn't that stuff, like, super, super, um, uh, what's it called, uh, valuable? And it, 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 that's a McFarlane toy, right? The alien stuff? I have a spawn from McFarlane that's from 2000. It's not on the wall. It's in a box. It's a complete plastic blister pack. It's pretty cool. And um, I have a friend that collects all of the stuff you're talking about, the alien. I could probably ask him about it. 
Alex the Alien, The Predator, the horror movies, basically a lot of McFarlane stuff. And I was just talking to them about the spawn. But they showed me when I went over their house, they had a lot of uh, a lot of horror stuff from like Devil's Rejects. They had alien stuff. They had things from uh, Evil Dead and all that. It was really cool. What are those in the wall? Banana? Yeah, they're action figures. Order the Tim Henson guitar, but you're still pretty new. That's amazing, dude. I hope you actually get it pretty quickly. It took a very long time for mine to ship. I think I waited seven months, roughly. About six or seven months. It was. Oh, I think it was longer than the Aristides. The Aristides took about three or four months, which is actually impressive because that has to be built. Like, the Tim Henson guitar was already made, so that's that, that, that's like a mass-produced one. Uh, I think there was just such a crazy amount of hype around it. And then now I say, I think Ichikan Nito, he has, uh, if anyone's familiar with his music, on his channel, he has the Tim Henson signature, but it's an even better color than the one that was o the only color available. I was like, oh, I want that one. <laughs> All right, the game crashed again. But it's okay. It's technically going to put us right where we were, so. Oh, boy. Wondering when Armored Core figure from 30mm is coming out. They, they make Armored Core figures, too pretty cool playing any polyphia is impressive i have actual covers of polyphia stuff that's good like decent like i decent enough where scott did comment on champagne and he said he really liked it and he said i played it really well i don't agree with him i screwed up his solo tim's solo i did almost perfect and then his solo i screwed up but you can't hear it that well and then um the rest of it's fine but there's some choices with like not doing um, the Nick Johnson solo and everything and the way that I play Scott's part that outlines the melody behind his solo that's not how I'd like it to be. Like, there's a lot of things I can criticize about everything I've done, but I don't think it's important to most people that just watch this stuff. Um, and apparently it's not important to the people that wrote the music, according, or maybe just Scott. <laughs> so, like, I still think the, the best one I've done is um, Culture Shock, but Culture Shock's super easy to play, though. So I could actually, like, really get into that one. That one I think was perfect, pretty sure. I just didn't do the uh, the slap technique for the, the ending section because I hadn't practiced it too much. This game can't handle the random. I think, it, yeah, it put me back a little bit actually. So now I'm right before where I was. Love to hear Polyphia OD, you want to see the struggle? OD wouldn't be too bad. Because OD is sweet picking. I'm pretty good at, like, um, 40 ounce and OD, I think I could be okay at because I can sweet pick. And I actually learned 40 ounce at one point. I just didn't record it. And it wasn't full speed. It was, like, maybe 75%. Um, the speed of 40 ounce would be hard, but OD's speed is, like, not the issue. It would be really bad if they didn't put breaks in between. If, because there's pauses between the phrases, it makes it a lot easier. Um, but for some people, that might be challenging if you don't know how to sweep, stop, then get into another section of sweeping in and out, right? Rather than constant. But yeah, I, I, I kind of believe it this way. Anyone can, anyone that can play music can play almost any song. You just have to, like, some people might take five years to be able to play that song. Some people might take five days or five hours. Like, it's all multiplied based on where you're at in terms of your fundamental ability. And then how you practice, it's going to speed it up too, right? But I think... Someone that's just starting within the first year could play OD, but they'd have to play it like at at the most maybe 50%, and that might take a year. But eventually they'll play it. No, dude. No! Yo! I try I tried to roll there, but I didn't have the ability to. Screwed that up. Everyone's hands are different. It's not so much, like, the, the fact about hands, it's the fact of, like, I guess humans can learn, right? But the way that you learn is going to have to be different, right? So in the aspect of what you're saying, I have to figure out what's ergonomic for me, which might not be ergonomic for you. So that, like, if I give t advice to somebody, it might not apply the same way if it's a mechanical thing, right? Or there might be a nuance, and then you have to adjust to that. So I have a, I have a finger that's kind of, like, broken, and it healed sideways, and I also have big hands which people will be like, oh yeah, you can like stretch across the fretboard. But then because my fingers are large and my hands are big, um, I have to be very careful with like how I put them on the board. If I had smaller hands, I could actually easily not make as many mistakes because it's less clunky, right? You're just like super elegant and like 
you know, efficient and all that. We got cappuccino and stink, cappuccino, liver and onions, toasted marshmallow, stink bug. I gotta have both of them. There's only a little bit left of the liver and onions. And then toasted marshmallow, I think, is that it? I really hope this is it. Second time it didn't spin. Oh, did I have, oh, do I have to have two? Okay, wait. Just play bass? So I do have a bass as well. Oh man, it's between, no, it's not even between. It's, it's dead fish. Dead fish. I think this is it. It doesn't have any specs on it, but it's the same bass. Chalky pink color. That's definitely dead fish. But it kind of doesn't taste as strong as the other ones for some reason. I don't know if I'm getting used to it at this point. I'm pretty sure I got really unlucky in the ones at the top of the box. Or whatever ones I selected were the strong ones. Because <laughs> it's like way more inconsistent now that they're actually strong. Just play... Yeah, so base... Um, Base actually would be really good if you have those situations. I was just saying where you have like bigger fingers, bigger hands, 100%. Have way more room between the strings and everything. Jumbo frets on guitar can help too. Oh my God. <laughs> that looks really funny. <laughs> Perfect time to show up. What's going on, Tango? How are you doing? You were here yesterday too, right? I remember you came back and you were saying you'd never heard Periphery before. Unless I'm confusing you with someone else. Should have got the bonfire. Oh yeah, the one on the roof. Okay, so there is one reason though that I don't want to do that because if we get up to the top and it's like a DLC boss, like if we have like Calamite or Manus, Artorius or whatever, it might not make sense to have the bonfire. That means I'm, I'm gonna have to run back down here backwards to get to the other areas. I'm kind of stuck then. And there's a chest right there with a ring. Normally, I need to move this guy. Probably kill him pretty quickly. If I can hit him, they're kind of weak normally. You heard Perfy for the first time in the previous Clone Hero stream. Yeah, that's that's cool. That, so, considering that like I've played their music a ton of times on the intro to the stream, that's that's really interesting. So we got Hidden Body and we got Sage Rope. That Hidden Body might be really good. So there's a chance that I I put some points in a sorcery. I don't know how much it requires, but if it's not too much, I might use that. I might use that just so people can complain and be like, you use magic, you're a cheater. Oh shit, Never mind. <laughs> it's because I stopped it. The timing was different on the ball. I stopped to go and get the item. All right, we got a different one. Now we got old bandage or pomegranate. It's been a while. Old bandages or pomegranate? <coughs> old bandage is the worst, dude. I don't know why. <coughs> dude, it tastes it tastes like um It tastes like if you were to take like I'm trying to think of what what it would be. It's like a, a sock that had cheese in it that went bad that also has like like ink from a pen or something. I don't even know. It tastes like printer ink or something. I don't even. I can't even <laughs> explain. It's like it's like moldy, inky. Like it tastes kind of like blood too. It has like a metallic taste to it. Ew. Do they taste bad on purpose? So the whole thing is like the jelly beans are a game that you can play by itself where you and your friends, or if you're crazy enough by yourself, can spin a little wheel, and then you pick a jelly bean, it can be one of two flavors. Do I drink blood often? I've drank in my own blood so many times because I bite my lips all the time, dude. I chew so vigorously that like, there's a spot on my one lip that I've bitten into probably almost every day for the last week, and it's like, it's it's pretty gross. And also on top of that, I've just like cut the inside of my mouth so many times that I, I just know. I just know, man, I've cut my tongue so many times. So I definitely know what blood tastes like. I've also been bleeding so much without a band-aid that I've had to just like suck my hand or my, you know, my thumb or my finger or whatever it is. Just to stop it. Even though I don't think that's a good idea. 
<laughs> what mods have you done to it? Uh, there's a T4 Turbo Netics big single turbo. Um, there's Goopy Apex seals, so they don't crack as easily. It's got a rebuild for the entire engine, and then, or not everything, but obviously like what was necessary. And then, um, I'm trying to remember what the coils are. I don't know if they're Night Sports or there might be something else. I can't remember. Um, there's a Pineapple Street Port and bigger injectors. I think there's like a 1600 cc and then the factory it's like a five something can't remember the exact and then uh there's a ra amimiya kit our magic wing saibon hood i don't really count those as mods i count powertrain as mostly mods like cosmetic to me is not really modding but i mean it's fun like it's definitely cool but it's not really like a mod in my opinion functional wise i'm more of like the functional thing i don't like the the stance builds and like the you know the show the show builds and all that i like the performance like you're gonna go into a hot lap and literally just crush something that's not as not as uh quick on the corners but you know much maybe you could beat something that's twice as fast in a straight line just by the dynamics like go-kart shit as there's some other things too but that's that's mainly it we used to work for a big soda franchise and they had a lab where Sometimes would meme and create the weirdest flavors. Imagine fizzy water with a flavor of vanilla ice cream and pickles. That, the pickle part ruins everything no matter what, because I do not like pickle flavor. Actual pickles themselves, there's been a couple times where I haven't minded them too much. I can't remember what kind, but like there was, there was a couple times I tried a certain type of pickle that was okay. I think it was like the, uh, the baby dill or something. And it was like really cold and like fresh, so I was like, okay, it's not, disgusting soggy warm pickles but when i was younger there'd be an occasion once in a while you know you order something that's plain and it has pickles on it normally because people like pickles and it's just so soggy and warm and that gave me some trauma same with relish too the first time i tried relish i think i was like three and i cried and i remember it too it was it was uh it was so disgusting mustard was gross too and they still are <laughs> mustard's tolerable if you combine it with certain things now obviously that's in a lot of barbecue sauces other types of things but yeah just straight yellow mustard straight relish gross dude did you import it yourself or buy it off somebody so i didn't import it myself it was imported by uh somebody that owned it before the previous owner first owner um, in canada was like two owners ago and then there was one owner in japan but um most most people including me have not used it too much um, because I think when it was in Japan, it wasn't driven a lot. It was just mainly like a, I guess it was somebody's project or whatever. And it was also protected in a way and like kind of stored in such a way that the region it was from, they intentionally didn't use it um, on the roads because it would have had a lot of problems with like the undercarriage. It was in a really wet region. And uh, the way that they did everything, it shows that they didn't want to expose it to certain stuff. So I think that they didn't daily it at all like there's no chance and they also probably didn't use it as much as some people use their weekend cars just uh, you know kilometer wise and everything but yeah, i have all the paperwork for the import stuff so like if someone wants to ever um understand the whole process i have like an ins insanely detailed uh series of booklets and piece of information on pretty much almost everything and also some stories that check out when it comes down to inspection and stuff like that if they want to know all right, so that crashed again right before the guy that was the culprit that gate kept me and didn't let me kill Iron Golem. The guy that said no. Where are you from not knowing of Relish? Oh, no, I, I know. Oh, wait, are you, you're talking about somebody else in chat. <laughs> I was like, I know what Relish is. I, I wish I didn't. But then there's a chance that if I didn't know what it is, I might eat it by accident, right? So, yeah, it's okay though. I've been called a serial killer so many times for certain orders. And sometimes I'll say it first just to make someone feel a little bit more comfortable because I know they're thinking that they're like, you definitely have a problem. Your brain's not proper when it comes to like toppings and shit. But you know what? It was, it's really cool when it comes to like cheese specifically on certain things or like high calorie sauces because then you save calories so you can eat more. It's like the especially drinks too if you don't like a lot of drinks like boom get those calories 
Nito is crashing your game? You think Nito is afraid? There was one randomizer we did where Nito was naked. Like, he had no robe on. You could just see his whole body. And Nito's legs look like... It's like a... He looks like a goat demon or something like that. He's got, like, reverse ankle joints and shit. And, or, um, knee joints. He doesn't, he doesn't have, like, human, um, anatomy. So I was like, that's crazy. Never had relish, but you know to ignore it. I'm not trying to tell people to not have it, because I bet you relish is super good for people that like the pickle flavor and other stuff. But I just don't like it. Um, the only thing that's nice is, like, I like dill-flavored things a lot. Dill's not bad. Just the pickle flavor being strong is not nice. Okay, if we can get this guy to fall off, maybe we can escape. And just run around again. It's like a Zuli the Witch video. I wonder if Zuli the Witch actually covered that, because there's a clip that I have. Maybe I could send it to one of those channels. It's probably super obvious. Like, I'm sure other people that got randomizers have seen that before. It's, it, it depends on where he is. If you move Nito, though, from Tomb of Giants, it probably happens pretty often. Oh, speaking of which, I think Nito's over there. Wait, he's, he's in there. You can hear him. Somebody new in chat. There's no way. There's no way. That was, that was not a coincidence. One of you guys knew. That's why you're talking about Nito, right? There, he's, he's up here, I think. He's the giant. I couldn't see. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, wait, what? Oh, shit. Okay, he's not naked. If he does the grab, though, I can't really move that easily. And this will kill me pretty quick, too, I think. So let's run. Uh, this is really bad because, okay, think of it this way. I go into the boss arena, he might be able to do sword dance into the arena from the roof, which means anywhere I am, he can kill me without even being there. So the only option I'm thinking is just go in here and then maybe he falls in the arena too or just bugs out. Oh, what? Dude! What? Which one is it? <laughs> which one? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know where to go. <laughs> he might be stuck though. We might be fine. <laughs> Okay, if the other one doesn't attack me, I'm fine. This is this isn't bad. That's really funny though. He's been screaming for the past 30 minutes. Did you not hear him? I, I literally wasn't paying attention. My my audio's not even turned up that loud right now. Like there's a chance you guys might hear it louder than I do. Don't drink anything with caffeine as you have a bad reaction to it. Most people can't understand that. I think that's more relatable than relish, or not relish, like getting plain things or like almost no toppings on things when you get like a, like a burger or a sandwich or anything. Like I don't even really eat sandwiches because I don't, there's not a lot of sandwiches I can eat that easily, right? And if I do, it's almost nothing on it where like there's been people saying you're not really getting a good deal by only having these things. Like it's almost nothing on the sandwich, right? Bread and butter pickles are goaded with the sauce. Is that a brand? Bread and butter pickles. It's actually crazy that this is so much easier than the beginning. If we had just gotten this for gargoyles, minus the other Nido, I think we'd be fine. fan of onions or tomatoes so for me it didn't like tomatoes when I was a kid now I love now I can literally eat a tomato just straight like an apple and I have plenty of times just to save time <laughs> or I'll just cut it in half and just eat half of one but I don't like tomatoes on things if the temperature of the tomato has been changed from cold to warm and the crunchiness of it's not there or if the liquid from the tomato makes other things soggy. It, it, it's kind of like a timing thing, so I'll put tomatoes on things if I eat it right away. If it's sitting for a second, uh, it's most likely not going to happen. <laughs> or I'll just remove it and then, you know, I'll eat it separate or just 
toss it to the side. Same thing with lettuce too, it depends on the heat of the thing. If it's a hot thing that has lettuce, the lettuce has to be cold, it has to be on at the last second. It has to be dry too, I can't have wet lettuce, it's gotta be padded dry. I might even dry it myself. I have a lot of specifics with that stuff. But then we also just do be eating some raw iodine once in a while, so it's like flavors and stuff like that. I mean, I can handle it. <laughs> What's going on, Fabian? How are you doing, dude? Weakness disgust. <laughs> Would you be permitted to post what you just clipped from the stream, Diddy? Uh, is there a mod that can permit Diddy? I can permit you right after this if if there's nobody that's in chat that can. Ooh, okay, that's a lot. Crazy damage. Uh, oh, I have humanities. Okay. Had fun last night with the drum stream, Fabian. I'm really glad you liked that. That was cool. And it was awesome to PB on some of those things because I genuinely do need to transcribe some of that into the, the real case. So if the muscle memory is there, then it's, it's so much easier. And I'm going to probably, like, if that works out after a while, I, I would love to make a little description or, like, a descriptive video explaining, hey, you know, if, like, you're trying to learn stuff, you know, these are some good tools and I want to I want to kind of reference Rocksmith as well because I, I do have Rocksmith I have played it it didn't help me learn guitar I used it after I already knew how to play but they're all, they're exactly the same thing it's literally just a Rocksmith right and I have a lot of uh, people I know that have used Rocksmith and become guitar players from it and there's a streamer uh, French Dallion he's like a really good guitar player he learned how to play guitar by streaming and playing Rocksmith and now he can just shred so it's like it's cool to see um, alternate tools being used Pickles are like alien food. <laughs> so that, you, know what, you know what's another really funny thing? The pickling process and what it does to the pickle isn't the part that I don't like about it, which doesn't make any sense. It's just the, the final package, right? The flavor, there's something about it, but I love pickled onions. I love pickled radishes. I like fermented things as well. Like, it's weird. So we're gonna basically just do this again, and I'm gonna take a bunch of pickle slices, gonna make them nice and soggy, make them warm, microwave them, get them all floppy and disgusting, and then I'm just gonna eat those. <laughs> and that'll be torture, that'll be bad. <laughs> you're so into being a shredder when you were young, you did a lot of Ingve Malmsteen. Oh, he's, he's really, really cool, man. His stuff is uh, like the neoclassical music. His stuff is kind of, it's like a very, very fancy version of the type of like lead lines I'd write for my own music, except for just like, you know, like 10 steps ahead of whatever I'm doing. <laughs> like, cause I, I was inspired by classical music as well, but it's just um, his techniques and everything and the way he plays. Also, I think, does he, doesn't he, uh, he does something really weird with the way he sets up his guitar. I can't remember what it is. There's something he does that like almost no one else does. Oh, it might be the scalloped frets. Like the scalloping of his frets themselves, the way they're dug out is like way more severe. Like the, the, the radius of it or the way, the way the angle or whatever. But there's something done to his guitars. He has the scallop. Isn't it just like his scallop is ridiculous though? It's like super deep. Where you can actually see, it's like a little half pipe. <laughs> So that's, that's something I was, he, he's the one that kind of introduced me to that idea. Like this first time I ever even heard of that. Uh, Poro, thank you for the 16 months. Nice new setup, I appreciate it. Yeah, I got some lights. I can change the lighting. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I can change it. I think blue kind of looks the nicest. Otherwise it might not be obvious that there's lights. Been wearing the Elden Ring shirt a lot lately. That's awesome, dude. Did you make sure that you only washed it with cold water and didn't um, put it in the dryer? 
because mine, unfortunately, I washed it with super hot water and I dried it for like almost an hour and a half. And the first wash I had of mine, it did wear off a little bit. There's instructions that kind of explain, obviously, you don't want to do that with everything. But I would recommend if you buy the Elden Ring hoodie, just wash it with cold water and let it dry through the air or only dry it on like a warm temperature or cold temperature if you can, cooler temperature. But the wall was blue, no. No, it's the lights. The wall is white. You're, you're a fender guy, but you've never done scallops. I don't even know if I could understand like the the importance or like the utility of it because I don't get how it would feel better. Like I, in my mind, I can't understand that being better. It just seems like a bigger challenge because if you think of action, right? Like it would affect the action a little bit, but I think it's that's why he does it so he can get um, like a tighter ring and then like, you know, less vibration. It's a tighter sound overall, um, almost like the best of both worlds with uh, low and high action. Almost done babysitting Nito. Only washed it with 30 Celsius and used it in a dryer, but it didn't go bad. Paint has come off a bit, you must say. That's kind of what I'm, yeah, like the actual print of it, I, I don't want it to be fading or chipping away. So one thing I forgot to mention was with that specifically, just be a bit more careful. It's because the design has so much layers of color and, and the way we did it, it's not stitched into the actual fabric, it's just like a screen that's printed on. Like the silk screen or whatever. Everything else I have, I've, I uh, have a, the pocket square, like the little squill sip. That didn't fade much. The big squill sip, it's not on the store right now, but will be soon. That was like the tests that I did before I actually made the merch store. That one's fine. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. The basic designs with like me with like, the sword and everything like that, those ones aren't as bad because they, they just have one color in black, so it, it wouldn't even look as bad even if it did fade a tiny bit. So I think it's mainly just the Elder Ring design, which kind of sucks. That, that took the longest. It was the biggest investment for time and money and just like planning. And it also took like three people to make that happen, technically, not even including the person that provide or the people that provide the the fabric and everything in the distribution. Does his underground sword poke even do anything here? Apparently it doesn't, but the other one on the roof, that one was uh, popping up, I think. Or, or at least it, somehow it was, wasn't it popping up in the floor below him? Like in the lobby before you go up the tower to the, where the giant would be? Nito 1 didn't jump down. I got really lucky on that. So th this is like how the run goes. It's kind of like gambling a little bit with skill involved. <laughs> Legitimately. Um, and also, once again, guys, I have been talking a little bit about the music channel. Um, people probably popped in after I had talked about it and don't know what that is. So I'm going to take a break for like literally maybe four or five minutes. But while I do that, um, right before, I'm going to show you some stuff that is on the channel, just so you can get a sneak peek. And then um, the very first video that is on there will be live on Sunday. So if you want to follow the music channel and just be ready for it, I'm taking requests for songs in the comments. You can comment on any of the videos, any kind of music, any genre, it can be rap music. Literally, dude, like give me a country song or something like that, because I'm not a huge fan of um, pop country. I like blues country and like bluegrass and stuff. But if you give me pop country, I'll still do that if it comes down to it, and I'll make it like metal or something. I'll do something fucking funny to it. <laughs> so I want those kinds of challenges. I want to basically take something that's not even an idea that I would just come up with and then just see, can I make it happen sometime? So some of the content will be requests. Some of it will be my own doing, and then others will be a target, like a popular song that's trending, which I already did one that Let was like that. Specifically, because so I've never really done popular music. Made. I've only done really underground music. So the world might be made. Um, and Polyphia got lucky and obviously, or I got lucky <laughs> that Polyphia became super popular. I didn't think that they would be as big as they were when I first heard them, but now obviously they, it's clear as to why they're super popular, right? So I got lucky with that. That's the most popular music I've covered. And it obviously does, has done the best out of everything. 
So I'm convinced that if I did other popular music, it would almost kind of be a way of promoting the channel a little bit more for the stuff I do like and the original music they will be on there. So once in a while you might hear like a TikTok tune or like something that's trending on Instagram music or even like an actual famous song that's like a classic song that people like a lot. But yeah, anyways, uh, Fabian, thank you so much for the three months. And let me let me show you guys some of the stuff that I have planned out. So I'll pause the timer quickly. See if I can actually get this. To work. I think I have to make a new window capture. That is chat. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay, so you can see right here. So this song I already have on the channel in the music playlist. This is uh, Clairvoyant by The Contortionist. Um, just added the drums to it. And then my editor actually did a really cool job of making a visualizer with the waveform in a circle in the middle, like a little logo. So you know, stuff like this, basically. See if I can find. I don't know why that switched. Oh, he might have edited that. That's cool. I didn't know that was in there. Okay, the editor edited that. So stuff like that, that's um, a series that I'm going to be doing. There's a playlist specifically called I Went Back in Time to play music with my younger self. So this is me from 2019. So I'm 26 or seven there or something like that. I think, no, no, I'm 25 there. Am I 25? Holy shit, I'm 25 there or something like that. Here I'm, obviously, I'm 29. So this is four years later. Um, Soul Fruit in chat is right here. This is him. If you see him in chat, his name's Lamour. He helped me do the guitar cover originally. Then I just overlaid this. So that's a series that I'm going to be doing where I go back and I play all the music that I played on guitar, but on the drums with myself back in time. And I'm going to even go back to like 2015, maybe, or even before. And I'll dig out videos that I can find that you haven't even, maybe you've never seen or were uploaded. And I took them down like the bad guitar videos. I'm just going to do all of it as a challenge. Right. Um, and then also on top of that, you're going to see other stuff. Let me find, uh, another one so that's an example it's not going to be for everybody obviously but then maybe you like more mainstream music so let's see what else there is uh, it's kind of weird not even having the channel established it's hard to even find the videos on your own channel um there we go so stuff like uh you know who fighters People like Everlong, obviously, it's a popular song, so I decided to do that. I really like that song. It's my favorite by them. So, you know. So again, just very small sneak peeks. I don't want to show you the whole video yet because I want you guys to actually go watch it if you like the idea. If you don't, obviously don't watch it. Um, I know some people in chat, they might be more like new school music enjoyers or they like trap music, hip hop with like literally like almost no melodic value. Maybe, you know, you like the words are the words and like the bass and the beat are more of the thing. So I'm going to be doing like trap music on drums. I'm going to be doing rapping myself. I actually will rap and I'm going to sing as well. That is the goal. So it's not just drums. It's going to be every single part you can play in a band that I can possibly figure out how to do. And I'm going to try to do a massive collaboration for at least one video with like synthesizer, bass, two guitars, freaking like just as much as possible, maybe seven parts in one song. I'll, I'll, just because, just cause, you know, I want to see if I can pull it off and make it so, slightly respectable. Uh, and then, yeah, there'll be Tom Sawyer hopefully is going to be done tonight. And I hope it's a good one because that's that's a hard song to, to do well. And obviously, Neil Peart's like, legendary so if i do him dirty that's he's gonna fucking haunt me dude i'm not gonna be able to sleep so yeah that's uh that's that there's gonna be some classical guitar on there as well a couple songs i wrote myself um some anime music so uh sword on online crossing field i am practicing that up a little bit more because i originally had it ready to record stop playing guitar for m probably a month or two or something like that just started practicing that again it's looking okay so i should be able to record crossing field by Lisa originally, 
my my classical take on it uh, which will be in the next week hopefully and then there also was music from elf and lied and there was also some final fantasy music and stuff like that that i practice as well as whatever else whatever 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 collaborations you know but that's that and i'm gonna take a really quick break guys i'll be back in like a few minutes in the meantime there's not going to be any music it's going to be quiet so be alone with your thoughts i'll see you in a second that might have been the very most quietest brb i've ever had hopefully you guys are okay and everybody survived i ate regular food i was going to bring it back and eat it but i had to clean my face after because everything's just getting all over my face every time i eat it now <laughs> um but yeah so we'll see if that food mixes well with jelly beans <laughs> And outside of that, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to say. Also, I had a scary idea while I was uh, away. I was thinking of randomizer. I'm like, I wonder what, what randomizer item and enemy hitless Dark Souls one would be like. Because of how crazy this has been already. I was very curious about that. And I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> Could you share the clip, Diddy? Oh, yeah, here. Sorry, my bad. I told you I was going to give you a permit when I, when I was on Nido, right? Let's see. Wait, is the permit button not there anymore? Maybe I have to do the command. Can you guys hear me typing like through the sound effects of the browser? That's kind of weird. Your mom lets you have two needles. <laughs> That's funny. That was definitely like one of the best clips so far. Okay, let's see if we can level up a little bit. So I have no idea what's going to happen after this part. Apparently the Firekeeper looks like... a boss, like an actual G. Straight up gangster. Got the, uh... the highest fashion of 2024 that you haven't even seen on the runway yet. Fashion Week is going to hit hard this year. Unless it already happened, which would be really weird. I don't know anything about fashion, so... <laughs> that would be very weird if it didn't... didn't line up with the timeline. All right, so we're going to do 18 Endurance, 25 Vitality, and then I'll put a little bit of Dexterity into it, just in case I find a weapon that can be used. Wait, should we try to enhance the strength of the Flask now? Can I do that? Do I have a Firekeeper soul? I don't. Okay, never mind. Didn't you want magic for hidden body? So the thing with hidden body is I have it and I'll use it. The only case scenario that I think it'll be relevant is if I can't make it through an area. So like Duke's archives, maybe. Right now, though, I have no idea what's going to come up next. And I don't think that even with the stats we have, we have a really good chance of winning against ONS because this weapon's unupgraded. Meaning it probably would be super important to try to get strong first and then do the hidden body last. Uh, this, this area is pretty easy to get through. In my opinion, I might eat those words, but usually even on randomizer, I think it's a little bit better because like, for example, if the pain and guardians get switched for bigger enemies, they'll fall off of this whole section. They won't stay on the, the bridge. So this section shouldn't be bad. Let's see what we got. Yeah, everything's going to be falling off, I think. Well, there's somebody big over there. It's a guardian from the sanctuary. Oh, okay. The Guardian Knights. BRB still up? Thank you for telling me that. It has been a while. I also have not looked at OBS too much during this whole thing. I even had it hidden. So that's not smart. You know what though? I think that every single mistake now I've started to realize like when people like actually point that out that really helps engagement not even here but specifically in the actual videos so if <laughs> in the final edit like just if you're listening to this galaxy like when you edit this definitely leave the brb thing on the screen still and make fun of it or or wait to, for somebody to try to point it out comments oh no that wasn't the save it no ah. i don't think that was the right spot to jump was it or did i just screw up all right, jelly bean time. <sighs> I almost made it. All right, we got strawberry banana smoothie or dead fish. <sighs> Bucks. Can 
can I find? I think it's this one. Pinkish one. That's dead fish, yep. <coughs> oh my god. Ew. <coughs> Definitely not as fun after eating food. Because, like, the, f the taste of the food that was in my mouth is mixing now with this. Oh my god. Choose it like it's nothing? Well, I have to chew it and swallow it and eat it. The people that play this game, I've seen so many spit out the jelly beans. Like, the rule is they put it in their mouth, they chew it, then they spit it out. I can understand if you don't want the calories, but if you spit it out within the first, like, two seconds, you're not getting that full flavor, right? And more importantly, too, like... If you, if you eat it and you suffer the consequences of having the sugar as well, it's like double punishment. So I'm gonna have to like, end the stream and run for 10 years straight. I'm gonna be Forrest Gump, so I can burn off the jelly beans. I'm basically David Goggins, Forrest Gump, and Miyazaki's worst nightmare at the same time. As soon as we get across this little bridge. Get sugared, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure that would not be a concern for anyone else, but like one of the one of the reasons actually there was a day that I was ready to do this and I did put it off because I was like I couldn't figure out how to fit in the calories of the sugar for the jelly beans into what I was eating. And I was like, you know, that's a kind of a stupid reason not to do it. Oh shit. It's definitely a me reason, but it's not like a normal reason. <laughs> and I slipped and fell. Oh, it's right in the middle. We got old bandage and stinky sock. Oh, not stinky socks. Uh oh. I haven't gotten the Stinky Socks one yet. So the alternative to Stinky Socks is Tutti Fruity, and then again, Old Bandage is Pomegranate. Let's see if I can find it. It's this one. So it's like pink with blue specks, and then a red one. Oh, they're both good, thank god. Oh, that tastes really good. So we got Tutti Fruity and Pomegranate at the same time. The rotten fish bean. <laughs> Miyazaki Goggins. <laughs> Dude, if I could if I could like literally watch David Goggins and Miyazaki play anything against each other, like it could be like it could be like a basketball, it could be chess, it could be like freaking tennis, dude. I don't even care. That'd be amazing. Cause I have a feeling that David Goggins would be like so hardcore that he would miss a certain detail at some point because he'd be like, you gotta be fucking hard, man. You gotta be running like 20,000 miles, man. He's like, man, you stop being a baby, man. And then like Miyazaki would just be like, life is so inspiring, creative, and beautiful. And then he would just like magically like just fucking beat him. I don't know. You'd beat him by, uh, by being so soft, gentle, accepting, and, and creative. No hit race among them too. That'd be amazing. Actually, that, that's a good idea, because I bet you both of them would be pretty bad at playing the game by default. With the catch that Miyazaki would be a little better because he actually made the game. <laughs> but I think they'd both be pretty bad at the run. That would be insane. I've watched... Oh, I don't know who it was. It was a celebrity... Was it the guy from The Room? The, the dude that was in the movie The Room. Oh, I'm forgetting his name right now. But he, he did Asylum Demon. I'm pretty sure I watched him. In one of the videos. Ugh, dude, no! Oh yes, I saved it. I saved it. It doesn't count. You know what? Okay, I'm not even gonna spin. Random jelly bean. Could be dead fish. Not dead fish, peach. Yeah, I'm jumping in the wrong spot. There we go. How are you failing that? That wasn't even the right place. It's actually been long enough where I thought that that's where you're supposed to jump. <laughs> I wish I could... Oh, it's Tommy Tommy Wiseau. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so he played this game and he tried to beat Asylum Demon. In some sort of video where people try stuff. Got a fruit salad then? I actually had fruit salad earlier. It was deconstructed fruit salad. Basically... I ate every fruit in order. It's the only way to do that. That video is pretty old at this point. I think I saw it in like 2016, I want to say. He's abducted by aliens. <laughs> All right, well, if anyone ever asked me to try to kill Asylum Demon for like a little Let's Play YouTube video thing, 
for non-gamers, I'm not going to do it because the aliens will abduct me after. That's probably how they get them in there. They're like, hey, you want to come and like just be represented on this channel that you know nothing about and do something you've never done? Sure, why not? Let's take a chance. Sounds fun. It's like, I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you. Aliens probe you right after. Never done randomizer seems like a ton of fun. It's either really fun or really bad. That's they, there's nothing in between. It's the extremes of life. <laughs> there's no balance in randomization. <laughs> and you can make it even worse. Like there is a way to make it easier than this. Obviously, we're playing on unfair mode. There's fair mode, unfair, and very unfair. I decided to do unfair so we could beat it in one day. That was the idea. Oh my god, the punch. Yo, you better not be able to connect the next one. That. That mushroom was playing UFC. Best punch ever, yeah. <laughs> he definitely did the career mode. Like he had he had five star rating on his character. OP mushroom. Do you guys like um like the UFC games at all? Or would you watch that if I played it? If I had some like funny commentary and just like got crazy over it? Because I actually really enjoy the new one. And I have this like this theory, because I played it a little bit um just with, with a friend and I was like, I bet you if I played it on a monitor that has low response time, like I could actually kick people's asses online at it. <laughs> like it would be really fun because we always play on a TV. So I'm like, I want to get the new UFC and see how much better it is with like a really low response time. You'd watch that, yeah? I think it'd be funny. There could be so many just random clips of like really funny knockouts because I've seen the physics engine in it where like the dude falls over and it looks like he's doing like a curtsy, like a bow, like a very like fancy bow where he puts his arm behind his back and then he crosses his legs. And it, 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 there's just so many funny positions they can fall over in. I've seen people folded like lawn chairs where like their spine would break in half immediately. <laughs> and that part to me, it, 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 it's impossible. Like it cannot get old. It's never gonna get old. It's impossible. <laughs> You'll never even see that in real life, so. You'd watch it? Do you watch MMA? I used to when I was younger, like when I was in high school. Um, and I, I still watch boxing here and there, like just YouTube videos, but um, I'm not really a big fan of it as much as other sports. So like I like Olympics quite a bit, uh, summer and winter, particularly winter, like the um, the downhill skiing, the uh, slope style. Um, I like the Red Bull sports stuff. I like the X Games. Um, like Rail Jam and stuff like that, Motorsport, Formula One. Uh, tennis is really interesting to watch. I like watching tennis. I don't have like a particular favorite athlete when it comes to that, or like even men's and women's, like they're both interesting. Um, same with, I like watching pool. Like pool is always really interesting. Darts was always really interesting to watch. Like games of skill specifically, chess is really interesting to watch. That damage does not do anything. Okay, let's open this shortcut just in case. Right off the bat. It's always a smart idea. I'm gonna open up all the doors here just in case there's something really scary going on. And then I'm gonna grab this, which would I think usually be like Titanite, right? And is there another item? I don't think so. You're an amateur boxer, so you watch some combat sports too. I think it's really cool. I just, the thing with the combat sports for me is, and actually, you know what? This is more of the case for every sport. I really enjoy doing the activities more than watching people do them, but there's a point where it's relevant to watch them um, because you can get advice from it. Like you can kind of like get, you know, little bits of information that could help you improve it. So a lot of like me watching other people do those kinds of things is mainly just to learn stuff from it. Not so much that I'm a fan of the results because most plays in any single type of competition is moment to moment. It's not the overall picture that I care about. I don't care about like um, somebody, like obviously it's cool when people have consistency, but I don't care about like a team winning specifically. I care about like engagements and stuff. You know, so if someone makes a really cool play, that play is more interesting than whatever the result of the actual game is. Unless the whole game is just insane plays the whole time, which obviously is not always the case, but I don't have like a fandom for people involved in it. Obviously, every there's always going to be like a best team or like better teams than other ones. Um, people are going to have their advantages, but like that's why it's not as interesting to me for the people. It's more so like how they actually interact in the situations. 
And for that, I don't have to actually watch a full thing. I can just see a clip or something. So there's been some crazy football clips I've seen. There's been some crazy basketball, crazy like volleyball. I've seen, you know, obviously hockey, um, you know, even, a, again, Olympic type stuff, luge, um, bobsledding, like just <laughs> individual plays in moments versus overall team performance. Yeah, because I don't follow like the stuff. I just, I just consume the things that are cool. I don't really have a need to um, keep up with anything, right? Like, I think there's being a fan of something and then there's being like, studious of it to be able to actually um, emulate or, or take benefits from watching something, right? So even live sports too, like when people are cheering for someone to win, like I don't actually go to anything in general, any live sport thing I've seen, it's not really ab about who wins. Even the team that might be representing like where I'm from, it's like, okay, cool. If these people beat you, there's a reason. So like, let's see why that reason is. Let's see the plays, right? So it's not really an emotional attachment, it's more of like a, ooh, this is really cool. On a technical basis. This Taurus Demon's gonna die. I feel it, dude. See? He feels it. His ankle's hurt. Somebody get this man a Band-Aid. Okay, maybe uh, also tell the Giant to watch out. He might kill the Giant. There we go. I'm super surprised the Giant didn't get mad at me. Because he, we don't even know what items he has. He could have, like, screwed up that whole thing. Like, maybe he has the best stuff. Twin Humanities for 200, okay. Large Soul Proud Knight, 500. Brave Warrior, 750, that's good. And then Moss Clump, yes, I do need those. 16? Ooh. Okay, I probably only need, like, three. Just in case there's more of those guys that are toxic. And then we'll come back if we need more. Large Titanite for 50, that's really good. And Twinkling Titanite for 10,000. So if I pop some of the stuff we have now, we can finally get upgrades for the weapon, depending on how many he has. That is really good. This is the, the probably the most fortunate thing that's happened the entire game. Next to stuff I haven't found yet, or just didn't go look for. It. Where is it? Purchase item, there we go. He only has two. They're really expensive too. I think they're about 2,000 more than normal. But that's good enough for plus two. That should help. Comment. Have I watched uh, ha Haiku? I don't even know if I said that properly. Uh, I don't think I have, but it sounds super familiar though. You watch some UFC, you're more of a one fan. A one fan, what is a one fan? Never been a fan of martial sports. Martial arts. I think for me, I, I kind of got into it because I, I did boxing and I did do jujitsu um, before I got into watching that stuff. So like, again, it was more like I could relate to trying to put myself in that position and think of like, how what would it be like doing these things? Like, you know, like having that kind of discipline, uh, executing that thing and then the mental battle. Because like there's always on a one versus one basis, there's always a, men a mind game that's happening. And mind games to me are like the metadata of what's happening. So that's the most interesting part, I think, on one on one. And I typically like individual things or one on one things more than team things because team things have too many semantics in between that are hard to measure because of all the variability. But like when it comes down to a focused effort, like again, you're playing chess against somebody, you're going into like a ring with somebody, you're doing um, maybe arm wrestling even. Even though that on the surface looks very shallow, like there's, there's, there's some depth to like the mind aspect. And that is super cool. PvP on games, fighting games, like all that stuff is peak for me. Um, because it's like uninterrupted, pure focus from each side. Whereas like, let's say you have a really good soccer player and then there's one that like isn't as highly ra uh, rated or prepared. And like he, he makes a mistake that the other guy has to take, um, like he has to suffer for unfortunately on his team. And it's not really a big deal. That's just how it works, right? But let's see, you know, that person completely unchained. Just on the loose. Let's see how good they are about themselves, right? Okay, Priscilla's disappeared, and now I'm just gonna have to go. <laughs> oh, this is not as bad as I thought, but still kind of weird, though. <laughs> yes, Priscilla goes invisible every time. Every single time, but Taurus Demon's pretty weak, though. So apparently a plus two Twinkling Titanite weapon of this variety does quite a bit of damage. And I guess if you do, like, a run, even an unupgraded Twinkling Titanite weapon's pretty decent, so... 
I'm trying to trying to figure out why Sanctuary Guardian was so strong. Like, I wonder if that was because it's from the DLC. Since if you notice, things are not like completely unfair. It technically did scale the game a bit. So like, if you find a really hard enemy early, it should be weaker. But Sanctuary Guardian was had so much health. Gargoyles usually are about just as weak as this, right? Maybe a bit weaker. Golden, thank you so much for the 47 points. Welcome back, man. I, I'm super glad that you came back around the time that I came back, too, because that would suck if you were just kind of, like, not busy, and it was a really important time where, like, you could have really used the entertainment or, like, maybe just distraction. <laughs> so, like, next time I take a break, everybody's got to just go and, like, live on a boat or, like, just disappear. Maybe become an astronaut and go in outer space for a couple months. And then you, it's, it's like it never even happened, right? And then we'll all come back and just tell stories about aliens. Is she going to get bigger? I don't know if she can get bigger. I think it's going to replace it with, uh, like, another enemy computer. Am I doing use what I see? I'm not doing use what you see on this one, just because the jelly beans. But I do have a plan. I will be doing more randomizers with Foggate as well. And I probably will do this later. One that I really want to do that on is Dark Souls 2. I've never been able to do a full randomizer on Dark Souls 2. Uh, last time I tried it, it screwed up the game. So, like, Scholar of the First Sin full randomizer with all the content would be so fun. Alright, so we got this guy. He's kind of strong. But one, one king by himself is pretty easy. Oh, wait, never mind. Don't speak too soon. Oh, okay, yeah. Please pause on the big feet. <laughs> do, do you like feet, Daedra? This is a discussion, I know it's kind of like weird. I don't look at it as a weird thing in terms of like talking about it. It's obviously weird in general. It's like less common, but I always want to understand why people like things, right? So, and there's a really interesting discussion with a neuroscientist about this. So, if that's the case, if anyone can relate to that, why do you guys like feet? How, do, how does that even happen? Or why do you think it happens? Why do you think Miyazaki likes feet? Because we, we know that, right? <laughs> Actually, you know what? It could be... Okay, I'll, I'm going to change the last thing I said. Miyazaki could have put feet in this game because he knows people like feet, and he doesn't like them, but he wants to market the game in a subconscious manner, right? You just do. So yeah, that's an interesting thing. Like, so does it ever make, you ever sit there and like wonder why? Or is it just like one of those things you'd rather not want to know why? Because for me, if that was the case, I'd have to actually figure out why that's the case. It'd be really hard to not know why. There's, there's tons of things where obviously it doesn't matter, but like that would matter. <laughs> I don't know why. Miyazaki's absolutely in the feed, you think so? Maybe the whole story was that he just wanted to make a game with bare feet completely, and this was the only way to do it. And then he's like, wait, wait, they like the fantasy stuff? Okay. Oh, that was a really cool attack. I think that's the R2. I bet you one grab is death. Considering how much damage the uh, king that was replaced with the enemy did earlier in the game. And we haven't really changed too much. Not smart enough to figure out these things. Well, I feel like that's not even true though, because you're the one that is involved in it. It's like it's like your thing, right? There's got to be like a reverse engineering answer to it, like a, a map you can trace back. It's like, oh, it all started that one day where we had to walk through the creek with no shoes because everybody got soaking wet in the in the in the water at camp, and then uh, I cut my foot on a rock and I felt so alive. 
after being a germaphobe for 20 years. Actually, no, it wouldn't be 20 years. It'd be like probably like seven or eight. Like, let's say you're a kid. After being highly germaphobic and feeling the rush of letting my open wound linger in the creek water and not dying or getting any kind of infection just made me feel like I was superhuman, so I decided to take a liking to feed. Every time I see one, I admire the ability, the fortitude, the absolute resilience of the anatomy. Wondering how many things can that foot withstand? That's where you get into like... Thou hast I tried to do this to my feet and this is what and happened. Overcome much okay. chosen undead. Come you should randomize your child. voice by running speech to text software, then going to text to speech software that says each sentence in a different voice. Wait, sorry, randomize your voice, running... Oh, so, it, like, it can be one or the other. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. That'd be like... Thank you for the subscription. Jack Daniel is raiding with a party of 12. Thank you, Jack Daniel. I appreciate it. What were you playing today, Jack? Oh, chosen undead. I thought since I... Okay, I usually kill Guinevere, but we're gonna get the Lord Vessel from her. Can we see her feet? I don't even think you can see her feet. Let me see. Oh, dude, they, they literally cover. It's because he knew. Miyazaki knew. He's like, okay, the biggest feat in the game we have to keep a secret. <laughs> even if they're not actually even real in the context of the game. You know, even in the fiction, it's not real, right? That would be the perfect moment where you throw a firebomb and then kill her, and then it's like, she wasn't real. I do strength, I do more vitality. Just in case we find a better weapon, but it seems like my weapon is scaling with strength for some reason. And then I'm gonna see. I guess we can kill Andre for the crest. I can I can see if I get it. I don't know if the crest counts as a key item though. So the only other case scenario, like if we can't get it, I have to go to the basin and I have to kill the Hydra. The Hydra might even be randomized. I'm not sure. But if it isn't, that's hard, because I have to climb the ladder while it's shooting me. Um, but, yeah, Crest is a key item, so he should still have it. Maybe I just didn't see in the, the menu. Yeah, he, okay, he has it. We're good. Don't be seen. Be careful out there. Uh, you love the Souls gameplay? I've been following for a few years. Oh, I appreciate that, man. You're playing piano? Yeah, I'm gonna give you a follow. I would love to see some piano. Um, what, what kind of stuff do you play? Actually, what I did recently on the Discord, there's a channel for collaborations with music. So if you guys play music, all you got to do is just put a link in of something that you've done before. If you're just somebody I've never talked to much or like worked with before, just give me an example of whatever you do. And then uh, we can we can definitely do a collaboration of some sort. I would love to collab with as many people as possible so that like we can feature people on the music channel. Oi. Is your hair longer than usual, bro? Uh, yeah, it's been it's been going wild for a while. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. It's like the there's this uh, paradox where the messier you look, the the more effort you have to put into making it like presentable. If that makes sense. So like, well, that, that might not be the way best way to say it. Like the more di like wild, like if your hair gets super long or whatever, you have like like the people that have epically long hair. Like, down to, like, maybe all the way down their back. Especially, like, guys. Um, maybe you see someone headbanging. They're doing, like, the windmill. They got a bunch of hair. They got a huge beard. Yeah, it takes... They probably put so much more effort into their hygiene than someone that doesn't have much at all. But you'd almost kind of think it the opposite because less hair almost looks cleaner, right? So it's, like... It's actually weird. It's, it's, it's almost a paradox. Most people I know with, like, long hair, they put so much more time and emphasis into their hygiene and shit. It's... It's, it's crazy. It would make sense, because you have to, to make it nice, but it doesn't look nice, like, as often as it just being, like, not there, right? It's more, um, polarizing. Okay, so what we'll, what we'll do, we will sit here, homeward bone back, so it's a little bit quicker and we're by the door already. And then I can just buy the thing from Andre. Get hair down past your shoulders, but then you shaved your hair. You couldn't deal with it anymore. Oh wait, sitting there would damn it. That doesn't that doesn't work. Oh yeah, this bonfire is not like that. Okay, let's check let's check out Moonlight Butterfly first because that was a little mistake. But I can make it look like it was on purpose if I do this. Okay. 
Yeah, Bruns, I think if, if I had the ability to grow hair that was, like, not, um, kind of very, like, coily or, like, just set in place, if it was just, like, flowy, like, that would be... I don't know if I would like that as much. I think the, the one advantage is it, it, it not being able to move too much is kind of nice. Only hygiene you care about is your mouth, your smell, and your hair. Well, those are important, for sure. Well, I would say even more than smell, like, just making sure, like, there's actually, you know, like, you just clean. That's a little bit different. <laughs> you can smell like nothing and still be, like, pretty clean, right? Okay, we got Ornstein. I think I can beat Ornstein. Uh, if he glitch dashes across this, though, well, there's no way to go, because he's too big to slide past here. And even that's going to hit on the side of his his hilt. So I have to be, like, super last second on that. And he might actually corner me, too. I didn't even think about that. Oh, and then there's the guy at the fog gate. And I'm poisoned. Okay, everything that I just said is getting deleted from <laughs> the video. <laughs> Maybe I can just keep making him backstep? Oh, wait, can I slide past? No. Oh, shit, he can cancel. Okay, wait, backstep. Lightning? No. There we go. Just no two-hand attack. There might be a way. I don't think it's a really big deal to focus on getting behind him, though. Because he keeps backstabbing. Stagger might be able to move him out of the way, because you can actually sandwich him against the wall there. I'm kind of more curious of this than trying to kill him now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was very, very quick. Uh-oh. Watch out, watch out, watch out. he starts that attack with the two hands, it hits early. Not that one, but the thrust, so I have to be very careful about that. Oh, and then this is not a good spot. Uh-oh. Nope. Okay, 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 wait. Humanity? <gasps> Yo! Yo! The poison! So close, dude. No! <laughs> I thought that I was gonna get that shit. Okay, I'm gonna go back and do that again. I think we can get it. So we got... For the spin... Old bandages or pomegranate? <coughs> Ew. That one was super strong. Oh my god. Ugh. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Am I okay there? No. <laughs> The first initial hit, like when you crack open the strong ones, it's like maybe like on bite number one or two, it it's like it punches you, dude. It's like um, I can't, I'm trying to think of like the example. It's like when you, I, I don't even want to say that. I'm trying to figure out how to say this without being like when you're nauseous and you have to like obviously get everything out of your system and your eyes start watering that feeling. There's something, like, it's just something like that. And then because it tastes disgusting, it's like it makes me think of that, and then that might be why people can't swallow them or tolerate it. Are you allowed to drink water? I can drink water, yeah. So I do have water on my desk. And then I also, I took a break and I ate some food. But I feel like that made it worse. Because <laughs> I had, like, almond butter in my teeth. And then, uh, dirty band-aids. There's something about, like, the bad flavor by itself being even... It's, like, even worse if you have the bad flavor and a good flavor, or a certain type of good flavor. Like, the toothpaste, and I think it was dead fish. That was not nice. Heal? He hasn't done a lot of one-handed attacks. Nothing like having some dead fish after dinner. That wasn't even dinner, dude. Oh, I got past him. Look at that. There we go. 
Okay, so we were supposed to die the first time for science. It's completely fine. That's the attack that sucks. Okay, so that's easy. Does the dagger bleed? It has a 300 bleed rating, which I think is the highest I have seen before in this game. I know some weapons, they have like around 100, maybe 180 or something like that. 300 is pretty high for bleed. So I would, I would imagine it's this weapon and then maybe a Chaos Blade, I think, bleeds as well, doesn't it? Chaos Blade has a pretty high one, if I remember correctly. Ended up getting a camera. So Train, you know what's actually really funny? So I remember the last time you were here was a while ago. I, I, I do remember you. Your name's also pretty unique as well, but it's funny because there's so many people that come back that say that. Do you know how long I've had a face cam for? Just, just guess. At this point, it's been so long. I'm curious to, to know how long you think it's been because I asked this question and there's I think there's only one person that actually estimated it would be like around the right time because they actually got busy and they had, had to move and stuff. But most people, like they actually think it hadn't been that long. About nine months, dude. It's been probably, I want to say four and a half years, five, oh, it's four, four and a half years easily or more. Like 2019-ish. Because I, I remember I was living uh, pretty far away from here, and then I moved back to here, and I was still using face cam. Either, I think it was either right before moving or when I moved, and when I moved was 2019. So 2019 at the very, like, longest, I think. Or the earliest I can remember. Because I remember this camera that I'm using now, I was sent by Razer just as like a thing they wanted me to try. And I, I didn't even expect it. I remember they just gave it to me, and that was when I started using it again. And I've had that since, like, I think the video I filmed for Finale by Polyphia, the guitar cover. That was the first video I filmed with it, and then the first one of the first streams I did with it was right before that. Was it 2020? Cam was already there in 2021. I'm trying to remember because I moved 2019, and I, wa I was using camera on stream specifically. Like, in 2019. Pretty sure. Anyways, yeah, it's been it's been a while. Spawn, what's up, dude? Oh, we got the snake over here. What is What does he drop? Dung pie. That's really flattering. After we're just eating a bunch of disgusting flavors of jelly beans, he gives me some poop. Thank God we don't have that flavor. So, now, now we see if we can do this properly and get the crest from Andre the first time. About to eat some cold ravioli. Yo, so Spawn, there, there is a bean, a jelly bean, that um, tastes like cold ravioli that's gone bad, that's in this box right here. It, it's almost like moldy ravioli that's cold. Because I don't know about you, but I feel like certain foods taste different cold and warm, and ravioli is one of those ones that are kind of weird, where if it's a canned ravioli and you didn't heat it up, there's just something about it. I don't know. It just tastes gross. And then if you made it yourself, maybe it's different. But the, like, Chef Boyardee or just off-brand ravioli in a can, cold. Ugh. Would that be worse than gasoline? I like the smell of gasoline, so I don't know if the taste would be bad. I mean, in real life, obviously, it would be, but... I don't know. I have no My idea. Much like it, but... Well, you predict the next jelly bean will be dragon scale flavor. <laughs> dragon scales probably taste like uh, thousands of years of uh, of combat and, uh, and oppression or something like that. Territory wars, oxidation. Actually, it probably tastes like the smell of a bearded dragon. Give her had a reptile. Sold the hero for 15,000. Oh, I still want to buy that and see if it's better than Oi. how much you have to pay for it. Is, is Soul of a hero 10,000 or is it 20,000? All I know is you were baffled when you brought the fact you used to munch on cold rick can ravioli. I know that's why you mentioned it, but I just wanted to add in that I actually think I've munched on cold ravioli as well today, <laughs> but it was like expired or something. <laughs> oh, we only got 18,000. Oh, I thought that last one I popped was a 5,000. Uh, 
two more of these. I wonder if it's gonna be enough. Alright, that's perfect. Use it, need any. Cold and warm ravioli definitely taste different. Okay, thank God someone actually identifies with that a little bit because it wouldn't Oi. like it wouldn't break what my heart or ruin my life, but I would actually wonder for the rest of time if there is somebody out there that agrees that the temperature affects it, because maybe maybe that's proof that you guys actually are just a figment of my imagination. <laughs> it's like there's no way you, the, the and the whole system set up to make me think that's not true. And then the secret to everything is eating the cold ravioli in the can. And there's a certain way to do it. Same with ground beef. Ground beef can definitely taste different temperature-wise. Well, I mean, I think lots of things, depending on also the flavors that are involved together, like, they can react differently. Doesn't drinking gasoline get you high? I can imagine you being intoxicated from something in there. <laughs> but I can also imagine you not making it to be able to feel that situation. <laughs> like, I don't know if you'd make it there. If anybody can verify that, they might have uh, been one of the few people. Hot water tastes so weird. My theory of why hot water tastes weird though, and it's because I've never tried uh, like reverse osmosis water while it's hot. If you had non-filtered water, the chemicals in the water might be the thing that tastes different based on the heat. I don't I don't know if that's true, but I almost feel like it's the same thing as like if you had, um, I remember like way back, people would always be like, oh yeah, like you have to drink beer like at a certain temperature and if it's like a really bad tasting beer it's got to be like cold or it's just disgusting and then like some of the higher end ones if they're a little warmer they don't taste as bad i don't know i'm not like a enthusiast of drinking or anything but i remember like i have tried different beers before and i remember obviously in general it's not nice warm but um i can see how the flavor of the higher end ones which the only time i've ever bought beer i bought like a pretty expensive one like it I could see how that would be way better than the cheap one. <laughs> and here, warm. take us this ring. Like where it's almost even tolerable. Like you might even consider it if you only have that option. <laughs> uh, also, Toll Bill, Toll, Toll Booth Willie. Thank you for four months. Welcome back. Nice wall, thanks, dude. Do you know what's on the wall? Because a lot of people were asking what it was. I've gotten the answer that it's a poster or. The question of if it's a poster or a comic book. And then there's one person that got it right. On the show with weird eating habits, there's a woman who drank gasoline every day for years. Oh yeah, uh, My Strange Addiction. And there was a lady that would eat um, drywall as well, right? And then also, I've seen so many of those clips. There was like a... The chemical cleaner, I think there was chalk, there was rocks specifically, and her teeth were damaged from picking up a bunch of rocks and eating them. And she'd even, like, it was funny because she had, like, a, a little thing she'd carry around, and I think... I, I, I don't know if this is exactly how it was, but I remember it being something, like, like that she really wanted to eat certain types of rocks, but there would be, like, one that would hold her over that wasn't as good as, like, the one she really liked. So she'd have, like, tiny pebbles, and that was what she would go to when she couldn't get the really good stuff. <laughs> I was like, man, there's a whole hierarchy of, like, the quality of these rocks, dude. This is insane. Imagine she goes, like, up to, into, like, a shady, uh, you know, area and asks for some rocks, and then, like, they think it's drugs, but she actually means pebbles. She's like, dude, I want to, like, eat some of that obsidian, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Packing peanuts? Yeah, chalk and drywall. Was it the same lady for both of those, the chalk and the drywall? I've, I'll, be, I'll be honest, like, I don't, I've never been curious about the taste of chalk, but, like, there has been times I've been super curious if you bit on chalk, like, the feeling of the crunch. Like, if it would be easy on your teeth or it'd be really hard to bite. So I have thought about that quite a bit. Oh my god, dude, we have calamine. That's insane. Okay, so you know what, you know, that's actually really crazy. Calamine is very hard to find on randomizers, from my experience. I think I've only seen him once other than this, maybe twice. But there are runs where he doesn't pop up. That's pretty cool. So if we win this, uh, yeah, that's insane. Like first try at least, maybe not win in general.
wonder if the helmet can move. Room temperature water is amazing. I think that's what you're supposed to drink, right? Like, you can... It, oh, shit. <laughs> I think it's got to be closer to room temperature if you want it to be... Like, better balanced for, like, your body's temperature and everything. And I know, I know people drink cold water to slow their metabolism or something. Or, yeah, I think it's to slow it. On purpose. Something weird like that. I don't know, there was some sort of, like, life hack that was claimed to be relevant with cold water. Ingesting it. Cold water for sipping, room temperature for chugging. Okay, there we go. So don't chug, chug a bunch of cold water unless you are one of these life improvement people that wake up at 4 a.m. and go to bed at 3.59 p.m., sleep one minute, are more jacked than Dwayne Johnson, make $10 million every minute, and probably have at least $10 million worth of homes in every neighborhood. And five businesses. Okay, let's be serious here. Uh, the eye in the middle is an eye, kind of. But I actually, I've never seen Calamite's eye, like regular eyes. I haven't got a good look at them. Looks like there's three on his face. I can't even see the other ones. Or you mean like the three red dots? I thought the red thing in the middle was one whole thing. That looks like it's all one spot. Dude, I'm super impressed he hasn't tried to dash away yet. Because that's that's very dangerous. There's a possibility he can't fly. Game a bit too loud. Oh, I'm so sorry if the game's too loud. Wait. Is the volume... It might actually be, like, the same as when you freshly installed the game. I don't know if it's because of the music or all the sound effects, but here, let me, let me change that. Oh my god. Yeah, that's, that's loud. Um, let me see if I can get to a safe situation. I was really lucky. Okay, it's quite a bit quieter, but that's better. There we go. It was only the dragon that was loud. Okay, we'll turn it down for this, and I'll turn it back up after. Because I really don't want it to be on those levels, usually. I like it to be... You know, like, the voice is... Maybe 100% of the volume, and then 60% of that volume is the game. So a little bit over half at the very most. Oh, uh, okay, that was really scary. They usually don't punish that. <laughs> Got it. Okay, we, have, we have humanities. Chill, just be calm. Uh, yeah, that's death. Okay, so we can come back here and do that after if we want. It's not necessary. Until four kings, essentially. Because he's going to give us the Abyss Ring, so. This boss took you three days to kill in your first attempt. I think it took me at least two or three as well. And I was going for the tail cut, so it made it even worse. It was very challenging. That's a bean, yep. That's true. Uh, that is old bandages or pomegranate. Which sucks. The old bandage flavor is the worst, easily. Pomegranate, thank God. That's actually really good. So, okay, we can warp now, too. I forgot about that. So the whole time that I was over here, I could have warped back to Andre. <laughs> and pr someone probably said it in chat, too. I bet you. Okay, I'm trying to think. What would we do first if we were going to do late game? We'd probably go for... <sighs> I could do 
demon ruins. I could do the Manus. Oh, Manus is um, ceaseless discharge, though. That's pretty rough, so. It would be Nito. Probably Pinwheel and Nito. Four kings, obviously not yet. Pinwheel and Nito or Seath. Hmm. Okay, let's do Pinwheel and Nito. Also, it would be really cool if you could set the game up where, um, let, let's, let's say I did a run where if I see an enemy and I'm in a different area, I have to go to the area that enemy's from and do that boss next. But I think to do that, you'd have to have the game open where you could go through everywhere. That'd be a really cool run, though. Like, you have to go to the area of what you see right after you beat it. That might not make a lot of sense. <laughs> like, if I fight Nito, for example, in Iron Golem's arena, get to Anor Orlando, I immediately, like, from there, let's say normally you can't do that. I would, let's say I open up the map, I have to go to where Nito would be, kill that boss, then I can go back to wherever that other boss is. So if the first boss is Gwyn, I have to go to the kiln right away. Kill whatever's there. Let's say the game doesn't end because it's modded or whatever. Or it's completely open. Paralogic. Oh, is that actually a thing? That feeling when you've been sleeping in a tent in the winter, you're cold as hell and all you have is nearly frozen water to drink. Yeah, that'd be rough. For sure, drinking frozen water while also being cold. Veritasium has a video about a prison situation like that. Wait, with the water? Were they just drinking frozen water? Oh my god, I'm getting random souls. Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> how do they know what old bandages taste like? I don't know. I've had a lot of conversations about how they come up with stuff at the actual factory and I've seen the video of them making it but it's like whoever actually made the the flavor they must they must like just hate us right they must just want us to suffer like I can just imagine an evil scientist in a lab cackling oh dude I got black knight ultra gray sword too Ooh. okay so that we could use that soon and then if I get enough souls I can obviously go back and buy some more twinkling titanite unless we got all of it is I get two from the giant, but I only popped enough souls for two. So yeah, he might have more. And then unfortunately, this is like the one thing where even if I had sat at that bonfire, well, sorry, if I sat at the bonfire in Blighttown earlier, I wouldn't have been able to like warp back with the Homeward Bone. I'd have to run backwards up through Blighttown. So we're gonna have to run through all that stuff again. What's going on, Jack? How are you doing, dude? So in the meantime, when I've been gone as well, since a lot of you guys haven't seen the stream for a while, like, what's been going on with you guys? Anything that's interesting to share? Anything insane happen? Turning old in three days, Bruns. Dude, you're, you're so young, man. Don't even say that. You're, you're like the youngest person here, Bruns, easily. Or, okay, we all know there's going to be someone that's going to type, I'm 12, but, you know, it's not probably true, or it's, like, very few and far between. So, you're most likely, on average, one of the youngest people here. Especially according to the, the like, the geographic map and the metrics and everything, the data. Maybe 20? Yeah, so, okay, my best advice, Bruns, if I had to go back... To myself when I was 20 is to tell yourself you're not old because there's going to be a thing that happens where you keep saying you're old till you're like 25 or 26 and then you're going to try to see, say that you're young until you're like maybe 30 and then I'm going to make a prediction or I'm just going to maybe get information from other people I've observed but then after that then depending on what you do you literally will be young or old <laughs> so it's like a reality <laughs> It's like, it's just a figure, fig, figment of the imagination first, wh wh where you are, but then once you're like five to ten years older than me, then I think it actually matters what you do. It's not really just a state of mind. It's like, also other things have to be done. Good old times. It's been so long since you were naive. 
Yeah, man, honestly, like, saying you're old when you're 20, it's funny how much, like, the world seems like it's actually coming to an end at that age. It's it, Or even before that, too. Like, late teens, but... Man, like... You... you're good. The little babies? Oh, yeah. Like, you could probably go in a crib right now at 21, and... It, to, like, to me, you'd look like a baby. Fine. <laughs> actually, don't do that, though. <laughs> Oh, there's a gargoyle in here, too. Okay, I'm gonna cut his tail off and see what I get. Oh, that's such a good weapon. Okay. I'm gonna run away now. And we might actually be able to use that pretty soon. I think it has a dex requirement as well. 16 dex, so yeah, if I put four more levels in, I can use that. It's got a really good special. And then I think Andre sells repair powder, so we can just spam the special on it and use repair powder. Speaking of Calamite, yeah, dude, I got the Calamite tail cut legitimately right after dying to Calamite from a gargoyle. Everything's coming full circle. Uh, you got a job, lost the job, m moved, got a new job, and you bought a new PC last week. That's a lot of stuff within that time frame. Wow. <laughs> How are you enjoying the new PC and also the new job as well? And all, and where you're living, too. Aided 16 to 19 from 20 till now is pretty all right. You like life, Fabian? That's good. That's really good. Mm. We're, we're trying to make every single person on a regular basis that mm. comes into this stream and leaves it no a little bit more like that. Like, it can't be perfect all the time. Obviously, you might have, like, a terrible day, week, month, year, hopefully not decade or half decade, decade or whatever, but we're trying to, like, minimize the bad, right? So. But yeah, 16 to 19, I'm trying to think of, like, 16 to 19 for me was, like, much better than 19 to, like, 22. And then 20... No, 22 and a half to 23. 23 to 26 I thought was really good, but then in, like, 26 to 29 was the best. Like, like everything's just progressively better, I feel, when you think it's not going to be that good. So, Bron's like, you're in a situation right now where by the time you're, like, 25, 26... I mean, it could be even in, in the next year. You could do this way quicker, but depending on how you go about things like, you know, how well you do things that fulfill you in certain cases and all that, like, you probably will think that it'll get worse, but it actually could just get so much better that you'll laugh at what you thought was good being good in the first place, and then there won't be that whole thing where it's like, oh yeah, it was really good, and then like, we, you know, we just like, you know, those are the good years, like, there will never be a good year story to only get better until you actually just, you know, slow down and you're in your, your older years. But, yeah, you just state of mind, dude. Is the end of the tunnel death or debt free? <laughs> Hopefully both, plus all, well, actually, no. Hopefully not the first one. <laughs> but if the second one has to happen <laughs> in the opposite, then the first one's relevant. I don't know. No, I'm joking. You're losing your mind, so you'll be impressed if you make it that far. You're gonna make it that far, dude, trust me. It's 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 a matter of you believing it or not. But sometimes you can't have a reason to believe it that makes sense. You have to just be like, yeah, I just believe it, whatever. It doesn't make sense. And then eventually, there will be data, there'll be information that is given that almost kind of makes it hard to not believe it. So, it's the easiest way to put it. But basically the moral of the story is that like whatever you think your perspective is at the time like it changes like things can change perspective so quickly so perspective in general it's it can be very volatile in a very good way um hopefully not in a bad way but it can be very volatile in a good way but if it doesn't change too much you either maybe just have a really good perspective then at that point and you're you're, you're solid but if not then i mean that's where you're going wrong you need to do that to feel opposite of how you feel and enough timeline of that, then you'll look back and you'll be like, yeah, like that's it was as simple as that. How old am I, Jack? I'm 29 right now. So, so like, old in the case of... We're talking about Bruns. Bruns probably thinks I'm, like, ancient or something. That every time I, I speak, there's dust that comes out of my lungs or something like that. And 
my joints actually, uh, by the second are degrading so fast I might not be able to stand up right now. Okay, if I can kill Manus here, then I think we're just going to keep going. We're just going to stick with this area. Try to do Centipede and Beta Chaos as well. Because I don't have the humanities to get through the shortcut. For some reason, Manus is also silent. It's, it makes it way scarier when he's silent. I don't know why. <laughs> Hopefully he drops off the cliff. I don't know if he can, but like because he does backstep, there is a situation where I can try to make him do it. Right, like right there, for example, when he does that small attack or the bigger one, and you're pretty close. I'm just kind of worried about like when he's going to do the magic. If I have the speed and then like the actual stamina bar to clear some of it. Because the running stuff might be really bad with the cliff right here. Three decades on you, Deja? Me? I, I haven't even lived three decades. Wait, what? Oh yeah, internet time though, right? Techni again, literally a millennia old, right? Life's been rough lately, but you're trying to do your best to get out of the right. You're in. That's that's the best you can do, man. That, like not doing anything about it is probably gonna give you more of the same. So that is amazing. I know sometimes technically, like you you do really well, and then things happen. They are painful, but they're for a reason, so... Uh, I'm wishing you the absolute best from here on out. First thing that's going to kick that off is killing Manus. And not by him jumping off the cliff, by me just being super s scary and just out scaring him. By killing him with a little butter knife while he's like this gigantic... I don't even know what the hell he is. <laughs> some, some sort of creature. <laughs> Originally a human. At some point in your life, you were legitimately starving. Almost legitimately starving. Keep pushing through, guys. Uh, keep getting out of bed in the morning. These things do come to an end, even if it's hard to believe. Yeah, but the, you know what the crazy thing is, too, with you saying that? To add on to that, I, or even better, I should probably ask you the question because you are you would know better in your case. Do you think that like if you could go back and take that away, like where you didn't go through that suffering, um, would it be beneficial to take it away or would it be better to have just experienced it? Like, you're, in your honest opinion. Shit's getting deep. <laughs> it's funny when people say deep. I don't think of these things as that deep. It's kind of just basic information, but... I guess there's certain things people just don't talk about, right? You probably would not. You feel like it did things to you as a person, and for that you're grateful. So that's cool. That's really cool. Obviously, I can't really speak from your story because I can't relate to it um, personally the exact same way. So I don't know what I would do, but there is definitely situations I can relate to that are different where, you know, it is a bad scenario uh, or at least even other people would agree like, oh, yeah, that sucks. But it's like changing that would literally make it so that now is not now. It would it literally you would just be different. It would be a completely different situation. And that to me is it has like way less value right like most of the value is in the fact that things happen in that order and then kind of result to what it does based on the responsiveness to it and also your own 
perspective at the time and other people's perspectives, all that stuff. Or whatever you choose to um, be a part of. Oh my god. You know now that if all goes to shit, you can thrive again? So, like, it's almost like you feel like you've almost gained, like, a ability, right? Like, there's some level of control in the aspect of succeeding that situation. Where if it happened again, you just, you're, you know, you're better at it. Okay, he's going to do magic in, like, probably a second or two. Right after the next little bit of damage. Yep, there we go. So the shotgun is one that is going to be really hard to dodge, I think. Um, and then the vortex running away when the cliff's to my back. That was wild, but okay. <laughs> I can't believe... Dude, I frame perfect that out of the heal. Even though I guess it wasn't it wasn't absolutely like a like a perfect dodge, but that that was insane for the first bit of it. Fast roll is pretty good at getting away from that. I, I keep thinking from the context of the, the fat roll run that we were doing too with the knight that was just, like he did the heavy roll the whole game. And Manus on that is one of the hardest ones. Specifically that attack, that shotgun spray attack is, is just like, I'm pretty sure you have to, like not only your positioning has to be almost perfect, but then the, the time frame you have within the second is like, I wanna say point three seconds at the most or less like almost almost under 0.3 seconds because it's 0.4 on on a regular roll right Favorite non-human ape monkey species? Uh, favorite ape or monkey? I like silverbacks. Um, and I like mandrills quite a bit too. I think they're really funny. I don't know if you'd count them as both under- <gasps> No, dude. No. I thought I was going the right way there. I actually was looking. I don't know if I actually, I, I might've still done that even if I was just staring at the screen because I genuinely thought we were going the right direction. No. <laughs> That really sucks. And we can't bleed Manus either. I can't even do the skip on this. So uh, that's liver and onions and stink bug at the same time. Oh, man. Yeah. That's tragic. That is bad, especially after figuring out we were going to be able to do it. Oh, those are both the good flavors. Oh, my God. That's so good. Dude, cappuccino tastes so good. Oh, man. That's actually kind of tough to decide because I haven't had the cappuccino one yet. It's only been the liver and onions. It was the first good flavor. Because I really like the toasted marshmallow as well. I think they're both tied. Mandrills. <laughs> Orangutans for you. You watch that thing they do in Love Nature. Uh, Wait, what? The thing they do in love. You mean, um... Like, they're grooming and stuff like that? Oh, Love Nature is a show. Okay, my bad. <sighs> I think we're just gonna do it again, dude. I'm just gonna do it again. I'm just gonna try to get more damage in. Be a bit more aggressive. Let's see if I can get away with it. Um, I do have the Demon Spear as well. I can actually use that. I don't know if it would be better. And that's it. Like, just Demon Spear and the main weapon we have are the only two really good ones we can use. Yeah, like, orangutans are cool. Chimpanzees, are, they're interesting as well. It's just, like, 
I think the um, the silverback is interesting because of just how unbelievably strong they are, and like just how different it is compared to a lot of other animals. In it's like just the way it's constituted, and then the mandrills are just they just look so like weird for it, them being uh, related to like monkeys and stuff. Gorillas are scary; they could just rip you apart. The yeah, that's exactly why I think they're interesting because like. They're so much more powerful than we are that if they had the the faculties to be able to like you know, it's like Planet of the Ape shit. If they could if they could be on our level in terms of like consciousness, civilization, whatever the hell you want to say, whatever factors they're they're lacking, oh, it would be like a game over, dude. There's so many things that'd be game over if you just flip the script a tiny bit. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world And I, I believe they are pretty be smart too. I just Obviously, we have some, hey, Squill, welcome back. some things they don't. Good to have so. you back, dude, Squill. Happy. <laughs> Tools, thank you so much for the 17 months. Welcome back, man. How are you doing? I probably have a better chance of literally just getting destroyed by an attack and not looking than the whole walking off the cliff thing. Or, sorry, the cliff is a better chance of, of failing than just getting beaten down. Unless he combos me. You know what that cappuccino one tastes? Dude, it tastes like a Frosty. Like the original Frosty flavor from Wendy's. With a bit of coffee in it. That's interesting. Give the large monkey brain power and who knows what would happen? Exactly, right? King Kong, dude. And that's why when you think of Godzilla versus King Kong, like, yeah, sure. Godzilla literally is like almost like alien compared to a gorilla, but... At the same time, what's the intelligence level? Because that, that's going to play a part in how they interact. Like, some animals are so smart, they can they can find food sources and manipulate the environment even better than we can. Or, like, that we... Even better than we need to, obviously, nowadays. Maybe it would be different if we were, like, cavemen, but... Like, there's they showed signs of uh, extreme levels of problem-solving. Like, even birds, dude. They don't have hands. Think of, like, um, crows. Put a crow in a like a very intricate setup with like a reward, like it can figure things out. Human versus chimp chimpanzee would be pretty close too. There's there's a lot of things that like you just need a little bit to bridge the gap for sure. And then there's some things where the abilities are even like far beyond, not even just strength, but I'm pretty sure like elephants' intelligence. Um could rival in some aspects or maybe even I don't I don't know if it would be able to surpass in the important ways. Um, I know horses they could, they're they're pretty smart in certain cases like with remembering people faces. But it depends on their evolution as well and everything maybe if things evolve differently for other reasons that be exactly what we're talking about. Monkey Hyperborea. I don't even want to know what that is. That sounds like a a boss fight from a game that's unreleased. That's really hard. Octopode? Octopode sounds like another... Octopode sounds like a main character in a game that is also hard, but is like also funny at the same time. Have you seen what a dolphin or whale's brain looks like? Yes. Um, well, sorry. Dolphin... I can't remember. I, the, the whale, yes. I'm not sure. I can't guarantee dolphin, though. Definitely, like, read and watched a lot of marine biology stuff. A chimp would shred a human. Those cunning bastards go for the crotch in the face. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then there's, like, again, there's no filter because, like, are they going to feel bad? No. No. <laughs> I am monkey. I destroy. It's like, dude, think of the fucking Powerpuff Girls. Why do you think the villain was a monkey? He doesn't have the compassion. Or maybe he does, but only for, like, green monkeys, you know? So. And also, think of, uh, think of Transformers, dude. Optimus Prime, when he's an animal, like, he picks clearly the, the best choice. It's like, oh yeah, well obviously like a dinosaur could beat a monkey, why didn't it work in Transformers? 
that's the real facts there, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting you with hard information historically. Same thing as, dude, Godzilla vs. King Kong right there could have been decided just in, in 1990s with Beast Wars, dude. That new movie, they didn't even have to make it with the Transformers. It's fine. If human goes full 8 mode, human is a pretty strong opponent too. So yeah, there is like a super, nat like not supernatural, superhuman we'll say, or like superior ability um, of the nervous system that we don't activate a lot, for sure. Um, and there's also a lot of stuff with, like, our DNA that's very convoluted, too. So, there, yeah, who knows, man. But when you see people lift cars and stuff like that that aren't that strong normally, it's definitely interesting. Because, like, obviously the material that is using it mechanically, like, the body material can handle it. Um, when it's charged with the right amount of energy or purpose or whatever. Same thing with, like, um, there's, um, there's these monks that will make themselves exteriorly so strong you can break objects over them and they, they won't even feel anything. Also, they won't even have marks on them the same way a regular person would, and their skin and their bones are different. So they've been fortified, like, over... Not even just with the training specifically from the physical stuff, but the mental stuff, too. Um, and I, I watched a thing where the guy literally, he just... The dude was, like, a regular host that I've seen interview so many people, and he would just break stuff over the guy. And it's like, the guy's skin and his body is just made differently. Not by mistake, just, like, he intentionally made it that way and you can see like it's just like he looks different he doesn't look like a regular person so yeah you can you can definitely go beyond even um in terms of when you break bones too and they become stronger it's like the body's dynamic like cells themselves are alive so they they have uh interesting things they can do with certain stimulation oh my god Okay, so we have to find the, uh, <laughs> with, with all that being said, we have to find the secret, so now I can transform my intelligence level to being able to kill Manus right now. And not die without being able to see what happens. <sighs> and not get magic. Is that the bad one? That's the bad one! Whoa! Okay, okay, okay. Chill, chill. Chill, chill. Just calm down. Monks train themselves to ignore extreme temperatures too. Of course, yeah. Like Wim Hof already has a program that he did with. Uh, there's a YouTube channel of people that try stuff. He trained them to um, defy the laws of hypothermia in the medical literature within, like, I think days. So I mean, everyone can like basically make the medical world have to rewrite a lot of stuff just instantly if they just try certain things. Like, so there's things that are just objectively wrong, um, but they apply depending on how your mind aligns with it and how the training and preparation comes into play. So breathing method, cold exposure, like even extreme, I, I don't know about extreme heat as much as cold, but you know, there's definitely some interesting things with resilience. And then think of also just in terms of willpower, like let's say you don't really practice anything, you don't have like an actual technique that you practice, but you are in a situation that's life or death. The people that have the, you know, the will to live specifically will live a lot longer typically, so that also is an effect of the um, the thought on the cells too, for sure. And I bet you if you could actually do a control study, which would be kind of hard to do in that situation obviously, but if you could somehow make a sample of it, you would find that like some people are predisposed to have a higher chance of dying sooner or have worse um, blood work or, or, you know, like biomarkers and still technically live longer just because of the way they thought about the situation. But then again, I mean, those might actually be even more positive because they've, they might have a really good outlook outside of that. Regardless, though, a lot of stuff that needs to still be discovered, right? So now we just got to make sure we go around him and put our back to the wall here. It's not wrong in per se. No, so that's what I mean. I guess, like, I can't say it's wrong, but it's not complete in the sense that it, it, it doesn't really account for those situations, and those situations are very real and very repeatable. It's not a fluke, right? It's actually controlled, just as much as an experiment. Actually, possibly more, because um, the requirements for the experiment might be a lot looser to signify that it's legitimate in the case that it already was missing that data in the first place, right? So it wasn't really extensive enough.
affects the rate you heal. Oh, 100 percent. Yep. That is uh It's it's almost um I, I don't know if you ever like understood or like seen the concept of like a plant responding to different types of like um thoughts or like negative versus positive vibes, if that makes sense, from people. Even other stuff, too. I mean, it's kind of like that with, with you. If you have um, more of a better outlook on certain things, better approach in doing that, then um, you you probably would heal, heal faster because you're not uh, inflaming the body as much. The stress actually isn't going to out race or win the race against the healing. Right, because it's just like a kind of a balancing act. Like you're always technically degrading and healing at the same time. So you just have to out heal the degradation. And you're doing that by uh, your mental not having the extra stress to create more inflammation, more things. So there's there's some other intricacies at play, but like that's a huge factor too. And that's why like if you think of um, even, there's, there's some weird things uh, like sound therapy that's been proven to affect the response of cells and all that too. Um, but think of it this way, let's say someone didn't believe that worked, it probably wouldn't do much because they're so in the mindset of it not actually fixing the situation that the situation itself might exacerbate or stay even, you know, more inflammatory because that's what's causing the situation to be so bad in the first place. And that's, mm, it's possible that's majority of what caused it. Or like a huge factor, right? So why grills are so strong they don't stress they just chill no they're just built different dude <laughs> like their ev their evolution and like their inception is just a lot a lot more geared towards that kind of uh build for their environment and everything and for us think about it this way like we've gotten bigger brains over time because we become you know more useful in different ways we've we've, we've done certain things that require those things or that have changed them, and then uh, your your hands and your feet and stuff like that. Like I'd even argue too, in certain cases, like you might be able to find humans, like earlier humans that were much like way way stronger than us. Like I would even argue that like in a lot of cases, like people that might even still be alive in your family when they were your age were stronger than you if they did the right things. So um, there's there's interesting things that seem to be like not as viable that some people would be like, oh, that'd be a really cool advantage if it was like that. But then there's like other things like intelligence and the brain changing and other adaptations. So who knows what's going to happen if things play out for another large amount of time, too, right? Doing a no level run. I have actually leveled quite a bit on this one. I think, let me see. Level 38. This guy's just kind of difficult. <laughs> like, the way that this has been randomized, I'm not sure if it scaled the enemies properly because of the difficulty. Like, I assumed that basically any enemy that you fight, no matter what it is, would have similar health to whatever whatever was replacing it, right? Like, they would, they would share a similar health pool. Manus right now literally has the health of Manus. That's what it looks like. But then again, Ceaseless Discharge is pretty strong, so it, it could be that because I'm not used to fighting him, I just kind of dunk him off the side of the cliff. It could be that. But then, like, Sanctuary Guardian was super strong in place of Gargoyle, so I'm, I'm still wondering if it scales differently because of the difficulty setting. Grandpappy couldn't rip the vape as hard as he could, though. You can tell me that. <laughs> Dude, if he ripped the vape as hard as you could, he probably would have died, like, even sooner, man. You might have not even been born. Like, just <laughs> relax. <laughs> Who knows? It's a, it's a, it's a delicate balance. <laughs> Sonic contest exists. Training at high temperature resistance is definitely a thing. That's really cool. I gotta look into that. I guess it makes sense in terms of like if you went to a climate and you were genetically adapted for it obviously there's a predisposition to being able to handle like a little bit of a higher range of temperature or something like that or even being colder maybe you're from like a warmer climate climate culturally and then the warm the colder stuff bothers you more but like over time that same person could still technically adjust enough like if they did the right things maybe not like 
as much as someone that has the the anatomy that's made for the different climates but like there can still be an adjustment for sure mentally we're about to win dude here we go you micro needle and smear vape juice into your scalp <laughs> dude that's amazing Yo! That's really fucking shitty, dude. Oh my. No, it's actually not shitty. It's not shitty. He, yo. Yo, dude. One chance. One opportunity, dude. Eight mile. Here we go. Oh, God. Mom's spaghetti knees. Weak arms are heavy. He's nervous on the surface already. I'm eating confetti. I'm like a clown, but I'm actually eating jelly beans tasting like alphagetti. Can he calm down so I can get his health down already? Uh. Uh. Nice. Okay, here we go. Whew. You were here for this cliff. <laughs> oh man, that was scary. I actually thought for sure, like you can't say it's it's over until it's over because it makes the game harder. The game changes when you say that. Makes it way worse. Positive reinforcement thinking is always beneficial no matter what you do, struggling with physical health or playing games. It's true, like, that's what we were talking about when someone was saying, like, uh, they asked me, are you nihilistic or opt or uh, optimistic? And I was like, technically, like, optimism is the only thing that wins because um, the, the probability has a higher occurrence of good things, right? So even if you're wrong, because you're right, sometimes you take opportunities that don't present themselves in nihilism. So you actually generate more traction, even if it's 10% of the time, 1% of the time, 2%. It doesn't matter how, how little you're right about it. Um, so like there's some people that think like I actually have some friends like sometimes they'll think I'm super stupid like or I'm very naive to certain things but I know like what they're thinking but I know the way they're thinking won't actually make the thing go better so I present it in a way where they think I'm like a child about it but I I know exactly what they know I just don't think the way they think because the way they think doesn't get as good of results right so it can come across almost like when you're so optimistic you almost seem kind of less intelligent in certain cases um, because like again certain things might not bother you as much because you don't really see those things as a unnecessary measure of action or course of action, whatever it is. So it, it can go pretty deep with that, right? And that can explain why maybe nihilism is more popular in certain cases um, to that individual or aspects of that, right? Um, Nice to see you playing the best game ever created by Miyazaki, Guitar Hero 3. <laughs> Dude, I, you know, it's actually really funny. Uh, I, I actually, there's a Guitar Hero guitar that I have. I'm, I'm going to um, actually be selling it soon because I don't, I don't use that one anymore. I haven't played Guitar Hero for a long time, but uh, it just reminded me, like, it, like we were, we were streaming Guitar Hero for a bit. We were playing Clone Hero, but I was, I was using the plastic guitar. I actually can say wholeheartedly i have no interest in that right now I, I that was like a super juicy thing to do i was i was really enjoying it i don't know why but i was and now i don't i don't even have any desire which is weird because i've always enjoyed guitar hero how many times you think you said think just there 20. i'm gonna go with a high number and then if it's lower then i, I always win right Okay, so we have no idea what this next thing is. I have to get this bonfire very quickly. He might block me though, like from actually even activating it. And I'm about to die. <gasps> yep. Ugh. Okay, let's see. We're gonna we're gonna do a quit out here. I know that quit outs are kind of cheeky, but like I'm only doing them when it's just a really important situation to not have like an unnecessary run back. I still can't hit that. Damn it. Still can't get the bonfire. We played any Souls game with that guitar before. The Guitar Hero guitar, I have not, no. I've used a arcade stick with my hands and my feet, and I've used a keyboard here and there randomly, just like in those challenges where you guys activate what I'm using. That's another spin. We got Booger. In a while. I think there's one left, one Booger. We're getting down to so little beans that, like, I can actually see the bottom of the box.
Imagine if the randomizer randomized the centipede demon on the wall and you just see Gwen hugging the wall. <laughs> oh, that'd be so weird. That'd be like if in Bloodborne, like you do the randomizer and the amygdala that brings you to the DLC is a, like a human. And it's just a guy that like picks you up and then like you just appear in the place. Wait. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Nah, their bodies won't turn muscles into energy like humans do, which is why they have so much more. Their bodies won't turn muscles into energy. Oh, you're talking about like they don't, um, their body doesn't eat the tissue specifically as a resource as much. Like there's not as much catabolism or um, like, I guess uh, like a reserve that's prioritized with the, the lean mass. That's interesting, I've never actually heard of that before. I know that, like, technically the laws of how everything works for us does not apply. Well, actually, technically, even the way we think things work for us don't even apply the same way we think that they do either. With the notion that, like, you know, like a buffalo or a bison, well, would it be buffalo? Buffaloes eat grass, yeah, and they're, like, super huge. So they can um, somehow extract enough resources to be able to cultivate or, and maintain that crazy, crazy strong constitution with just grass, right? So a person could eat, like, just ve vegetables and fruit and still be fucking huge, in my opinion. But it would just be hard because the amount of energy that is in fruits and vegetables, uh, like, the value, obviously, like, calorically is less. It's a more um, filling food, too, so it's hard to eat as much. But there's people that approve that, right? And I don't think they're special. Like, you can see tons of cases. Even me, like, I was I was on a completely vegan diet. The protein content I was eating was much less, and it was working. I could still gain muscle, but... We, we also know that in other words, there's other things that work too. And if you like animal products and other things, I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with using that too, but I, there is other ways that are exactly the same, if not. They have that other pros and cons, for sure. You just have to find a balance. But there's people that don't believe that actually makes sense, right? Even in the case, like, let's say you had less than 0.5 grams of protein macros in that fruits and vegetables per pound of body weight, you would still be able to actually outclass people that have 0.8 to 1 gram in some cases just on similar energy quantities, in my opinion. And I'm going to say opinion so no one gets triggered by that. Uh, stinky socks, tutti frutti. Oh boy. Ew! Oh god, stinky so I haven't- I don't think I've gotten stinky socks yet. I think we had tutti frutti every time. <coughs> oh, that's bad. Dude, that's- that's like potent, man. That's a different kind of potent. That's like actually being in- in like a room with stinky socks. Dude. <coughs> oh my god, dude, that ta that tastes so bad. <laughs> that, that tastes worse than I remember it used to be. I I need to find the 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 run we did with this before and go back and actually find the moment where I first had the stinky socks and see if it was as bad. Ew. Man, I don't even want to describe what I'm actually imagining that tastes like because it's not worth it because you guys are not going to have a good time. <laughs> Gorillas are huge and just eat fruits and plants. Yeah, like they're not they're not eating as much meat as some humans might, right? Um I don't I don't know their full diet. Actually, I don't really study gorillas enough to like know everything about them, but I just think it's interesting with like how they're made. They're crazy. Very, very uh very scary, but like again, they can be very chill too, and they can be very intelligent and, and like also interesting. One chicken breast per pound. That would be bad. Prefer to eat 100% pure protein at about 100 grams per pound you weigh. And naturally, it's in concrete form. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I just um, I just mix concrete and then I, I drink it. And it takes a long time to digest. It's way longer than casein protein. Much better for sleeping. So you just stimulated the whole night. There's, dude, there's a Manus that just dropped down, too. So we're probably not going to get this bonfire. I'm going to run in here and just check and see what's there. I really wanted to get that one. Because there's a chest over on the left side, too. So we're going to see if we can kill this dude. And then go backwards and get the chest. The reaction to some of these is so good. I'm, I'm literally just trying to tolerate it, but it's gross, though. Oh, this is like the DLC. Oh, we got the fireballs, dude. Got the fire. <gasps> this is it. There's another one. Oh, yo! 
Yo, I was about to do it. No. That's so bad, dude. There's a toxic blow dart guy, a mushroom, and three of the sorcerers, dude. That's fucked. <laughs> That's worse than the DLC. Oh, no, man. And I can't save. I can't hit the bonfire. All right, we got juicy pear or booger and then rotten egg. So there, there is no juicy pear left. So I'm going to have to... I'll spin again for another one, but we will have the rotten egg as well. Because, again, anytime it lands between two, I'm doing two of them. Uh, two rotten eggs. Okay. Let's hope they're both good. <laughs> oh, this might be really bad. Rotten egg was very, uh, very, like, again, it's like sulfury or something. <coughs> oh, God. I'm, a, I'm afraid to chew it, dude. <laughs> so bad. Oh god, I really didn't like eggs when I was a kid. I love them right now. Like, I eat them every day almost. And I ate some earlier, so this is really not hitting me nicely. Reminding me of some bad times. Oh god. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. Welcome back, goat. Nice Oh my god, dude. Hope it sticks around. Crying face. I'm not going to throw up. No, no, that was just really hard to swallow. Like, that was hard to get down. It was two of them. What was it this time? That was buttered popcorn or rotten egg, and they were both rotten egg. And because I spent, spun in between two of them, and we were out of the booger flavor, I had to do two rotten egg. You start sweating from the eyes, you know it's bad. Every single time there's a potent one, like, you can tell, because uh, the eyes will just automatically water. It's, like, that strong. Um... Like, if I could stop that from happening, that'd be nice, but I don't know. I'm, I, I could try a different method. I just don't want to plug my nose because that's cheating. You know, I, I, like part of this is I have to actually taste it. I have to do it without trying to bypass the taste the whole time. But like, ooh, I just don't like when it's like on my teeth and it still tastes like that. Two rotten eggs, yeah. <laughs> I, I Like 100% right now, I guarantee you, you'll never see another Bean Boozled that's as, as hardcore as this one, just because of the amount of deaths and frequency and the fact that I'm guaranteed eating all the beans no matter what. So like, people can play this with like four friends. I'm freaking eating a family's worth of jelly beans here. This is not for the faint of heart. And I'm probably not going to do this again for a long time because I thought it wouldn't be as bad and it actually is a little worse than what I said. I still think the people are babies that spit them out because you gotta you gotta just like you know grow that 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 strength from from eating it you know it's gonna transform you a little bit. David Goggin shit. So <laughs> otherwise, um, yeah, just don't do it. I don't recommend it. But if you do, just be careful. And I'll give you I'll give you a firm handshake and a pat on the back after. Because no one's really going to say that's cool, right? <laughs> no one's going to think it's cool to do that. They're probably going to be like, why'd you do that? Okay, this is just not good. Crossfire everywhere. So we can, we can go over here, I think. But that's not going to open, though. Oh, and I'm toxic again. Dude, are you serious? Oh, I have the, the Blooming Purple Moss. And it's Sif. Okay, that's not that bad. Can do that. But he's kind of stuck on stuff though, so that could get sketchy. Oh, also George, thank you so much for the uh, the the raid. Also, there's someone that resubbed. Whoever that was, I literally just saw like the end of the alert and it skipped off the screen. Can you please tell me who resubbed? And George, thank you so much for the, the host, man. How was uh, your stream? What were you playing? Take 50 milligrams of grow -a set and try to swallow them again. I don't know what that is. Oh, I see. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Wait, is that a Ligma joke? Like grow a pear or something like that? <laughs> that was actually a pretty good one if that was a joke. <laughs> I've never heard that one before.
Oh, name date time was the resub. Thank you so much for the resub name date. I'm going to scroll back up after this is over as long as it's still on the screen. But thank you for the resub. Welcome back. He got it delayed. Yeah, the like I actually thought that was a real thing that looked like a, a pharmaceutical or something like that. That was one of the best jokes that you could hide. Like the Ligma and the Sigma one, I only fell for that the very first time because I hadn't heard what it was. I'd never seen anyone actually like get trolled by that. But <laughs> Groa said I'm going to use that actually. <laughs> I'm going to straight face somebody that I know and I'm going to like, if they don't say anything, like if they don't get it, I'm never going to tell them. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing it. This is Sif's best chance to kill gamers. I feel like it's Sif's best chance to kill himself because he's going to hit the sword off the wall and then end up like breaking a tooth or something. This is a dangerous arena. I guess like he could cut the trees if it was more realistic. Like someone's got to do this in Unreal Engine 5 where there's debris from the trees flying into your character's eyes and then the screen gets all like red and dark and stuff like that because you can't see anymore. And I want the character to be able to trip on things too. Like they should be like slipping and falling on the, the stuff on the ground once in a while randomly. And your your dodge timing, like if the frames of your dodge timing are more perfect than sloppy, like if they're right in the dead center, then you have a less chance of tripping. Cyberpunk 2077 and you're doing Dark Souls 2 level one, oof. How's that going with the Dark Souls 2? Cyberpunk also, they, they fixed it, right? It's much better now. Super Smash Bros. Brawl. <laughs> there you go. Actually, I've never played Brawl before. I, all I know about it is it's slower. And, oh, oh no, sorry, you can trip. You can definitely trip on the stage. You're right. Um, I've seen the clips of that. Although, I think, isn't there a way to stop it from happening? And then that's why the meta is kind of annoying, like that and the speed make it almost boring because the movement's not as good. Also, by the way, would you guys watch Smash Ultimate? Because that is a game that uh, I, so I had this like plan. I told Faraz I was going to beat him and he said, no, you're not. And then uh, we made a little bet. So I already beat him four times, and then he got really, really, like, riled up. He's like, but you didn't actually beat me. He's like, I wasn't trying this, that, whatever. And I, I, like, he's not one of those people that try to, like, you know, like, save his dignity or whatever. He'll be uh, completely honest about it and say, like, yeah, you beat me fair and square. I know he wasn't trying fully, but I did beat him when he was, like, 75% trying, and it got him going because I don't practice the game, and he's really good. He could go into a tournament right now in his local area and probably get pretty close to the, the top. Like, he knows fundamentals of the game. He... He studied Zero quite a bit. He knows all, like, the stuff that he taught on his YouTube. And uh, he's played online quite a bit. So I want to I wanna stream me trying to beat him again. And it might be me losing a lot, but you'll, you'll eventually see a win. And then we're going to take that. We're going to make that a video, and then it'll look like I'm amazing. You'd watch that? Okay, I'm going to tell him. Because he's in... Uh, I think he's in Spain right now. He's on a trip. And then after that, we will reconvene or wait is he in spain no wait yes yes he is studied the blade this is the ghost blade yeah so we started off with this it's plus two at the moment need to pull a ludwig and get a pro to play for you is that how he won the tournament that like, was in that one video that was titled that he won a tournament? Because I didn't click it, but I saw that recommended because I, I do watch um, like Smash tournaments sometimes, like just the highlights and Melee as well. So it was recommended and I thought that he legitimately was like a pro player just by accident or something. He trolls a bit and gets Smash pros to play for him sometimes. Oh, that's crazy. That'd be a really funny thing to do. Like hire somebody off of Fiverr that's uh has a special skill and then get them to pretend that it's you against somebody else. <laughs> it's like, but we can just we can take that idea and we can migrate it outside games. It could be like play a play a 
uh, what's it called, like an orchestra, like a concert show on piano, and pretend that you're like a like a amazing piano player, but it's not even you, and they use your information instead. Get plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is Sif. And then I'm gonna hit this bonfire, run back, see what the chest is. Oh my God. Whoa. Yeah, this this randomizer for the enemies has been terrible. Like, I can't actually think of a worse selection of enemies I've seen. <laughs> there, there's almost nothing that's good. <laughs> Other than um, Ornstein being completely paralyzed, like just by not, you know, not spawning his uh, animations in because the cutscene. And then Priscilla and Taurus on ONS wasn't as bad. That was That was okay. But like most of the stuff's been terrible. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he, dude, <laughs> where was he the whole time? <laughs> Why did he show up at the last second? Oh my god, that was hilarious. I, I was wondering where Gwyn was, and I was actually even, like, I was going to mention, like, a moment ago. I was like, oh, yeah, like, we haven't seen th these people, we haven't seen that people, haven't seen, or this boss, that boss, whatever. Dude, he was right there. He was following me. So he must be up here, then, on the way to, uh, I guess it would be, like, the elevator, right? To go back to Quayleg's domain. <sighs> Raven, thank you for the prime sub. Welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> Outsource your own IT job. Pay him 20% of your salary, that would be... That'd be... That wouldn't be nice. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you pay him? Well, it depends, actually. If your salary was, like, ridiculous, then... Maybe. I mean, there is somebody, uh... That is part of our community, as well as, like, does stream, if you guys know Sinlor Kane. He, he's done some programming for me, and he... Literally... Like, where he lives, his skill set is so above and beyond... What they pay him. And he doesn't live in, um... In specifically... India, I think he's in. Let's he was in like so Eurasia somewhere, still over there somewhere. But yeah, he so specifically, like he could probably make make like six figures over here with his skill set for programming. He also worked on um, a lot of mods for this game too. So like, shout out to that. And we've used his uh, his randomizer software, like with the, it's like that list that reshuffles modifiers that you guys activate. So he's made a couple versions of that, and he's also done so much work on different mods for Dark Souls. Probably could program games, too. Typical dragon at killer energy. Also, Spawn, thank you for the six months. I'm gonna try and see what's over here, and then we're gonna go back. Because Gwyn was scaring the hell out of me. Oh, we got Ornstein again. Oh. <laughs> okay. And I got Soul Spear. I'm not gonna use that because I feel like that's gonna be cheating, but that's crazy though. Ornstein just died. <laughs> that was not expected at all. You wouldn't get someone else to do your job for you if it wasn't IT. Is that because you are good at it? I don't actually do, like, I don't do anything IT specifically. I know how to code a little bit. I did code in high school, uh, C Sharp, and I've tried a little bit of Python. Um, I, like, I made a calculator part of a game for school, and then um, I know I understand CSS a little bit, but by no means am I a programmer at all. Like, that's just not even enough, not even close. So I would always just look for somebody to help out with that. And like I said, there's so many people out there, and what you mentioned as like a joke or whatever, it's actually a serious thing. Like people are so underpaid for how good they are. It's one of those things where you almost have to use that skill for a business. That's the only way. It's like you can't be employed by somebody with that skill in certain places and succeed. But there is a chance that if you use that in a place that doesn't have a lot of opportunity, the business you have, if it has international application um, and you can do it remotely, oh, like that could actually be grand, pretty effective. So the world might be mended. So Gwyn got me again. Might be mended. I didn't even have time to laugh at that one. That wasn't even that funny. <sighs> okay, we got stinky socks again. Oh my god. <laughs> it looks so nice too. Like this this jelly bean looks tasty. It's like rainbow speckles or bunches of different colors and white. It's gonna be fun. Ooh. 
Oh wait, that's not even the right one, dude. That's dirty dishwater. Oh, I gotta eat another one. Oh shit, okay. That's not good. Why does it look exactly the same as the other one? Is this tutti frutti? What? I can't tell now which one's which. This one? Okay, that tastes really good. That's not fruity though. Okay, I think I might be out of that flavor. So I'm gonna spin again. Both of those were not the right one. Stink bug. <coughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, okay. That was bad. That was very bad. That was like top top three of the stream for sure. <laughs> Oh wait, can Gwyn just catch up to me now? Because he's so fast. Oh, there's two! Dude, there's two Gwyns! Did you guys know that? I didn't see that before. He's killing the dogs! Gwyn, Gwyn definitely is going to be uh, captured by PETA. Oh my god. <laughs> and I thought it was a good idea to go backwards. That's hilarious. We're definitely not going back there ever again. <laughs> I'm only going back there in a suit of armor that's so heavy that if the character even tries to move, he goes backwards in time. Like, that's definitely not not, not equipped for our defense right now. Are these your sugar jelly beans? No, they have sugar, so... And they're American, too, so they have, like, GMOs and weird things in them, right? <laughs> I feel like you guys that are in the U.S., like, you have some candies and stuff that have some colorings and flavors that we can't have approved. Um... But let me see what the calories are. So there's 20 grams of sugar, but then 20 grams of added sugar, which makes it look way healthier, but it's actually 40 grams of sugar. But of those 40 grams of sugar, only 27 are counted as carbohydrates. So, but that's, all, but that's also only 30 grams. So how much is this box? Let's see. That's definitely like only a portion. Uh, 99 grams, so like we'll multiply that by three and then add a little bit extra. Um, 340 something calories, and dude, that's like a hundred and something grams of sugar, dude. I'm having so many carbs today. Holy shit. Maybe I will do some exercise. <laughs> I got a lot of cardio yesterday, though. I think we prepared for it. That five hours of the drumming, I never felt like that. I don't even think I've done training sessions like circuits and stuff like that that felt like that after that like just hit me so suddenly so oh yeah and I died too so another one as well sorry the, the taste of the other one was still in my mouth we got berry blue or toothpaste which is not there anymore and then it's also touching dead fit that one was this oh wait that wasn't even no that was peach Okay, that was Peach. I gotta do another one. Uh, we might be out of the strawberry banana smoothie as well. I'm gonna try this one and see if it's the right one. It's just orange. It's, it's supposed to have specks on it, but it doesn't. That's strawberry banana smoothie. Okay. There we go. Five billion calories. You have the warp? Yeah, I can warp. I uh, killed Ornstein and Smoke. But with the warping, though, I'd have to warp to the Daughters of Chaos, then run all the way back down through that other area again, where the sorcerers are basically like peak chaos and destruction, whereas if I run backwards, they're not as bad. It's just the Gwyn chasing me. So either way is going to be kind of sketchy. Yeah, this is Free Souls. I'm not going to abuse that, though. Since we, we actually had the same thing happen, I think, on another randomizer. And it's mainly because, like, when they randomize the enemies that can't withstand heat, they'll just die immediately, kind of like Ornstein.
eat 50 grams of plutonium for a billion calories and you'll never have to eat again. <laughs> we were talking about that before, actually. Eating plutonium. Be kind of weird. But if you could do it, though, like, if you guys could choose to eat one dose of plutonium and you'll live, there, there won't be, like, many side effects that are bad at all that last more than, like, the first... Let's say, well, let, let's say maybe there's some weird things that could happen, but it only lasts, like, an hour. And you eat plutonium, and then you never have to eat again for the rest of your life. You'll literally stay the exact same, um, like, maintenance energy that you need to preserve your body at every single year that you're alive, whatever state it's in. It's just, like, permanent sustenance for your body. Would you eat that one thing so you never have to think about eating again or do anything? With the notion that if you do eat food to enjoy it, you have to work pretty hard to obviously equalize that. Of some sort, right? Just to save the time and energy you do that. There's been times in life where I've thought of that, but then like... <sighs> like, cause you'd have so much extra time, but at the same time... Do you, do, is your life like centralized around food enough where food is actually a really good use of that time, right? As an experience. That's the thing that's kind of the debate. Because like obviously, like let's say other people are having food, you could go and have dinner with them, but you, just, you wouldn't eat, eat food. You'd just be sitting there. Would you still get hungry? Well, okay, like let's say you would never actually be hungry, but if you decided to eat something that is tasty, then you could have an appetite for it if you started to eat it. Like if you took the first bite, it would kind of break a seal and then you'd, you'd basically have the hunger to eat it. But otherwise you wouldn't be bothered. Yeah. Also, with the jelly beans, I might be wrong. It could actually only be 20. The 20 grams of added sugar might actually be the same. I I thought I thought it was 40, though, because I'm pretty sure... Like, you guys can correct me. I'm pretty sure... Oh! No! I got the bonfire. It's okay. Added sugar is part of the total carbs. Okay. So, could we just measure it on total carbs, then? 27 times 3? I'm trying to think. Because again, like when we have stuff over here, we don't actually have a lot of stuff that says that. It's usually just sugar and then carbs. Okay, so 27. Yeah, so I was going to say 120 would make it so that like these would be way sweeter with how many are in the box. Because that would be like drinking legitimately like three Cokes. And like a Coke itself is still technically just as sweet, I'd say, as like this box, right? Or it's it seems like that. So 27, 52, 70... Nine? Almost 80? Like, that's definitely tolerable. Considering how bad you eat currently, yes. So you're making that decision permanently, though. You know that that's, like, forever. That's what I'm saying. You can only do it once. You can never undo it once you do it. You'd still make that choice. You don't like eating, so <clears throat> having to eat would be great. That's exactly, so I think the type of person that it would appeal to is someone that already has decided they just don't like eating. But most people, like even if you think now it would be appealing, you'd probably be like, oh, I regret that. Okay, so we don't have any more birthday cake left or blueberry toothpastes. Uh, we do have, no, we don't have any booger left. We got rotten egg and liver and onions again, two of them. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Those are both good ones. So it's cappuccino and buttered popcorn. Used to not like eating <clears throat> until you hit your 30s. You enjoy it quite a bit now. I think it depends on like the rhythm that you're in. Because like I've been in um, certain situations where like food was just not really ideal. Like it was really easy to just not eat for a long time. Um, it's also potentially based on the person too. Because I can like hard focus really easily. Whereas if you can't focus on one thing where it's like you're literally time warping from it, then yeah, you'd probably notice you're hungry. For me, I'd have to remind myself to eat, but then if I just eat or I have time to consider, then I might eat more, right? So it's not just biased in one way. It could be like flipping around depending.
That was cheap. <laughs> that was kind of cheap, yeah. Another one. DJ Khaled spin. Dead fish. Uh... Again, I don't think there's any of those left. Oh, there was one more booger left. Okay, I'm going to eat the booger one in place, the dead fish, because we did spin booger. It's just, This one's not as green, but this is actually the booger. Ew. Ew. Oh, the texture of that was gross. It was dry. I don't think that was on purpose. That one was, like, like super dry. Like, the shell, like, almost kind of, like, didn't break apart. It was, like, all to, like, a, ew. That was really weird. Why are you naked? Oh, just to get through the uh, the first part with the the lava. But you did make a good point. I probably should put the armor back on now. We also have really good armor. Got some stuff that actually has resistance. I'm gonna do this one. What else we got? Poison resistance. I want to see if I can actually avoid the toxicity. Iron leggings. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, so now I kind of look like I'm in the Matrix, but also a priest. And I killed ghosts for a living to get the blade. But at the same time, found time to style a nice ponytail. And forgot to put on sunscreen. Sorry to repeat the question, but which run would you say you had the most fun with in FromSoft games, Fabian? For me? The most fun? And you know what? Convergence on Elden Ring. Which is also on the second channel if you guys want to see the, the unedited version of that. But um, Convergence on the regular Dark Souls 3 and Convergence on Elden Ring are both really close. I think the Elden Ring one was even cooler because obviously it's a little bit more fresh. They can get away with maybe using techniques that they only discovered at the end of developing the, the last update for the third game. <clears throat> And then they can just start off with doing a bunch more for Elden Ring. Okay. What are we doing? Oh! Destroyed. Do you ever get hangry? Probably, yeah, I, I bet. I mean, not like... I don't know. Actually, it's hard to say, because the way I look at it is if, if, I, if I'm very hungry, I know that my brain's operating on a higher level, so like... The cognitive benefit of being hungry overrides the ang the emotion to me sometimes but like there's situations where if i expect something like if i expect food and the food doesn't happen the same way or maybe there's something that's like a a little bit of a curveball in the way to get to the food then i could get like a little bit irritable because of that if i've been hungry for a while i finally decide okay yeah now i gotta eat and then part of it also is because i know that i want a certain amount of calories per day to be satiated and if i don't do that then if i'm putting effort into fitness or exercise or whatever some of it's not rectifying um, if there's not enough of those macros going in. Obviously, it doesn't have to be perfect. But if I missed a meal, like that would actually make me angrier than being hangry. And if it was at the same time as like being hungry, then yeah, that could be pretty pissed off at that point. <laughs> Probably wouldn't really take it out on anybody the same way, but um, I, I have people in my life that I know that get hangry where they actually will be snappy with you. Like they'll 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 say something in a way or like respond to you in a way where it actually might make you want to start arguing with them <laughs> or something like that um but like yeah so i can go a pretty long time without eating like even from waking up like if i go to bed let's say i eat maybe like three hours before or something like that maybe two maybe it's five i don't know whatever it might be and then i got up and i didn't eat for four or five hours i could tolerate that completely fine and if anything i'd probably get more done in that time than if i did eat because as soon as i have food you f like you mentally feel different right like because your body has to digest the food blood's going to your stomach and then there's a little bit of fogginess that pops up so um i don't know if that's because i've done a lot of experimentation with eating certain diets that don't have that brain fog as much and also doing fasting and stuff um, but like I almost kind of mentally prepare for if I eat certain things like I know I'm not gonna feel mentally as there So I can't try to achieve certain things that require focus as easily I'm Not gonna go and write a freaking symphony or like solve the problems of the universe After eating 300 grams of carbs and like freaking 5,000 calories in a meal, right? <laughs> also, I probably won't do that at all anyways, but that's an exaggeration Oh, 
difficult. This is where it gets dicey, man. I don't know why there's a fire sage here. This is problematic. Why is... Dude, he's gonna burst me into the hole here. Yo, I backstepped! Oh my god, I didn't want to do that. Yo, bet of chaos is coming in hot, man. Heal. What's the situation? Can we heal again? No? Yes? Yes? Yo? Running? This way? I don't actually even know what happens with the ground here. Oh, we're stuck. Okay. Uh... Can he fall into the hole? Shit! Oh my god. What? <laughs> Yo, am I safe? Am I safe? <laughs> He's in the hole. What is this? I don't remember that. Okay, it's been a while. This this whole stuck situation's nice. Okay, we're just gonna let you chill there. Maybe you'll fall and die. Can I please just make the next one? That's it. We, we don't even have that many jelly beans left. We have to make the next one. Nice. Okay. Why is he in there? I have no idea. That, that actually doesn't make a lot of sense, other than maybe Fire Sage is the bug inside of the tree. So, like, if I go in here and there's nothing in here, I'm gonna have to kill Fire Sage. But, it should be a different enemy inside of here. Because I don't think he could escape. Like, that's really weird. Oh, dude, it actually is, I think. No! <laughs> it's, dude, that's the... F Yo, that's so hard! That's ridiculous! <laughs> How do you do that? I can't even make, like, I couldn't even make it back if I wanted to. There, you'd have to fight, you have to kill Fire Sage while the, the Bed of Chaos is attacking you. So, like, the whole puzzle doesn't even matter. Like, how do, yeah, how do you do that? That's crazy. I, might, I must have to find a safe spot. I, I think that what I did might have even made it worse. Because I just freed both the arms, dude. It might have been easier just doing it the other way. Oh, I wish I just kind of thought about that. All right, we got... In between old bandages and stink bug. Doing two. Oh, I actually don't think I have stink bug left. It's gone, yeah, so I'm gonna have to spin again. Oh, the same one again. Nice. <laughs> okay, we'll do two old bandages. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. How do you even... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just trying to be quiet about it, man. It's like, actually, it's almost impossible not to fucking re react to it, dude. It's like... I'm not even like like trying to like choking on it, but your eyes just water, dude. Oh. Can you bait the fire sage into the pit? I might be able to. Cause when he did jump, he got stuck in the smaller one. So we'll we'll see if that's possible. Is it bitter, dude? It, like the 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 old bandages tastes like a flavor I can't even describe. Like, whatever you thought a Band-Aid that's gross tastes like, it's worse. Like, you can eat a Band-Aid right now, you'll be fine. I'd actually rather do that. As long as I could certify, like, sign, like if I could guarantee someone signed off on it. You know, certified safe, right? Ooh. That's bad. Like, I want to describe it, but everything I can think of makes me feel more nauseous even just to think of it or say it. It's probably not going to make you guys want to watch what we're doing. I'm trying to, like, it's... Like, you get the bandage flavor. Like, it actually does taste like you're eating, like, medical tape or band-aid band -aid or something. And then there's, like, a slight metallic taste. And then there's something that just tastes rotten, and I don't know what it is. It's, like, those three layers right there. It's like probably the nicest way I can say it. <laughs> the bug after eating McDonald's for 20 years. Uh, can you bait Fire Sage into the main pit? Maybe he gets one shot after beating both sides. Oh. Okay, I so I see what happened there. He fell into the pit by spawning into the fight because we already did both arms. So, like that one was guaranteed. Wait. 
Why is it still going though? Is there something else we have to do? Yeah, he spawned into the pit. I hope it didn't glitch. <laughs> Bugged HUD? Yeah, it could just be the health bar, you're right. I, I'm not familiar with that glitch. I don't know if I've even seen that normally. Does it go away? Dude, if that's there for the rest of the game, like, can I warp and get rid of that? I really hope that's not there for the rest of the game. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we kind of just went with the path to get to Bed of Chaos. I was going to do Nito and everything. Um, I believe there was a reason we went this way instead. I'm trying to remember what it was now. Uh, oh, it's because we knew Manus was uh, ceaseless already, and I wanted to just get the, the centipede out of the way as well. Put out should solve it. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, man, this guy's stacked. He's got the Havel's armor and giant gloves. Well, that's the, or those are the Katarina gauntlets. Hey, he's got some heavy stuff on. We might actually uh, die to him if I fight him. And the Firekeeper died, too. <sighs> okay, so we're on our way. We can actually potentially sorry, beat this. Fool. What I'm going to do next, you I'm going to get the bonfire be. in here. going to go back to the giant in Anorlando and actually get some more upgrades, see if we can buy more Twinkling Titanite. Uh, then we can, after this, do Calamite in place of Sif for Four Kings. And try that just just to see what it is because four kings might be really easy uh, i keep forgetting that it's more so getting there because of all like the slim walkways but it, there's a chance that whoever spawns into the abyss might even die right away or i don't know i'm trying to think of like what it would be replaced by like, i'm pretty sure regular four kings is worse than most scenarios then again <laughs> Mark my words, I could say that, and then I, get, I can get cursed right away. Miyazaki could remote access the stream anytime if he wants. You know what they say, there's always a, a bed of chaos six feet or less away from you. <laughs> I would actually like a reality where bed of chaos doesn't exist at all. Like, imagine we went in there and that wasn't... We, we didn't even know what that was. Like, the history was rewritten. I would I would hold the burden for everybody knowing that there was a bed of chaos and that I used the Men in Black Mind Eraser on the entire universe and every sentient being that exists in the entire galaxy would never remember it, but I would remember it and I wouldn't even spill the beans, dude. I would tell nobody. Because it would, it would ruin everything, obviously. And that'd be a really hard burden to carry. But I'd do it, though. Oh, what do you drop? Why do you think they reuse Ornstein in other games, but not Smo? Oh man, I tried to pick it up and it made me sit down. That really sucks. That could have been something good. <laughs> we'll never know now. I genuinely was trying to pick up the item. I don't even think this game has the button where you can switch between the two prompts. Like, I think it just is based on where you're standing. <sighs> okay, let's go back to Anorlando. Uh, we'll do Chamber of the Princess. So yeah, why do you think they reuse Ornstein? Uh, well, my guess would be that Ornstein is potentially real. So like, this is all illusions, right? So Guinevere, or sorry, uh, Gwendolyn makes the illusion of Guinevere and Ornstein and Smo, presumably in this game, but there's a chance that in Dark Souls 2 that actually is the real Ornstein, because he was actually real, right? If you look at his ring, it says that he was a Dragon Slayer specifically. He was the captain, um, and he has like a lineage. So there's other Dragon Slayers. In Dark Souls 3, the one that's in that game would be another one of those soldiers of like that type of uh, military or whatever it would be at the time that they had. But um, the ones in this game though, I, it could be that Ornstein's actually real as well, and Smo is an illusion, or vice versa. Yeah, so Smo is real and Ornstein's an illusion. So. In Dark Souls 2, that might be the real Ornstein, and then in this one, it's the, he's the illusion, and then Smo is real. Whatever the case is. Something like that. One Again, there's there's a real one, and then there's an illusion one. That's that's my theory on that. I, or I believe that that theory. Especially because, like, when I saw the original one in Dark Souls 2, I'm like, one of these has to be 
real or the time period is affecting the way he looks because obviously he looks a little bit different in DS2, like the armor is even a different color. So I was like, okay, either this is really far in the future and like he's been in the water or something like that maybe or whatever and it changed it or like just the, the, the amount of time that's gone by, it's just discolored it or um, that actually is a real one and then he the one in here is just fake. So happy you're back, Sir Razor. I'm happy that you're back too. I'm happy to see all you guys. How have you been doing, man? If you say sharp as a response, oh, I shouldn't have told you that. I should have waited to see. You're supposed to say sharp because you're Sir Razor. You have to say that. Wait, we got to get the Twinkling Titanite. So, oh yeah, we can buy quite a bit of it. I'm going to get four. And plus four, we need four more. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I don't know if it's smart to pop enough souls to even do that, even if I could. I could also, I could invade, um, what's his name? I could invade Lotrek right here. Should we do that? Like, I have the Black Eye Orb. I don't know if I have to be human or, oh, maybe I do. Never mind. That's smart, even if it's not canon, you learn something, Lore Master. So that's not my theory, but again, my theory originally was that if he is the same Ornstein, that the armor changed through oxidation or time or whatever, and then the other theory was that, like, obviously one's real, one's fake. That's the only two things I can think of. It's like, the same guy, time goes by, one's real, one's not. <laughs> we know that they one of them has to be, because again, like, if you read the ring, if you read the, like, the, the backstory, like, he, he is mentioned in story. But when it comes to, like, Gwendolyn, if you, like, kind of reference, like, his impact on that whole place, you can tell he, he affects, like, even, like, the, the time of day and everything. He changes. He brings the, he brings the sun back. He brings um, all the giants back and everything like that. They're not even there. They're all fake, right? Ooh. Yo, the HP, dude. <laughs> And we got you know, we got the big black cat thing from the forest. Oh man, this is this is a jungle gym. This is a jamboree. Oh, it's Manus. Never mind. I can't see anything. <laughs> I thought it was one. Of, wait, was there a cat from the the forest there too? Like the roly poly one, or am I just imagining that? Miyasaki binge and drugs right in the most incomprehensible lines of lore. I don't think that they necessarily wrote a story that's like a book for this game. The way I think of it is that like there is a lot of plot holes. Like if you went to actually like to FromSoft and you read their books, there would be plot holes in everything. I don't think they actually have concrete answers for the things that we're trying to dig for. There, there's there's a chance there's there is answers for some things because there could be cut content or changed plots, but I don't even think they made a full story for this on purpose because if they did there would almost be like indications of it in certain cases but then like there's always the reality where i think it'd be really funny if like i'm wrong about that and they're laughing right now watching people try to figure out what it is but they do have like a whole novel on it or something um so yeah most reasonable case scenario they didn't have enough time to make a novel of this and it's not the way that they pieced it together anyways they probably went like went along as the development was happening and added pieces here and there they left plot holes on purpose or unintentionally. There is some mention specifically that there was intention to leave interpretation. I know that. Oh wait, we need a we need a humanity. Do I have one? <gasps> yo, 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 I'm gonna die. Don't die, don't die. I don't know where she is. I absolutely hate running around with Priscilla not being able to see because I don't know how much damage she's gonna do. I guess Pinwheel's kind of weak though. Hire Vadi to make it believable. Books will sell. <laughs> I bet you Vadi could convince you of anything. We should make that a a wager. I, I should actually be like, yo, I will I will sub to your Patreon at the highest tier and tier three sub to your stream for a year if you try to convince somebody that water is actually the same thing as 
your hair. There you go. Or that your eyeballs are actually not real and Jaden Smith was right. That's a pretty classic one, right? Having R.R. Martin for Elden Ring helped a ton for minimizing plot holes. That's what made the game my favorite, is because the, the cohesive story with all the improvements they've made learning from this, it can't really go wrong. You know, like in Game of Thrones, I, I'm not necessarily a fan. I haven't seen the full series. I've only watched, I think, the second last episode with some people that liked it. And I thought it was cool. But, like, from the standpoint of Elden Ring, I can believe just from playing that that Game of Thrones actually is pretty, pretty damn cool. And the books probably are really good, too. If not, then he got super lucky and he just became an amazing writer overnight, because... Yeah. I'm assuming a lot of that was... some of the influence for how he, like, wrote the Elden Ring story. Especially with, like, the family stuff. Oh, we got the tail cut, we got a humanity. And there's still a regular pinwheel. And she somehow missed me. What? Dude, she's she's killing the regular pinwheel? What? Armored Core doesn't have a lot of plot holes. Armored Core is a really cool story game as well. But more so from the standpoint that it, it does exactly what it needs to. It doesn't do anything unnecessary. And it's almost kind of like more neutral where more people could get into it. Kind of like an action movie, like one of those generic mainstream action movies. The gameplay is really cool. And it might be a little bit more niche. But if you were to like make a movie of Armored Core, you could probably sell that idea a lot easier than, I don't know, maybe like the exact story of this. I bet you there'd probably be more ticket sales. Since like for this, you'd have to interpret it and then people would be like, eh, well, you changed the story. I think that technically this was this way. And then like basically Miyazaki's like, we never actually decided that. Like it wasn't us, it was the studio that made the movie. And then people are like, Dark Souls fell off, man. Every time they make the new movies, it makes the games look so bad. They're so terrible. Well, yeah, because it's not made by us. Like, there'd just be so many controversies that are stupid. But I'd love to see them try to make movies out of some of their games. It's one of the few that haven't been done that are pretty big now, right? So, And it's also, there's so much opportunity to make fun of the difficulty of it. But like through the writing, like if they could actually even make a reference to that, I could see people like literally laughing so hard in the theater. Uncharted is your favorite series? Dude, the Uncharted movie was good. I actually liked it. And the games, though they don't necessarily match up the same because the timeline is is a lot longer before. Um, I kind of like Tom Holland being Nathan Drake more than the character in the game. Like, so the movie to me, like, if they make a game based on him being younger and it's kind of modeled after how they did the movie, and they did, like, the younger Sully as well and everything, kind of made them look similar. Like, I feel like that would be an even cooler game to me. But not not to say the originals are bad, just I like the way he played the character in that fashion, but I can't see them relating the same. Like, I couldn't believe that if he grew up, he would be the same kind of archetype of character as the actual guy from the game. Like, they don't relate to me in my head for some reason. But the way they do the movie relates a lot. And actually, I never, I don't really go on, um, like, threads or anything to check to see what people think about movies. Um, so I don't even know what the opinions were on that movie, but everyone I know liked it. I bet you there were some people that were like, it's not like the game, bro. Or, the, or they're like, yo, there was, like, no scene where he was hiding behind cover and it was, like, third person. It's like, yo, you, you ruined the camera angle. <laughs> Or like, where are the purple guys? Where are like the supernatural dudes? I bet you if they make a sequel, there's gonna be something weird that happens. There's gonna be like cave monkeys or something strange. There's gotta be. Cause like, they opened it up with the treasure hunting, but they gotta now double down with creatures or something that's like a little bit more out there. It's pretty much how they did the, the games, right? So. You, you've not enjoyed any video game based movie parody wise? Wise, but you like the Five Nights at Freddy's movie based on what they did with the costumes and the structures. I haven't seen that yet, actually. I uh, I made a commitment this year to purposely not watch horror movies. Which, I don't think that's actually like a horror horror movie. It's more of just like a, ooh, jump scare. I don't think people are being brutally, like, 
destroyed, but I, yeah, just in general. I'm trying it out to see how it is. I was told by somebody that, uh, you know, they can be kind of damaging to you in certain ways, and I was like kind of like trying to reason with it. I, there's a lot of different viewpoints on how that could work, but I've watched so much horror that I feel like it actually has affected me a bit. And not necessarily in a bad way completely, but there is definitely some things that they <laughs> they affect you, you know? <laughs> so. It's like they, they almost get burned into your... Um, I don't even know what it would be called. Like, it's... It's like, let's say you went through a traumatic experience, and then there's that trauma, and then, like, let's say you watched something that wasn't real, and you knew it wasn't real, but it was made to look believable in some way, in some horror movie, and it could even be like, it could be paranormal. I Probably not as likely that the paranormal stuff would screw you up as much, but if it was like violence or something, you would definitely be affected to some degree. Just from the notion that your actual brain's chemistry can't differentiate that thing. It thinks it's a thing, but it can't say, oh yeah, it was made by like this director. So that's the part that I think could be a little effective, right? Cause like, tell me this, you go and watch uh, something like that, how do you feel after? It's like, oh, that was pretty intense. Wow, like maybe there's some adrenaline. Maybe there's a little bit of like, yo, that's pretty dark. And then you could watch something super, super inspiring and you don't feel bad, but there's also nothing bad you take with it either. So, and I love, I love horror movies. I love crazy, like, like the ax murder stuff, the paranormal stuff is, it's not, the paranormal stuff's not that scary to me, but like, I think it's cool. And um, even just like the, like the Saw type movies, like they're, they're pretty cool from like the artistic standpoint. Yeah, this guy's not getting up. I actually have no idea how we can do this part. It might be possible if I just jump, but there's a chance this might be like impossible. Like I, I might be stuck. <laughs> He's supposed to get up. Let's try to quit out and see if it does anything. The only thing that could literally fix that is I'd have to re-randomize the game and then we were, were we might see bosses we've already seen before. So, a longer weapon, Wrath of Gods. I don't have any magic like that, but it could be the weapon. It definitely. Oh, no. No, he doesn't have a hitbox. That's what it is. Consumables. Try the Dung Pie and then maybe do the Dragon Torso Stone. Yeah, nothing. If this works, I'm going to laugh, but I think he's actually just bugged, and... Yeah, this suck. It kind of sucks, because I want to keep it the same randomization seed, right? I want to fight Calamite instead of Sif. Zip through the air. I don't have any, like, cheat codes or anything. Like, I'm not running any software that allows you to do that. This is literally just the randomizer software. Hmm. PSR gadget? I don't have that. I have um, enemy randomizer, item randomizer separately put into the game, then I have both the windows open. I don't even have anything for, like I have a challenge mod for this game that might be able to like make enemies into other objects, but I don't know if that would be necessary here. Hmm, I wonder if I could jump around the other side. I have 93,000 as well, oh boy. Uh, so okay, there's two, there's two different things we can do. We can try to jump around the outside. If it doesn't work, we can come back again from being reloaded, see if he spawns in. <gasps> Here we go. Nice, dude. Please don't get knocked off by the stupid Sheldon. All right. So the jump was nice. <laughs> the jump worked. But that was the sketchy jump. That was not the safe jump. Dude, a gargoyle in a cave is scarier than I thought it would be. It's like, oh, you're you're trying to run down the hill there? Good luck getting far away from me as you're literally just going around the corner in one spot as I fly over your head and slice your skull in half. Jeez. All right, let's see what's down here. What is that? Does anybody have a guess? I see red. The thing is, it's really hard to tell sometimes. Not only because they're all stretched out and there's a bunch of lines, but I don't even know what the color scheme is there. 
I see a hand. Pinwheel? Oh, is it actually pinwheel? Oh my, what? Dude, no one guessed that. No one guessed that. No one guessed that. Try to convince me. Ugh. Okay, that was really sketchy. Uh, we might actually be able to do this. There's skeletons still, though. This is a really bad fight, man. Oh my god. Okay. Especially with the weapon that we have, too. <laughs> like, just the reach. And it does, it's not a cult, so it can't, uh, can't do much there. Oh, and I have to use a humanity again to heal. Can I do it? Ooh. Ooh, 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 dude. No. See, it was pinwheel. Technically not, though. So it's in between booger and rotten egg. I'm just going to do rotten egg because there is no booger left. I'll do two of them. And I think that fight right there, we're going to come back to that one. I'm going to do cow meat first. So we got two rotten egg or buttered popcorn. Ugh. Ugh. They're both. Oh, no, one's good. One's bad. Sorry, I thought they were both bad. Hey, only one's bad. It's not as bad as I thought. I got bit into the bad one first. <laughs> Don't you think you've seen me with hair before, Psycho? You thought I didn't even have hair? <laughs> I, went, I went back in time before I molded from this game, and I I stopped playing it. That's why I'm so bad at this randomizer. <laughs> All right, let's go back to, I guess it'd be Parish. Wait, that's kind of, oh, that's kind of far away. So we, ha we really have to be Calamite then. We have to do it right away. Because we're going to have to run back. Fox, thank you so much for the raid, dude. What were you playing today? Also, dude, you, you messaged me and you were saying that you were recording something or practicing music. What were you doing? I didn't even know you played or anything. Or like you, you sang or whatever, whatever you do. Whatever the creative thing is. Because I've been trying to tell everybody that I know that is involved in something creative like that to um, check out the collaboration part of our Discord and like just throw something in there. I guess like you have to be invited, but just you can tell me that you have interests and then obviously like we can talk about that kind of stuff and then you guys can also collaborate with each other too if you want. You have no talent in that realm, you don't? Oh, I thought you said that you were you were, you were recording stuff or whatever. Was, was that just recording videos? Maybe I was wrong. Like, I swear to God, the way you put the message, you said that you were you were playing something. Okay, recording videos, my bad. Okay, so what you could do then is, uh, you could, we, we could have like a new style where instead of playing an instrument, you could play the, I don't know, play the camera or play, play the, uh, no, that doesn't even make any sense. Okay, you could have a script, a commentary, and that'll be the lyrics. Hey guys, welcome back to this video. It's like dun 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 dun. And then everybody thinks they're watching a video, but it's actually music. And it ends in five minutes. There's no actual thing achieved. There's a lot of samples where it repeats where it's like, thanks for the sub. What's going on today? Von Dave Bo. And like that's a lyric right there too. And then I could be like, Raid from Fox AMT, thank you so much for the raid. And then like the hook would be reading Von Debo's comment and then responding to it. <laughs> Splice game effects into a song. It's kind of like when Lobos made his voice um, in a cappella, the, the sound effects in the theme song of this game. That was one of the coolest things. He could probably make that a song too. It's one hell of a concept. Yep, we're getting very abstract here. There is really no rules other than just. We gotta do something to make a song. I think hitting him in his feet when he actually stands up is so much easier than what I thought it would be. I wonder if 
there's a method normally, like for a hitless run, that is safer, including that. I usually stay pretty far away from him. Like the neck can kind of trap you. This might actually be way easier. It's kind of like Sif if you were underneath him the whole time and you could afford to get hit by his paws. If you take all the sound effects into Fruity Loops and do some magic with them, I'm sure you could create some nice songs. You, you definitely could. Like, you could sample this whole game. Yo, wait, actually, you just gave me a crazy idea. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <sighs> Why'd you do it, dude? I'm gonna have to, okay, now I literally have to do that. And I, and I have to figure it out pretty soon, too, because that sounds really funny. I have the ability to do it. Like, all I literally have to do is just take the MP3s uh, converted from uh, the soundtrack, or even if people already have like little clips made, it could be NPCs' voices too, and I could literally program them onto uh, to, to anything. I could program them onto like a thing where you could just use a, a computer to program it. I could put it on the drums, could put it on a keyboard. I don't know if I could put it on guitar, that'd be a little bit hard, but make like a synth with just like the menu sounds and then Solaire, Calamite, a part of a theme song. Love getting giving people work. That's a really good idea. If anyone else wants to take that idea, by all means do it. But that just gave me such a cool idea though. <laughs> And I can already kind of like think of how it sounds. It's gonna be more of like a funny thing. But I could I could see how it would sound though. Now the question is like if you could pick any of the games with sound effects, which one would have the best NPC dialogue one-liners and the best sound effects? Make a house beat? Dude, like, that's the thing. It doesn't matter what genre it is. You can just sample any genre. I can make it jazz. I can make it, like, a hip-hop thing. I can make it, like you said, the, um, like, house music, EDM, DMB. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, dude. <laughs> He always thought Skola was a mild black guy. <laughs> what? Dude, what does that even mean? I, the, the way you said mild, I don't... Like, maybe that's like a normal thing, like, the way you referred to it. I've never heard someone say mild like that before. What does that even mean? The mullet, among other things, broke you down just now? I don't have a mullet. <laughs> okay, so... We have we have two things we gotta figure out. What's What are you talking about mullet? And what does mild mean? A salsa flavor. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, if we're talking salsa, it's got to be spicy. Unless it's like green salsa. If there's no explanation for that, that'll probably be the downfall of the stream. That's going to ruin my life, man. I need to know how we figured out that I have a mullet. Because I didn't even know that was a thing. And also how, how I'm mild. Uh, whatever you do, you can name it Elder Ring DLC so it gets clout. Oh, dude. Fabian, you just gave me the idea. I'm not going to tell you, though. I'm not I'm not going to say anymore. I'm not going to say anymore. You just you you completely you change the idea for the better. Now I know what I'm going to do. And it's not I'm, it's not even exactly what you said, but it's it's you, you unlocked something there. But it's going to take some time. I'm going to have to wait until a particular video releases from Namco Bandai. And then we're going to we're going to be doing some stuff. Don't tell me, but let me know when you do. It might not sound as good as me actually sampling stuff from the game directly, but if, if I don't know, if something that's coming up that might be released soon happens in a video and there's enough little sound bites, I might be able to make some. It does look like a mullet, you're bad. So mullets typically like, 
as far as I know, the thing that makes a mullet a mullet is your hair has to actually be like pretty long on the back of your head all the way down to like your neck, right? And it's supposed to actually have like a little bit of like a wave at the back, right? So I wouldn't even be able to know someone has a mullet unless I could see the side of their head or the back of their head. That's kind of that's kind of why I was like, wait, what? But maybe I'm wrong and there is actually like what I'm saying is not even a mullet. Or there's different ways of it. Watching on a phone, your portrait looks mulleted because of the chair. Because <laughs> of this thing? The, the pillow? Okay, what if I take that away then? Let's just take that away. Or even worse, like, let's just stand up. <laughs> I'm joking. I could actually, I could leave you guys if I wanted to. Three, two, one, take off. <laughs> It's kind of funny, as soon as I started doing that, I'm like, in about three seconds, something's going to get unplugged from the computer because I didn't rearrange the cables to be at that height. <laughs> it was the pillow? Oh, shit. That almost fell off the edge. Okay. So we're back into my Giants. That's... Uh, yeah. Wait, did we beat Calamite? Yeah, what am I saying? What are we doing here? Let's go back and get the last upgrade. Or the weapon. Can't unsee it now, but you'd pull it off. I appreciate that. Like, for me to have a mullet, I'd have to uh, straighten my hair and, like, have something in it to keep it like that. Um, but even now, like, it wouldn't be... I don't think it'd be long enough. Like, it's certainly not in the back. Like, there's almost... There's very short hair in the back, so... But before I cut, cut it, like, if I just let it go for a long time and straighten... That'd be a really funny haircut to do. I had a friend that had, like, super, super curly hair. Not, not as curly as me, but, like, for his background, he had very curly hair, and he did straighten it one time, and it looked hilarious. And he, he did, like, the emo slice way back in 2008 or nine or something like that. And it's insane how, uh, like, when you're used to just seeing someone with, like, a certain hairstyle, like, how much changing, like, from straight or curly hair makes someone look. It's wild. But then he was just, like, he's kind of trying to play the part. He's like, my life is a black abyss of death. <laughs> the mild part no words off the bat you just seem hospitable I appreciate that thank you I'm trying to be hospitable in the stream for sure but I mean if you if if we're talking about real life every single person has to swim across the moat that has three alligators in it and then the drawbridge closes within three seconds so if you don't make it I mean I can't say I can be more hospitable than that but otherwise it's the best I can do once you get inside, everything's super nice, but like to actually come and chill, it's, it's, there's a little, there's a few things yet, a few obstacles. <laughs> Am I doing the DLC? I'm not sure if we'll have time for the DLC. We'll see. Um, I have the Four Kings and I have, well, Four Kings, Nito, and Seath, technically. We haven't checked out Seath yet. The one thing with that is I'll be trapped if I go and do the whole progression that you normally do for Seath. So, I mean, you could try it. You could try and see. That's one thing I haven't checked out yet, but the Sanctuary Guardian also, it, it's kind of a toss up. Like it's hard to get to. It is challenging. The skeletons will probably kill me. So I don't know if this is a good idea to focus on right now. It's going to probably be between Four Kings and, and Seath. I think I'm going to check out Anor Londo. Or uh, sorry, uh, New Londo. Overly lame, edgy, depressed person. It's fun time. He actually wasn't, like, legitimately depressed or edgy. I'm just saying that, like, it, once he straightened the hair, he was, like, making a joke pretending that he actually was playing the part of, like, an emo slice or whatever, and that was his interpretation of what that means. So he's just like, my life is a black abyss of death. He was just saying that the whole time. And he's like, man, he's like... <laughs> he went into the corner, and he was just like, I don't even want to be around you guys because you don't understand me. I just want to be alone in the corner, man. And he would just, like, chill in the corner. It was just mainly just to make everybody laugh, but it was really funny, though. And there's some pictures too, and I was like, man, like, you could pass off for it, you know? Just gotta make a band. Go to Van's Warp Tour and just, like, wear skinny jeans. Scream a little bit, you're good. It's not a phase, Mom, yeah? <laughs> the, the, the not a phase thing is definitely relevant. <laughs> That's a good impression because you've met people like that and you were one for one time. I think, dude, in, in like, teenagehood in general, 
like unless you're in a military background like there's almost no way you're not gonna be a little bit edgy at some point just like a tiny tiny bit little as tiny as bit because like i've literally seen regular shit that uh i guess when you're like younger would be like the normal type of i guess i don't even know how, know how to like i meant the, the, the demeanor demeanor is the word i'm looking for mannerisms demeanor i've seen some of them um since like obviously growing up a little bit more and looking back with a bigger age gap and it actually is crazy to see what you think you look like as like someone that's maybe like in those years compared to being older than looking at it and then you also know when you're in those years that other people that are older do make those jokes saying oh yeah like it's just a phase this that whatever obviously parents make whatever kind of claims and then you just you see it, and then you're like oh i can completely understand now what you're talking about so <laughs> Is that skeleton trying to strike fear into me? I hope not. Because there's a lot of other stuff to worry about right now. <laughs> um, I backstabbed the mushroom. Uh, nice voice. Is that natural? Do you practice to get that? Uh, I actually have never done vocal training before, but I really want to, though. Not for, like, speech. Specifically for singing. Because um, I had a friend in high school and she was a pretty damn good singer. She taught me how to do the basics of singing and I practiced it a little bit here and there. Um, but for spoken word and stuff like that, I guess the best way to put it is like, there's some fundamental things that you wanna do that I, I don't even do correctly. Um, you want to obviously like pace your conversation properly. You wanna have good inflection, enunciation, um, which is just like the way that you, like, you know, the detail of how you say certain things, the way it's executed. And then sibilance when it comes to like recording uh, certain sounds like S's and other things like you might have a little bit of a lisp you can try to filter that out with settings but I've like purposely tried to be a little bit more specific on not being loose in that way by like trying to slur things as much or you know be a little bit more tighter with the speech just because I know I'm talking to people that do not understand English as a first language sometimes or um, they might just like whatever I explain to them might not make as much sense unless I make it simple and I fail to do that all the time like, that is one of the things where, if I could explain ideas to you how I think of it in my head, in some cases, like, purely how I form that idea, it might not make any sense unless I change that to, um, you know, communicate it with better understanding. So, like, I've even been told by some of the closest people to me that are very intelligent, like, that is a game-changing factor that I could adopt and really do well with. So, that's the only thing I've really worked on, is just trying to be better at simplifying certain things and there's still a lot to go because i feel like there's legitimately multiple levels to concepts for any, of any sort almost like of a lot of different things and we always talk about subjects that you know we all like and everything and sometimes people are like really into them and people in chat are like what are you even talking about i have no idea you know like what are those words What happens at the warp tour happens mom i love my chemical romance dude i actually do like my chemical romance um although i noticed that gerard can't sing certain songs with the same capacity anymore he i don't i don't think it's because nestle he's just getting older but like i've noticed as bands have gotten older that i've liked um for a long time even dream theater too like james labrie can't sing a lot of stuff consistently he's much older than gerard obviously but like they can't uh, have that capacity that work capacity or endurance they have to take so many more breaks and people make fun of them for it, but it's like, yo, like, dude, they've been playing music for so long. Why don't you just be happy that you're able to see them live before they, you know, leave this this world? <laughs> Some people um, I know that got to see artists that are not here anymore that I would have loved to see. And they don't even like the music. They just got really lucky that their parents did or, you know, someone gave them a ticket or whatever. And they got to see some artists that like I would have loved to see. Um, so it's interesting how uh, how that works, you know? It's one thing I noticed, I was watching some of their live performances, I'm like, wow, they used to be, like, so much more, like, they could sustain so much more vocally. And then there are some bands that get better over time, and I don't know how that works. And, like, I've even seen bands where, as they're getting older, they try harder to make it sound even more like the record, or even add extra stuff, and that's, that's crazy. Not everyone is Ozzy. <laughs> to whom especially? Um, like the people that had passed away that they got to see. Uh, specifically, no Mac Miller is one for me. Uh, I know someone actually even from the stream that actually got to say hi to him. They, they they met him in person, and apparently he was super nice. 
So Mac Miller, you know, some various other rap artists and stuff like that from way back. Uh, I guess one in particular, Rush. Like, I would love to see Rush with the original lineup specifically. Be amazing. Um, uh, Linkin Park, obviously, would be sick. Like, their older stuff. Who else? Um, oh, uh, Chris Cornell. Yeah. You realize you're the goat of Dark Souls, Corn? Well, one, one day... There was a time, I think it was like 2000, I want to say 22, I woke up one day and I had hooves and I got really scared because I, I, I'm used to like waking up and rubbing my eyes because like I have sleep in my eyes or like the little crusties and like, you know, your, your skin's dry, you got to wash your face. And dude, I use my, I, I turned the tap on, but I had a hoof and then I looked in the mirror and I was like, bah, and I was like, holy shit, dude, I'm fucking, I am a goat. <laughs> But it's okay though, after a enough plastic surgery, it's just like, we were able to get hands back and everything. I'll never be the same as I was though. I don't know what happened. I, like, I had such a deep sleep that they must have been able to do the, uh, the ritual really quickly. <laughs> you had an MCR phase once, but you realized that you enjoyed music more or stopped listening to them? Uh, <laughs> whoa, that's pretty edgy, dude. So you're saying MCR is not even music? Damn. That's, that's pretty, that's, that's like saying like Nirvana is not music. Wow. Although a lot of people do say that. Or some people say Kurt Cobain wasn't a good singer. Then again, I mean, there's some people that sing w w what I would say is objectively correct with certain types of musical ideas. And yet he was like a huge artist. You've been to many Rush concerts, even got uh, to go to the last one in LA. That's amazing, dude. I would still go to see them now, um, whoever they have filling in or touring with them. I know they play with Danny Carey a little bit as well. All right, we got Dirty Dishwater. Oh boy, let's see what it is. That is Dirty Dishwater. It was very soapy. Okay, we got the key to the seal so we can just run through here and do the shortcut now. I think that dying was quicker there, even though it looked like it was bad. Like, if I was really smart about this, unless I wanted to get items from the chest that's uh, holding the ember, or even, sorry, just get the large ember because it should still be there. Um, I would have probably just died anyways, just to go back. Because now I can just run and jump off that first ledge. Can we get a ba? Ba! I can do dolphin sounds way easier. Or like, or wait, wait, let me see. Yo, bro. Wait. Uh, radical, bro. <laughs> I used to be able to do it way better. Ooh. I could actually make like the dolphin sound with my regular voice. <laughs> I've done it in some of the video, like in some of the runs. Like there's been times where I made the dolphin sound one time. I was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Am I the dolphin of Dark Souls? Uh, I would hope not, because dolphins are a little sketchy, man. Like, they're pretty intelligent, but they're kind of sketchy. I don't really like dolphins that much. I think uh, I'd rather be a turtle. Or maybe... Like, maybe a great blue whale or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. Talking about it earlier. Uh, Toucan. Billy the Goat, no way. So like, okay, wait, wait, wait. What's what's the goat? Wait, did Toucan say something else? No way. Is that Skeleton Stranded? Okay, wait, I'm not following what the conversation is there. Dolphins and zebras do crazy things. I've never seen a zebra do anything crazy, but I also have no interest in zebras. I look at them as just alternate color schemes of donkeys. I don't know if that's true. That That's what it looks like to me. So I kind of just leave it at that and I've never really thought about zebras at all other than just, yeah, stripes on a donkey or something like that, some sort of mule. We got gold tracer, that is really good. But I don't have the stats. Zebras trample their kids, oh my God. Well, it's better than eating well, no, you wouldn't want to eat the kids. Isn't it the... 
that the Black Widow that eats the father? There's a lot. There's animals that like kill the uh, the significant other, or whatever it is, or their their mate, and then the children don't die. But then there's also ones where the both the parents live, and the children just get like such a difficult start to their life that they just die immediately if they don't do something right away. <laughs> That's like if we were all just dropped into this game immediately, like when we were, when we were babies, or like a like a Hunger Games kind of situation. It's like okay. Jimmy is zero years old. We got a plasma rifle. We got like three sticky grenades. Uh, you got a sword and you got like two health bars and an extra heal and that's it. Good luck. And that's like, what does that guy get? He's like, oh, he gets a machine gun, a rocket launcher, uh, 10 infantry units that he can use as well. It's like, but why don't I get that? It's, it's all randomized, you know? It's, but why? It's because life. Most insects? Yeah, a lot of insects are very savage. But then again, for them, that's not... It's not looked at the same. They obviously don't operate the same way. And then think of... Okay, this is the craziest thing, too. Think of this as a realization here. Uh, on the side note that Calamite is in the abyss, and I was completely wrong, and now I actually am scared. <laughs> but think of this. The spider eats, um, you know, the, the, ma the mate or whatever. But then it... It eats the things in your house that you don't want that are pesky, right? So it keeps your house clean. So in the hierarchy, it's like to a human, that's helpful. But then on its own level, it's just savage. So it's really interesting how the context of that works. Dude, he's invisible. What? What is the... Yo, okay, this is actually completely rigged, man. I don't know what's going on here. We're fighting an invisible enemy. I don't like this. Oh, he killed the other guy. I don't know if he has a hitbox. <laughs> I don't I don't know. What's this thing? I I'm literally using an item randomizer, an enemy randomizer from like years ago. I don't actually know how this is happening. I've never seen this before. So, okay, there's this might be the difficulty setting, but there's something going on where, like, the regular kings are the gargoyles. But who who is the thing that's breathing the fire? Like, if we just chill, this thing's gonna kill the gargoyles for us, probably. Yeah. But then see how the bar is going down, it's orange, it's not it's not yellow. It's a different color. What does that even mean? <laughs> He's cheating. Yeah, this is definitely not regulation. What the hell's going on in this little puddle over here? Oh shit. He's fly Dude, he, he can fly! Cool boss, I am scared right now. I need to actually go and ask some people if they've seen this before. Like, we can definitely beat it, but why why is there a thing that's doing the Calamite attacks that's invisible? Oh, you know what's happening? Okay, so when he's hitting him and it's doing like the orange, that's like if I hit the enemy after he's already dead. But it's happening immediately. What? What? <laughs> this is horrifying. <laughs> the, 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 spooky, the spooky thing is like, what's this? Oh no, oh no. Okay. <laughs> like, what's the little thing in the, on the ground? Fox, it's okay, we got the juice card, man. <laughs> We have access to everything because we got the juice card. If anyone doesn't know what the juice card story is, please ask and I will tell. Because I know not like there there should be plenty of people that know what that story is now. But if you don't, then yeah, you're in for an interesting story. Oh, that was weird. What's the juice story? So Fox and I were in Vegas for TwitchCon, uh, and we were carpooling. 
and we, we were just hanging out essentially i wouldn't even say carpooling but like he was the he was uh, in the car i was in the car we were trying to find a parking spot and we already parked in this parking lot before the day before so we know we can park here we know it's made for people that are going to the convention that have passes the guy that's guarding it says oh you can't go in we're like why and he was distracted at the time he was like trying to trying to spit some game on two moms that looked like at the same time or something and he was distracted with the ladies but we're just like okay so are we gonna go and like go somewhere else are you telling us like it's full because i could see spots he's like yeah go to the bronze parking lot that one was full and you had to pay for it which is stupid we go into a loop around the whole city go back and then we're like okay we really need to get in this parking lot it's like 20 minutes later now we've been wasting so much time we're almost late for uh, it was Kay witty's panel he was speaking on uh, the main stage and we really wanted to see his panel live. So we're watching it on the phone. We're listening to it in the car like a podcast where we're trying to rush to it. And this guy's just like, wait a second, because he can see like the, the lanyard and he can see the badge now because he's a little bit closer, I guess. And he's just like, damn, baby. He's like, you didn't tell me you had the juice card. He's like, step right in. He's like, I didn't know it was like that. And then he just like pulls the tape and fucking lets us in. <laughs> but he was like so hysterical about it that... I swear to God, if I filmed it, like it would be a easy, like multi-million view video, like a short video right now on YouTube. It would be such a funny video if I had the dash cam go or like my GoPro or something. He rolled the red carpet out as soon as he saw the thing. He treated us so different. And I was like, that's that's weird. And then we just ran we ran to the thing as quick as we could. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the mullet. It was the shadow. You're so ashamed. Please don't Chuck Norris you. I don't have Chuck Norris abilities. You're good. Also, I don't really get a I don't get a like offended or upset when people say something looks good or bad or it looks like this is this way or that way. It's just your perspective or your, your opinion, right? Like you could even say like, even if I didn't have a mullet, you'd be like, yo, your hair's shitty. And I'd be like, okay, why? And then if you didn't have a good reason, I'd be like, ha, ha, you suck. And then we could go past that point. But you don't even have to have a good reason. You could still think that, right? <laughs> I probably wouldn't say any of that. I would just be like, sure. Um, but yeah, like even for me, like I said, I used to be kind of more like keeping it really short and stuff like that. That was what I preferred for a while. And then I was like, why not just do the opposite and see how it is? Like sometimes it's good to do exactly what you wouldn't normally do and just see what happens. So, okay, we got Sanctuary Guardian now. And that is literally two for four. So this will be three for four if we beat him. And then we can do Gwyn after Seath. And that means that I might beat this before I go to bed. It is very possible. You look younger? Really? That's interesting. I've been told the opposite? Well, I guess... Okay, no, no, sorry. I've been told the opposite for facial hair. How long do you think you'll be alive, Batwell? I have no idea. Um, so I've done tests for um, blood work and for other stuff in the body and my epigenetic age is 24 at the moment apparently it was 23 when i checked so i'm guessing 24 ish now but like that i don't know how relevant that is there is someone you can go to where they can check the structures in your blood um there's like um part there's like particles where they have like these chains these links there's a there's a thing you can um watch with a guy that's an expert that explains how it looks but there's a structure and you can actually um, tell somebody when they're gonna die based on how the structure is and it's pretty accurate within a certain range because what it's doing is it's showing you the the presumption of how your bio, biomarkers are interacting currently with where you're projected to go. So like, if currently you have bad biomarkers, you're gonna live less time. If you do really good things in a year, you could change that and live an extra five years. It's possible, right? So it's very dynamic, so I don't, I don't know. I could literally do things that will kill me in like five years from now, or I could do things that would make me live an extra five years from what I was already going to right this second from how I live. So it's all dynamic. It depends on how you balance everything out. But a huge factor, I think, is like the way your mind works, too. The will to live, um, you know, strong mind obviously helps reinforce it. But you also want to be physically strong because as you do that, there's a lot of benefits with joints. Your bones become stronger because they need to be able to be stronger for your muscles. Uh, so when your muscles pull your bones like uh, harder, the bones do become more fortified. Uh, when the joints become strengthened from the ligaments, having proper stimulation and recovery, and also those muscle bellies being stronger, you'll be able to have less joint problems. And then when it comes to obviously just being kind of reasonable with how extreme your activities are in your life and how risky they are, obviously you can have less injuries and therefore um, less repetitive strain on certain things. 
So I think of all that stuff a little bit, but like, am I going to try to avoid everything and not have fun just because I know certain protocols that could be better? Probably not, no. But I do love the idea of, um, I love epigenetics. I love the idea, like the studies of just um, like cells in the body, the way that the, the body works as a system or an ecosystem, I guess. And then especially like the brain and the mind and all that. But if I had to guess, like, I, I don't know, and I don't really care, because um, paying attention to that and focusing on that doesn't really mean anything, right? It's kind of like, it's it's only something that almost matters in a different context, where it's like, okay, how much are you enjoying your experience? It's like, uh, uh, maybe I'm not. It's like, okay, well then, what can you do to enjoy your experience and have it be more fulfilling or be more holistic to you? So you can do certain things. And if you're doing those things, then it might not matter because that's all you can do. But if you're not doing that, maybe then you care more about when you're gonna die because you're still waiting to have a more holistic experience, right? What's the worst bean you've eaten so far? <sighs> Double rotten eggs and stinky socks are up there. <laughs> They're both up there. Like dishwater is not as bad because it's just soapy. Um, the liver and onions was really strong when I had two of those as well, but the double eggs was worse by far. Boogers wasn't too bad. Toothpaste is actually good. So yeah, it, and then the band-aid is really, really bad too. I think if... Did I have two band-aids? I'm trying to think. Yeah, they were both band-aids when I was going to Bed of Chaos, so... It's pretty close between the band-aids and the rotten eggs as well. I think the rotten eggs were worse though. <laughs> So interesting, you've never seen someone look older without facial hair? Yeah, that's kind of how it would work, but it also depends on a few other things too, like obviously your skin quality, um, like wrinkles and stuff like that. So, like I do a little bit to actually mitigate that. I haven't always, but I do prioritize just things that preserve that. And I also don't do things that other people might do that think it helps that, but it actually makes it dependent on those products and then it can actually cause more damage. So I do a little bit more research with what's natural, what, how certain things maybe react. Even experimentation, like sometimes, uh, for example, I have a vitamin E, macadamia oil, hy hyaluronic acid compound for moisturization that I don't use all the time now because it does actually react with my skin a little bit more in a way that can inflame certain parts at a certain amount of it. So I'll use less and I'll do, I'll do it less often. And um, like with the right level of hydration and other things, sleep and everything and you know obviously diet you can get hydration levels that are comparable without doing anything but for wrinkles and stuff like that are extra little benefits yeah there's some things that can help i truly think though if someone had like a balanced approach to you know like maximizing those things they could use no product off the shelf for anything in general other than just eating food and like living and being in certain environments like ex like environmentally and you would literally be fine there's nothing you actually need I don't even think you would need shampoo or conditioner or like, I'm trying to think like, you wouldn't really need anything at all. Some of them are more so like just as a kind of a, I'm trying to think like it's a formality in terms of other people. So obviously you want to smell nice in some ways, but the cost to smell nice could actually be toxic. Same thing with clothes, like some clothes have plastics in them at a higher rate, so that could be more toxic, but it, it's like negligible if you're balancing things. Uh, but there is a measurable effect of a lot of stuff for sure. And uh, you, it's scary when you look into it, but if you really have interest in it, it's interesting as well. Because um, it's just the cost of efficiency and, and industrialization, mass production, you know, affordability in some cases. Like if people decide to actually buy that stuff or they know that and they still just buy it. Like, like me, I buy things I still know that are bad sometimes. Look great, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Is that how you say your name? Is it Burwa? Burwa? What does a band-aid taste like? It tastes like an, a medical bandage of some sort. Like um, if you have ever used the um, like a tensor bandage or something like one of those stretchy medical wraps, it smells like it or it tastes like the smell of the fabric and maybe like a little bit of the like if there's adhesive or something I don't even know it's hard to explain it tastes like a band-aid legit but a little bit stronger than like a the small band-aid 
smells like it's like the smell of medical stuff and then it has a metallic taste and it also tastes like something rotting at the same time that was the the best description i can give okay we're gonna do something crazy here we're gonna put on the heaviest armor we can before we drop in and i'm gonna do an a dishonorable strategy i'm gonna do the first playthrough i don't have anything to lose and it doesn't matter how it looks but we're gonna win And I think I have enough poise for it, too. 0.5k. Let's see. Oh, we're fat rolling, too. Oh, but mid-roll if I don't have the helmet. Nice. Okay, hopefully this is over 50 poise or whatever you need. Have you heard of the no-poo movement? That sounds scary. I don't know why that would be a, a movement. Also, interesting topic. <laughs> Oop, rip. That's hard, man. That's really rough. All right, the only other thing I can think of, we can go back and try to get the near 70,000 souls, or I could just go to uh, Seath specifically. And see what's over there. I think we have a higher chance if we're gonna complete this in a reasonable time frame to go to Anor Orlando and do Seath. And then Gwyn, I feel whatever is in place of Gwyn will be fine. I'm trying to think like what what is something that you could imagine would be a roadblock for the rest of this other than Sanctuary Guardian if you guys had to decide on something terrible. Oh also dude we can use uh, favor and protection because we've already done the Abyss so then that allows me to actually Fast roll with some armor. Should we we should start a pyramid scheme? <laughs> Alright, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow some money from you, Aura, like at least like a small loan of a million dollars, and then I'm gonna ask someone else to also double that initial investment. I'm going to take it from both you guys, and then I'm going to give you guys both back half of what you have with the promise that if you put it into the right cryptocurrency, you're going to get three times your return, and then I'm going to disappear into the Bahamas. But just know that it's going to work. <laughs> and that's the pyramid scheme. It's a three-person. It's a three person. It's a three-prong approach. I like to call it uh, one in, two out, meaning that uh, I have the money <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Is sensitive skin even a real thing? Yeah, of course, but like in the context of how does it become sensitive, that's what you'd have to look at, right? So pigmentation, melanin content, obviously like um, predisposed, like uh, like we were talking about anatomy built for different types of uh, climates and stuff like that. There are some things that are hard set based on your genetics, but then when it comes to sensitivity to certain things, like it can be exacerbated based on a lot of different things. Depends. Like, there's, there's, you can make yourself have certain problems, but then think the problem was from something that you didn't pinpoint such as that thing, and then think that that thing's helping the problem, but it's actually, it's allowing the problem to exist. And then it kind of, sort of solves it a little bit, and we're, it's like the, um, the dry, or, what's it called, the dandruff shampoo, in some cases? Like, it can actually just make your head dry. And yeah, of course, like, I understand it says dockers, uh, people recommend it, but like, just because people recommend it doesn't mean for you that it would make it easier for you to have a, you know, a more moisturized scalp because of that product. It, it's just like a dependence thing. And th there's different tests you can do. I mean, I watched the thing that was really interesting. Some guy did his own experiment where he used to use that kind of stuff too. Um, but with, I guess, his um, profile where his, his head wasn't dry by default, um, that much, but it seemed like it was because he had to give it three weeks or whatever the amount of time after using those things to kind of get it back. And the temperature of the water mattered too, so you're saying cold water was better. And then it fixed itself, but it took a little bit, you know? Uh, nice setup, Bun. I appreciate it, man. I'm so excited to show you guys the full setup. Like, I'm going to do something where you'll be able to see the whole thing. I'm going to probably have to use the GoPro. Which I'm actually kind of debating using as the face cam now because it's way higher quality than this camera and I have it set up so I can use it as a camera. The problem is it has a delay so I have to sync it with the mic. And also the game just froze there. It had been a while but apparently Miyazaki does not want me to beat this.
it's weird you say but she gets along well was worried at first it doesn't sweat so that would be like pores right like your pores are closed or is it sweat gland related it'd probably be the, the yeah the glands most likely that's an interesting thing like those things are really really weird but also kind of cool because it's like why does that happen is a crash considered a death no just because like Unless I was being attacked by an enemy and I was about to die, then I would probably count it as a death because we could say there's a high chance I would have died there, but there was nothing that was going to kill me there. Like, even this guy, I probably could parry him and kill him pretty quick. But I will, I will eat one if our health is low and it crashes. There's about to be an attack. What? <laughs> what? I forgot about that. <laughs> oh no, let's run away. Oh, he was waiting for so long. Boink. This is a really cool attack. That's how you'd probably kill somebody if you didn't know how to use the knife properly. Like, well, I've only seen horror movies. It, it reminds me, actually, there's a clip that's really funny. If you like Halloween specifically, um, it's Michael Myers at the gym, and he's he's practicing his his uh, <laughs> his hack and slash technique on the cable machine with a machete that's attached to the cable or something like that. He's just like chopping away. <laughs> it's so funny. It's probably my favorite clip of just anything related to fitness, and it's also cool too because he like walks around and just stares at people. And then they, they don't know what to do. They're just like, uh, can I help you? And then even when people are like, yo, high five, he doesn't high five them. Jelly bean on seat death. Oh yeah, wait, did I not? Oh, okay, wait, I gotta do two now? Or, no, I gotta do one. We got liver and onions. There is one left. I probably have 20 jelly beans, 25 jelly beans left. <laughs> Ooh. Dude, that's so potent. Oh, wow. Yeah, liver, okay, yo, liver and onions is actually really bad, dude. I don't like liver and onions at all, and I love, I well, in real life, Liver does not bother me, and I love onions. I don't know why it's so strong. And I hope it doesn't crash every single time here either. That's kind of concerning that it did twice. Like, I can't believe it was the same spot. Dude. Yo, Fox, you have no idea. Like, you don't even know the half of it because it, st it sticks in your teeth. Like, if you've done this before, then okay, you completely understand. But if you haven't had them, they stick in your teeth. And it's kind of like you have like an air freshener in your mouth, but it's disgusting. <laughs> it's like you've chewed gum and you have that fresh, minty breath of liver and onion. <laughs> you're terrified it'll scar you? Uh, for a little bit. Especially if you're very sensitive to flavors and like maybe aromas would be the same thing. Like there's people I know right now, if I gave them one of these and I didn't tell them what it is and they ate it, that reaction would be priceless. That would be one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> and I'm, I, I would, if if I wasn't going to eat all of them right at the end, whatever's left over, or during the course of this, then I probably would do that. And I would do it with the case saying that everyone gets their one, and whatever my one is from you, you can do it to me, and I'm going to laugh. As long as it's not like pushing me off of a, I don't know, like a staircase or something. <laughs> but I would do it with the expectation that they could screw with me one time. Probably both. It's remarkable. She rarely goes uh, bathroom two drinks like a. Oh, okay. So like, it's a. There's a bladder related thing. Almost amazed. Okay, that's crazy. Like that's that's like a camp. Like, you're literally like a camel. You can like save people. Like if if she could purify the water, if she had a water purifier inside of her, she could literally carry civilization, man. We could clone the DNA and we could make like a bunch of uh, backup sources for water. 
You think you enter the boss arena on the wrong time and he was busy with busy with the maiden, that's why he's so mad. For Seath, I think that I entered the boss fight. Either that's the case, or Seath literally spent his entire time after killing all of the dragons, realizing that he has no one to play with, and he's like a little kid, and he's just really mad. And instead of throwing toys, he throws crystals at you. Because that's what he plays with. Big, Big Hat Logan didn't go to Toys R Us. Oh my god. He only studied crystal magic, so all he has to play with is crystals. And yes, I am quitting out there. If someone wants to call me out for it, I'm pointing at you, whatever your name is. I'm going to refer back to it in the future. If I'm going to check the comments, and I'll refer back to it. You can even timestamp the exact moment. No one, no one saw quit out. It didn't happen. <laughs> Maidenless behavior. There's an account for Elden Ring, like speaking of the Maidenless thing, where it, it's called the tarnished guy that does stuff or whatever, or just a tarnished guy, something like that. And it's basically a scenario of the tarnished from Elden Ring in a, like everyday situation, pretty much every single day that they post. And I, I've never really followed anybody on Twitter after like removing all my social media stuff, but I saw it recommended and I was like, this is the smartest idea ever. It's like, he just randomly says something that's not real based on the character that seems relatable to the character. And it, it had like over a million people that were just like every day trying to see what he would say just to laugh probably. <laughs> but it, it's like completely harmless. It's probably like probably the, the brighter side of Twitter content in my opinion. But, yeah, I think it's just uh, some tarnished guy or something like that. What's a quit out? It's, uh, it's where you you go through Duke's archives perfectly without actually exiting the game in one seamless, constant series of frames. And the title screen never is seen again until you play the game for the first time. Also, Darren, dude, how are you doing, man? You made it to the first Dark Souls stream back after the very non-typical music stream yesterday. Why does your Hollow Thief get to... Why does he pull you out of the animation? I think they do that because when you're in their area, there's doors you can open, and they're supposed to actually stop you from opening the doors. And I don't know how, but it carries over. So they have something to override iframes for the door, and then I guess levers are counted the same. It's called X now. Dude, you know what's actually funny? I don't know if I'll ever be able to call Twitter X. Like, I have the app, obviously, because I post when I go live and stuff, but... Dude, I don't know if I could call it X. I don't associate it with that. I can see it every single time I open it, and I'm just like, yeah, that's Twitter. <laughs> it's probably because, like, for Twitter, for me, like, I... I may, maybe it's a generational thing. Like, maybe the younger generation can... If they are into the Twitter platform or whatever X is or whatever. They can say it's not that identified with the bird and the blue and the Twitter name. Caught the tail end of the drum stream yesterday. That's awesome, dude. I'm really happy you uh, you were there for some of that. That was the, the best day I had playing Clone Heroes so far. There's a lot of PBs. And um, like what I'm hoping to do with those videos from yesterday is put them on the second channel as well. Because what I realize, a lot of people upload 99% runs with just very small amounts of notes missed. So... It'll be basically a glimpse into the stuff I can put more effort into and play on the actual kit after. And then there'll be like an actual trackable amount of progress there, and I can make a little video on that too. Because I'd like more people to actually pick up Clone Hero and, and... Like, if you get an electronic drum set that's super cheap secondhand, like, you can definitely use that to learn a little bit of stuff. Like, I, I literally have even seen people that never played a regular kit in general try my stuff here, and they've learned how to do basic stuff. And it's been interesting. Especially if they've tried it more than once. Only Elon bros call it X, no common person calls it X. Everyone says Twitter. Exactly, yeah. It's in, I think he knew that. He's He probably depended on people still calling it Twitter. Or, it, it, or not even dependent, but it was like it didn't matter, right? It wasn't dependent on being called X. But the X name change was necessary. Does it feel like the real thing? Uh, so, again, the only difference is that when I'm on my actual kit... 
Well, again, I can't say actual kit. Like, what I'm playing for Clone Hero is an actual kit. That's the problem. Uh, the only difference when I say actual is that I have a, um, a splash. I have a second crash, and then I have the hi-hat open close pedal. Um, and then every drum head is bigger. Like, they're full size, right? So, and I have an extra floor. Sorry, I have two floor toms, a mid and a high as well. So there's one extra tom. So I'm mainly playing, uh, I have the ability to use, uh, instead of one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven different things, plus the, well, eight, including bass. It's, uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six extra things. Or no, wait. <laughs> five, five, ten. It's eleven different things instead of seven. It's four extra things. Or no, set, sorry, no. Twelve things because the foot the foot for the open closes would be the twelfth, I believe. But yeah, literally exact the same. Like if you look at a jazz kit, it's literally what that kit is without the uh, high tom, it's usually just like the mid one, the mid tuned or the bigger one, even a repurposed floor tom sometimes or two of them. And it's like a triangle formation and then they don't even have a double bass. So like they're missing a, a basic jazz kits, missing most of the stuff I even have on that basic one right there, other than the open close hi hat. So you can build kits with just literally hats, crash, snare, not even toms. If you, if you don't want them, you could have like a street kit for performance or something like that. You could have so many different formations. You could go like full on octagon where you're in like a freaking circle and you have to have octopus arms <laughs> spin around on the chair um, I've seen people build uh, like electronic pieces into an acoustic set for samples on triggers and then not have triggers on the other things but have them mic'd which is like a combo and then I've seen pure triggers on acoustic with the same orientation of how they would work through this other than just acoustic heads so it's it's legitimately the same um, the hardest thing will be that if you're playing something really complicated the timing on your left foot to open close the hi-hat's not the same as hitting a bass note because you have to um, push the thing to get it to do a movement that's not immediate. It has some travel to it, so you have to calculate the timing differently on that. Unless you do like very, very moderate, like depending on the setting for it, if you do it a very moderate way. But for me, if I have it like a big gap open close, then I do have to like consciously put a bit more effort into that. Drum stream was a good time. I'm glad. I'm glad I did it because it was it was a plan in the works, but I'm like, you know what? Like I was gonna do it a certain way that would have been kinda cool, but it wouldn't Let's have been nearly as cool as how it ended up happening. And it took a mended. bit more time, but I'm glad that so I did it properly. Might be Instead of just like well, the please back will take half the, the effort. Only thing I can say now is every single video that's on that channel, when that music channel launches on Sunday, is not nearly where I'm at now. Like, I'm much... I could redo those covers almost perfectly now. Like, 100%. But that's just because I didn't practice them enough right before to get it at that level. With the intention that it didn't need to be like that. Is this game any good? Should you buy it? Yes. <laughs> Definitely get it, but when you get to uh, seat the scaleless, don't be like me. Um, don't randomize the game. Just randomize the game for everything else. That's my recommendation. You get a really cool ring that's called uh, Ring of Miyazaki when you beat it if you randomize everything except receive, and it lets you backflip, and you can also jump onto buildings. Oh, wait, what am I even doing, dude? Uh, let me break this. <laughs> and also, Purple Senpai, thank you so much for the, the one-year streak in 47 months as well. I appreciate that. Corporate VTubers have to call it X depending on the corporation. Oh, yeah? How much practice do you put into learning the songs you played on stream before streaming it last night? Some of them I've only played two times. Like, it was literally the second time I ever played them. And then some of them I played ten times, some of them I played twenty times. The highest amount of repetitions of one song I've played couldn't be more than maybe, I want to say, between 20 and 30 would be like the highest, but that might be an over-exaggeration. Um, that's why I wish there was a number, there's like there's a count on it. Okay, I might have to actually be hit on purpose to figure this out. He's right there. 
and then this weapon again, it's not got the best reach. I do have stuff with good reach, but it's kind of weak. Also, don't really want to run back. Oh, that's... Ugh. Maybe Demon Spear? I can try it. Slave this, uh, the song you played last night. Which one was it that you were seeing? Because, like, you probably popped in when I was trying that... F the If it was the final difficult one, I was so fatigued, dude. <laughs> like, there's so many things that uh, are like that where you do them really well consistently and you could easily just screw it up just because of how tired you are, so it looks like you're way worse. And then there's that carryover where, um, I was saying for like different genres and techniques, some people can be really good and you'd be like, oh yeah, they can, they're the best. But it's like, are they actually the best at everything though? So when I use claims like that, I only cite musicians as being like some of the best if they can do pretty much everything. That's about it. And also not only just everything in terms of like genres, but their musical ideas are more musical than most music and also their technicality is the most technical as well. And their innovation actually has done new things that haven't been done. So that's, or, you know, maybe not haven't been done, but are packaged in a way that they haven't packaged them. Like, I'm pretty critical on that. I know a lot of people loosely will just say, yo, best, best, uh, let me, let me think of, like, an example. Um, trying to, what's a good one? Mm, it could be, like, guitar players. We could say, hmm. It's hard because, like, I actually, I have a list of, like, the, the, the better ones, and I think it's pretty accurate. I'm trying to think of, like, one that people have always said is really good, but they don't have, they have a, you know, pretty limited amount of stuff that they can demonstrate that we've seen. Uh, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix is a great example, actually. Jimi Hendrix is amazing as a musician. He's a great guitar player. But is he the best guitar player of all time, like some people say? I think he can be the most enjoyable, but... Is it, it, that's kind of subjective then, right? So, um, I think that's like rose-tinted glasses with a little bit of... Um, a little bit of nostalgia. And also, um, the effect of time itself, like the information doubling and people just having more access to things. But I can say that, and I, I love Jimi Hendrix's experience, right? I, even even like all the parts of it, not just him, right? So the whole the whole project is amazing. Carlos Santana is more enjoyable than Jimi Hendrix. Carlos Santana is another great example. But then you could be like, okay, but Carlos Santana versus John Petrucci. But then you could be like, oh, but John Petrucci versus uh, Ingve, or Ingve and John Petrucci versus uh, Alan Holdsworth, or Alan Holdsworth versus uh, let me think of like a person. Like, there could be specialties. Uh, there's a guy that's really good at Legato. Like, specifically one of the best I've ever seen. I'm trying to remember what his name is. But you probably wouldn't have heard of him before. Oh, Tom Quayle. Tom Quayle. You could be like, Tom Quayle is, like, the best Legato player. But can Tom Quayle play Legato of a different genre? Or even, like, Staccato, the same level as his Legato? There's tons of different weird stuff. Steve Vai. Steve Vai is really good. And I think Steve Vai could do a lot of stuff, but it's hard to say, though. It's really hard to say, because he's hyper-focused on certain stuff. It's, like, pretty hard to not be hyper-focused on one thing and combine things into something that's still even crazier in every point, every corner, every turn, than those individual things. Bill Frizzle. <sighs> Name is not ringing a bell. Um, Guthrie Govan would be a great example too. Guthrie Govan is a, is an example. Guthrie Govan, Buckethead, again like Tim Henson, people like that. I, even though he's more modern, um, and a few others, like they can do a lot of different stuff. Like, and they've demonstrated it in a way that's hard to say. It's you know, it's not true, right? Rage Against the Machine live. Yeah, Tom Morello. Like people will say, oh yo, like he's. He is a, a legendary guitar player, but he even said himself he's more of someone that likes to just make crazy sounds than actually the music side of it, if that makes sense. And I, maybe those aren't the exact words. Naked City, I'm not familiar. I, I might have heard their music, but then I can't reference the name. You can recommend uh, like a song from them though. You could definitely send me one. 
Ichika Nido is a great example too, for sure. And Ichika Nido does try to do different things so, so often because of the the YouTube and all that that I've seen him like do things that I you wouldn't think that he could do, or like that anyone would be thinking of. Like when he picks up, uh, I don't even know what the name of it is, but he got this like synth guitar thing, and he was shredding the synth guitar, but like tastefully though, you know. <laughs> Armor of Thorns for this. That probably would be a smart idea. Uh, I'm just, right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make myself fast roll again and then just be very careful. I basically just have to see her attack. Here we go. And then we should be able to do that once in a while. Here we go. Dude, where are you? Yo. Oh, she's probably moving as she's doing it. There we go. Ah, oh, that sucks. That's a lot of humanities. Yeah, so with Rage Against the Machine Live, by the way, um, they haven't toured for a while, haven't they? Like, they, they didn't officially say they weren't touring again, as far as I know. It's scary every time I get hit, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Because, like, the bleed. Yep. <sighs> what do we do here? Okay, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to actually see if maybe we can stagger her with this dagger, because then she'll become visible again. I just wasn't sure if I'd be able to hit her that many times, but we'll try it, and we'll just risk it and see. That's not good. I was circling. Do we have anything else like a Firekeeper still? I don't want to use one, but... <sighs> DJ Khaled is the best guitar player. I've seen him play. <laughs> that was funny. Lil Wayne as well. Lil Wayne, I believe he probably could do some stuff. You know who's actually like a really good musician that doesn't... Like, it's, it might be obvious to people that are fans, but if you... You heard their music you wouldn't associate. Post Malone is like a great singer and guitar player. And probably the other instruments too. Justin Bieber as well. They're both like sleeper builds when it comes to music. Because what they got famous for was not just what they can offer. And it's actually funny because everyone that makes fun of the music they do do, they do the exact opposite as well very well. Which is just probably what other people like that make fun of. So... Um, I think with Justin Bieber, like it's he's demonstrated ability on almost everything. Like I think he can play everything. Mario Duplantier was awesome live. Oh, dude, hit, like so. I just got into Gojira. <laughs> I'm super late to the bus on that. I thought I had had an idea of what they sounded like. Listen to their music. I think it was literally yesterday. And I was like, dude, I've literally, I don't have a recollection of hearing this before. And I started downloading it. And I think, yeah, we played one of their songs, too. And it was ridiculous. <laughs> it was it was scary because it came out of nowhere. <laughs> I thought it was a slow song. Post Malone tried out for Crown the Empire. You know, it's actually hilarious, dude. The only band that I, or the only, like, show that I paid to go see, because I've seen a lot of free music before. Um, Actually, no, sorry. I went to go see an artist recently that had a band, but she's a singer. But before that, like, you know, like the metal scene, those kind of bands, I only really paid to go to one big show. A lot of them were free. And the one that I paid to go see was, I think it was them as well. And also, or was it Capture? It was either Crown the Empire or Capture the Crown. One of the two. Yeah, it just reminded me of that. I, I think it, I don't know if it, it might have been them. I got to like listen and see. Post Malone seems like a nice guy. He apparently is very nice. Which I think would take a lot being that famous because even like celebrities that seem pretty chill, like, you know, it, like of all sorts, you get like a lot of hassle and a lot of questions too. And some people don't even like being asked questions or having to talk to random people. 
when they're doing things. So, like, taking that uh, duty on of, like, playing that role, you have to already know that you're going to have a lot of your time compromised by other people's interest in the fandom, and you're not going to feel like a human sometimes, which is going to probably make you want to be more treated, like, treated more normally or worse, unless you have a complex of narcissism of some sort. So you'd rather be more invisible, and then that makes you snappier at people, which makes people think you're an asshole, but it's, like, it's hard to see how much... Uh, it, it's just like the wear and tear of people just following you around with cameras asking you questions. Dude, we got Artorius in here. <laughs> ah! Dude, he jumped the other- what? He opened the abyss. It was pointy. It wasn't even round. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, okay, we, we can still try Priscilla. I just don't know if this would be making sense. Dead Mouse is humble. I don't really know much about Dead Mouse, but I like I really like his uh collab with uh his Greta Van Back Back or something like that. I forget the the last name. I really want to do something with that song. You like the stuff from Gojira? Dude, I love Gojira. It's it's cool. And also, um, when I did the research on them, I didn't notice the guy that plays guitar sings too, so they have a lot of instrumentals, but it's kind of like Metallica. Anybody that has a frontman that plays guitar and sings is just, that's just ridiculous. I can't even imagine that. Especially with more complicated music. Uh, I guess Trivia, Matt Heafy would probably be the prime example because he sings really well and screams and plays melodic music. That is also pretty up tempo. And does it and like performs. He's a good performer and speaker too. So like that's a, he's a pretty crazy guy. Must love mono. Matt is a master of his craft for sure. Yeah, dude, it's been a, like a literal trip to be able to be on this platform for the reason that I've been able to literally, like I could host his channel. Like I could bring you guys to him, introduce you to him if you don't know him, or just give him support on what he does and like almost see eye to eye on a similar level, even though he's like just iconic in a lot of ways. Same with, uh, you know, Matt Gartska, same with who else did we raid that was a musician that was pretty cool? Um, Herman Lee from Dragon Force, dude, was so fucking cool, dude. That guy is, like, a perfect example of someone that's just ridiculously famous. And, like, he has the right to actually be a little bit more arrogant, but he, he doesn't. He's just, like, way too cool. And, dude, the guy fell over while he was playing a guitar solo. He tripped on something while we, we hosted him and fell. And then, like, did, like, a back roll and kept playing at the same time. And there's someone that I know that said they saw him at, like, a... A thing where he was playing in a pool and he played guitar underwater, dude. Like, he's just crazy. <laughs> and he, he always, like, uh, is really open to different, like, ideas for music that's not like his. And jamming with people that are very different. What's going on, Tom? How are you doing? Dude, yo, we were listening to your, uh, your new album before the stream. Listen to Hummingbird, dude. It was sick. Also, if you guys want to listen to Tom's music, highly recommend it. Type in exclamation point Tom in chat. All of his links should be there. He does stream his music live as well. He plays guitar super well. He also, um, I, I took up quite a few lessons with him for guitar, and he actually helped me get better at certain things that I wasn't really, like, comp comprehending as much that he's really good at, like the stuff that he does. Like, he helped me speed that up a lot, so. Yeah. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing good, dude. You you came in in the discussion where we're trying to kill Priscilla and we're talking about uh, the 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 life of being someone that's famous for either like music or other things. And like we mentioned how apparently Post Malone's super nice. Dead Mouse is a nice guy, according to or Mensier. Joe's able to do death metal growl while playing tech death. Yeah, that's insane. I think f there is a band called uh, Flesh God Apocalypse, and I believe the uh, frontman plays like grindcore or something like that, or borderline, and then also he, he like does the, the vocals, and they're really, really aggressive, and I can't imagine that 
I think I think he plays really crazy stuff and also does it. But next, yeah, again, next to Metallica and Trivium, I don't know who else is in that situation. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention, so when we did the uh, Clone Hero stream yesterday, there was someone from the community that had a list of extra stuff that I didn't know about, and they gave me access to all these crazy custom songs that apparently weren't on the list that I have, so I have access to a lot of other stuff now, thanks to them. I don't know if it's publicly accessible either, they were super nice about it, so... Definitely gonna be, like, adding as many things as I can for next time. Famous people are wild until you realize they're like normal people, speaking of. You get to meet Tosin? Dude, that's sick. Did you go to Nam? Were you at the Fishman booth or something like that? Man, this is scary. Like, it's just because the direction. We don't we don't cover a wide radius. What was that? Did she block? Why'd that make that sound? Real blind playthrough, yeah. I could just buy fire bombs if I can find them off a merchant, but we haven't seen any yet. We could just throw them at her. I just have no clue, though. And this is funny, because like this is the last thing we need to do next to... We, I guess we have Sanctuary Guardians still, right? But Those two, and then Gwyn. Three bosses. I think Soul Spear would definitely help this situation, but that would just be so cheap in comparison. It's like almost like I have to just go in here with enough health to just get destroyed, but again, Firekeeper Souls are not there. He was at Fishman the same day you were visiting for a thing. You did not go to Nam this year, got big FOMO. Me, dude, from watching the videos, me too. It always looks so cool. I think I actually will go next year. If I'm in a, a position to like, make sense of it, I definitely will. Oh, dude, we staggered her. Yes. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now we got to keep doing that. I got to get close. Tail cut? Yes. Man, Tom was the, the key, dude. The Fishman brand saved this stream, dude. And... Now I will sponsor the stream with Fishman for free. Accepting no payment. I'm just going to shout them out every day. Until they tell me to stop. <sighs> Priscilla sponsored by Fishman. Check out their new, uh, the new pickups. They're pretty good. Actually, I actually have no idea what the hell they are. <laughs> I have Fishmans in my, uh, my Aristides, actually. They're really good. Check out Naked City, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, dude, Pogo, if you want to send me a link for Naked City directly to my, um, what's it called? Uh, like my inbox, my whispers, or even on the Instagram or the Twitter account or whatever, just send me a link and I'll listen to it. It's a YouTube video or a Spotify playlist. What type of run is this? So it's a run where every time I die, I eat a disgusting jelly bean or, or a good one, depending on what it is. I have to do a spin on this wheel here. And it's going to be one of two flavors for each section, ranging from stinky socks, or it could be fruity. Uh, it could be a Band-Aid, or it could be pomegranate. It could be toasted marshmallow or a stink bug, toothpaste or uh, blueberry, dead fish, or strawberry banana smoothie, stuff like that. And then the game's randomized as well. The enemies are all shuffled around. Um, bosses can replace regular enemies. The difficulty's on unfair setting. Uh, key items are not shuffled. And again, the items just are that are um, consumable weapons, all that non keys randomly switched. There's a 10% chance that a boss can become or replace a regular enemy and then a 100% chance that all bosses are switched. So I don't know if we'll find anything replacing itself. Sometimes you do. I don't think I've seen anything like that yet, though. So now we got to go back and I guess Sanctuary Guardian, why are we trapped here? Dude, did the game glitch? Okay, let me do a quit out. Kool-Aid Jammer Cherry is feeling betrayed right now. <laughs> the fact that you remember that's amazing. 
Like, because I bet you most people in chat don't know what that is. Yeah, man, the game's broken. It doesn't know. So that's really unfortunate because I can't leave unless I run all the way back to the other bonfire. I've never done this run backwards, like, because of a reason like this. I think I've only done part of it. Dude, that rat's zooming. Most bands have a vocalist guitarist. It's hard to fit a member who doesn't play an instrument. The only bands, you know, that have a dedicated vocalist like Lamb of God, Ghosts, Bring You the Horizon. Dedicated vocalist? I, man, most bands I listen to in general have dedicated vocalists. One of my favorite bands, actually, um, I was talking about them yesterday, Volumes, like they, they have two vocalists. They technically, they went from having two vocalists and then one left the band and then the other one left the band and then they had then they got back the original guy that left first and then they had another guy as well oh dude it's not possible to walk back oh no okay wait we soft locked dude that's not good soft locked rip i might have to die that, that that's a possibility because, like, if you die, you respawn at the bonfire, right? Do a cheat warp. That's the thing. I don't have cheats or anything enabled for this game. I've never used cheats on this game. I've only used the challenge table. And I've used um, the randomizers in Daughters of Ash. Oh, wait. I think... Is it lit up? I don't know. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know how I would do that. I know, like, you can get software to do it. But I don't have DSR gadget. I don't have, uh, like, a cheat engine table to make the game do those things. And I don't, I don't even think I've done those in uh, like any kind of thing with automatically warping in any of the games. Even to practice, I just made save files. Oh, that sucks. So that might actually be rip unless I die. Cheat engine and there's a, an available table for DSR. Okay, wait, let's just try to die here and see what happens. Because again, the, the souls don't matter too much. What's going on, rolling? Yeah, we're going until I'm done this. That's the goal. I was pretty adamant on doing it in one day. <laughs> Famous people are wild, you realize I'm like, okay, wait, no. Sorry, you already said that. So, okay, when you met Tosin, how was it, Tom? No, it still doesn't work. How close are you? You have still two hours of work left. I have three bo or two bosses left. I have to kill Sanctuary Guardian in place of Nito, and then we get to go into the kiln. So that's why it's frustrating, because if I warp back now, could definitely win, could, could beat Sanctuary Guardian. Like, is it actually impossible to walk back out of here? Already do DLC. I haven't done DLC. This is just as much as we need to do to beat the game, basically. So I can totally continue this run and do DLC in the future for sure. Or even just do another one with DLC. Use Cheat Engine to make sure weapon ring combinations work for DS3 SL1. I don't think there's anything wrong with like Cheat Engine as an idea. I know even Gino uses it to practice his runs, and I think V-Sweat did for Liza P. Maybe even Dark Souls, I don't know. Like, there's tons of people that use it. I've only used it to actually do the runs that are, require it as, like, a table, if that makes sense. Like, where there's uh, some sort of, like, predetermined mod that's built in it, and you load that. <sighs> like, I'm gonna have to install all that stuff then, just to get out of here. There's a chance... Ah, oh, man. Okay, wait. I have an idea. So if I quit the game completely, we're gonna try two things. I'm gonna quit the game, I'm gonna actually close it completely, open it, see if that fixes it. If it doesn't, I'm gonna take the randomization out of the game and I'm gonna have to re-randomize it for the end. That's the only other option without having to cheat on it. How are the beans? Oh my God, they're so gross, dude. And most of them are gone too. I actually managed to eat most of them just from dying, which means we've died on this run. Like, a crazy amount of times. Maybe online mode would fix it? I don't know. Yeah, there's still nothing there, so... Let's see.
it's it's really really quick to uh unmod it as far as i th remember like hmm wait a second wait is there anything else we can do maybe the actual mod has something we can do here restore default settings so it has a button for that uh and then wait i can copy the seed i think so leave sleep wait, seed leave blank for random See if I can find the, the seed. No, I, I don't think I saved it. Copy enemy placement. Ooh, that's the file right there, okay. Um, any replacement copy. Okay, I'm gonna make a copy of this, and then I'm gonna be just naming it copy. File not found, check the file, what? No, that doesn't do anything. Okay, restore default settings. Revert to normal. Yes. That's enemy randomization. Enemies reverted to normal. And then let's see what happens here. Which shitty beans your favorite? Socks? Oh, the worst one? If we're talking about like the worst flavor? Oh, yes, it worked. Nice. Okay, we didn't have to cheat. Perfect. Okay, so let's go to Human Giants again. And then we will re-randomize. Again, it's going to be different. Fortunately, uh, I don't know if this breaks the game if I randomize while it's running. That might be bad. Does it work? Wait, let's see. I wonder if it just stays the same because we had it open the whole time, but it'd be kind of weird. Dude, it actually, I think it did. I think it worked. Timer as well. Yeah, Stinky Socks is pretty bad. Oh, uh, that guy's the same still, though. Uh, maybe it's just the NPCs that stay the same, because the items. Yeah, okay, so we have to we have to do another seed again for it. That's fine. Randomization completely successfully done. Okay, so it just finished randomizing. I might have to wait and do that all again, because I had the game running. Yeah, Stinky Socks, Liver and Onions, and then the Rotten Egg are really bad. Dude, that's crazy. So now it doesn't work again. Every single time it's randomized, it doesn't work. So I just have to leave this area. We figured it out. Okay, so revert to normal. Yes. Enemies reverted to normal. Quit out. I don't know if this is going to be enough, but it should. It should be okay on the title screen because we've done the tournaments for this and it's fine. Yeah, there we go. That's enough. Warp. Tuma Giants, and then we quit out again on Tuma Giants, and then I revert it to the randomization. So this will be a completely new one. We'll see what it's like. It might be worse, and if it's worse, then uh, you know what? Again, Miyazaki just hates me. <laughs> yeah, dude, liver and onions is so strong, and I love onions. I could eat a white onion. I could probably eat red onion straight, but I could literally eat a white onion just... Legit. Like Hector Zeroni from Holes, dude. When I saw that scene, I was like, that wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> I, I, I did not get off put by Hector Zeroni eating the onions. I thought that was actually really cool. And he probably got a lot of health benefits from that, too. Obviously, your breath smells terrible, so you have to like deal with that, which is hard. But love onions and liver doesn't bother me at all. I think the liver liver's actually really good for you and it you can make it taste great. So I don't see the problem, but then when it's combined in the bean, it's like something about it being a jelly bean. Because they have the sweetness still. And the texture, it's like, ugh. I, it, it reminds me of if you had, like, gum that tasted like cheese, or maybe like a, like a gummy bear that tasted like steak or like chicken or something. That'd be weird. Or like, let's say you put toothpaste on your toothbrush and started brushing your teeth, and it was uh, it was it was like <laughs> barbecue sauce or ketchup or something. That's weird. <laughs> I don't even know where we are anymore. Oh my god! Oh, there we are. Okay, we're good. Oh, the bone meal fell down too. You don't even get a chance to kill me. I'm sorry. Not now. This is the final countdown. We're doing it. <sighs> cheat Engine's a quick install. I have Cheat Engine because I've used Daughters of Ashmod, uh, or 
Was it Daughters of Ash that needed it? It was one of the the overhauls or one of the mod packages for the other games. And also for the dark mod on Dark Souls 3. Because you could change the lighting. And then I've changed the enemy's aggression before with it. It's just called Challenge Table, essentially. So I was thinking maybe that has cheats in it as well. But in terms of just like opening Cheat Engine and figuring out how to program what you need for it, I have no idea how people do that. I'd have to read the, the notes on it. Obviously, like, the only people I've seen use it are the people practicing for speedruns, like Distortion and Geno mainly, and then a little bit of V-Sweat using it. But yeah, I'd have all this stuff if I was one of those um, practicers that liked to do that. I just, some, something about practicing like that for me, I don't, it bothers me. Like, personally, not, not like people doing it, but I, it wouldn't, to me, feel like it's good practice for some reason. Because I think I would get too carried away with knowing... There's no consequence to making the mistake, but then when there is, I seem to learn a lot faster. Have I played with Aggie? Uh, I played I played against Aggie in tournaments before for different things, and I've been on his team for certain stuff before, I believe. I, I actually I met him. I met him in Vegas. I met him and uh, Parky. There's a subreddit called <laughs> Shitty Shitty Food. I think you get your food taste from there. Purple. Oh, I there's tons of things I do with food that like people would just not like. I've gotten comments, even um like that's what I mean. These jelly beans are so disgusting because I can handle bad things. So if I'm telling you they're gross, I'm not even trying to exaggerate. They're actually that bad. So yeah, like I can I could dry scoop supplements and stuff like that. Not that I would, but like I have before, like greens and stuff and disgusting. Again, the iodine dropper straight with nothing to chase it other than water. Um, I can drink, even when I when I used to have alcohol, like I could drink um, Bacardi 151 like tequila and stuff straight without any chase ever. Like I didn't care. That stuff doesn't bother me. It's more of like, uh, it, it, I don't know. There's something with the beans that are just, ugh. they they found a way. They found a way to make them really gross where it brings back traumatic memories or makes new ones. Take your pick. <laughs> All right, let's heal. <laughs> Yo, oh, <gasps> dude, why can't the gargoyle kill the skeletons? And why are the big skeletons chasing? I don't like that attack. That takes too much time. We need something quick. All oh, the punches, dude. If I can cut his tail, I think we can maybe do something here. Ugh. Oh. oh my god. Okay, this this is really scary, dude. This is one of those times they tell you about where it's like it's a legend, it's a myth. You you don't know if it's real or not, but it seems believable enough, so you kinda listen to it. It's one for the grandchildren. Oh, there we go. So now you can go and uh, live your life, enjoy it, have some uh, have some nice experiences, and then when you have your own family, or if you already do, and then their family has family and all that, you could be like a great grandfather, even maybe grandfather, grand grandmother, grand person, and just be like. Back in my day, I used to watch that Squilla Killer stream, and I remember he was on the randomizer, and he got to Nito, and it was randomized with Sanctuary Guardian, so he had to take that thing and be like, God damn it, I gotta switch that for something else, and then the bonfire for Seath didn't work, so he switched it, and it activated, he went back to Nito, it was gargoyles, but he was running around in circles forever. I had never seen Ring Around the Rosie like that in my lifetime, I'll tell you, boy. And, it's like, and then uh, the kid would be like, Granddad, can I go play Nintendo? He'd be like, it's too damn bad. <laughs> um, or grant or or something else, you know. I don't <laughs> Back to bed. <laughs> Are you weird for putting chips on sandwiches? That's actually a normal thing. I've seen chefs do that before, like people that make. I don't know why I quit out there. Sorry. <laughs> I felt like I just completed a significant achievement, so you can tell. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're done. That felt like we were done right there. We're not done. It's either very close to being done or far from over, depending on what we see next, so. Bonfire glitched out here too, that's really unfortunate. I don't know why these bonfires glitch. 
but there might be notes in the randomization saying that if this happens, you're supposed to use the cheats, because I've seen that in mods before, where they're like, okay, this doesn't work perfectly, so you might need to warp and use a tool. So I'm just gonna have to revert it to normal again. Dude, this, the footstep sound made me think there was an enemy. <laughs> I'll pause the timer for a second and then revert to normal. That's so much quicker than it doing a new seed. Chips on a sandwich is a natural extension of eating chips. It's not too bad. I don't think that's a problem. I'm trying to think of if I even tried that before. I oh, you know what? I had a I haven't done that myself, but I've I've had a um like a bowl from a place, a poke bowl that had chips in it and I thought it was actually lotus, but it was a potato chip because they ran out of lotus and I was kind of disappointed so I took them out. It made it sort of soggy. It had a uh, sea <laughs> had seaweed salad, um, like purple rice, uh, beef, and like a bunch of other different things. But then it had chips on it, and I was like, I don't want seaweed salad and potato chips. That was the the only time I had the potato chips on the food that I didn't expect. All right, win. Let's go. Your cat's getting heavy on your chest, but you don't want to move her, dude. I used to have a cat where it would dig its claws into my chest. It would do like the kneading thing. And I'd want to move it, but I'm like, ugh. If I move it, then it's going to come back again anyways. Or if I get up even anyways, like, it's just going to come back and do it again, so. And I'm kind of comfy, so it's like, I might as well just let it happen, you know. It's like if you have to go to the bathroom really badly, but it's like you're so tired that you're like, I could just sleep again and wake up and then just go when I get up. But then when you get up, it's like worse because you didn't go. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's see what we got. Look at that hand, dude. That's so crispy. It's a hand that has uh, roasted nice and firmly in a thousand fires. Turned to a nice dry beef jerky. Aged with uh, intelligence, class, and wisdom. You need to get some stuff for those sandwiches sometime soon. You're craving them. Okay, so what, what do you put on it other than chips? I almost wonder if you could crust the bread. Like, you might be able to, like, glaze the bread with some sort of oil or something that allows it to, like, kind of sit on it and, like, not move as much, and then crunch them and then make it, like, a coating. But I don't know what you would do where it wouldn't be soggy, and it would have to be, like, a, a type of bun or a bread that's not letting all that moisture into the inside of it. But I feel like I could see someone crusting a bread with, uh, with chips. Just, which is unnecessary and silly, but I could see it, though. Cubed ham, Doritos, and shredded cheese. <laughs> Dude, that, that does not sound appealing at all to me because, for one, why cubed ham versus sliced ham? And second of all, I don't have anything against Doritos or shredded cheese, but like, but what? why not other things too? <laughs> why not like, I don't know, some sort of vegetable? <laughs> or like a sauce or something too? Is it randomized? Oh yes, I, for, I have to redo it, I forgot. Um, okay, wait. We're gonna go back. See, I thought it was gonna be close to being over, but it wasn't. And it wasn't even because of the randomization being activated, it was because it wasn't activated. Cubed ham is better than slices. I'm gonna test that. I'm gonna eat things in different shapes and see how they taste. <laughs> oh wait, why'd I click continue as well? <laughs> no one saw that. There we go. You're a big Italian sandwich guy? What, what is the example of an Italian sandwich? And, and where's the point where it becomes not Italian? Like, what are the parameters of that? I'm wondering. Like, if I went into Italy and I made... Like, if I was in Sicily and I made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, is it an Italian sandwich still? Like, were the peanuts sourced from the place? Like, nearby? Like, was the grapes, you know, were they grown over there? Did I make it myself? I feel like we can debate this. <laughs> the brand of diced ham you would get it has a bunch of brine in the packaging. Oh, that sounds pretty good. I'm not as big of a fan of, of ham specifically, but like in like when it's sliced and everything, and if it's like real, it doesn't seem super weird or fake or anything. 
I guess depending on where you get it from. Yeah, it's it, it's not bad at all. It's pretty damn good. But I rarely eat it though. And then like there's a a friend I have where their their family like they have like crazy crazy dinners for holidays and his mom makes ham, but she does something to it where it's like it would convince me to eat ham almost every day if it tasted like that just because it, and it's like pineapple glaze too so there's a pineapple sauce but there's a glaze with it that it like kind of cooks it's like it's cooked into it and you can dip it in the stuff too oh my god <laughs> and it reminds me of when you have pineapple on pizza with ham like the hawaiian pizza but better like gourmet like super super high end as long as you do the italian hand gesture while eating it's an italian sandwich <laughs> All right, sounds good. <laughs> so, dude, we got randomization of Silver Knight, which is pretty interesting. I'm going to kill him and see what he drops. Because the key items aren't changed. I wonder if they have a like a preset drop that drops every time. Okay, we're going to have to go to parry skills. Nothing. Wow. Parry the world. There's still there's there's a place in the YouTube channel for a parry the world run still. I just don't know if I actually have the knowledge of parrying or like what enemies can be parried. I'd have to actually read up on that. I know a lot of them, but like for example, what if there was a weird one where you can do it only with a certain type of item? I think that would be also really fun to do, parry the world, but using a great sword, two-handed on Dark Souls 2, because the animation for it's so bad that when you actually hit it, even in multiplayer too, it's just like the most satisfying thing because it's actually guessing. Like you're not able to do it um, with reading it as easily for most attacks. Uh, Jack, it is. Yeah, we're almost done, dude. I'm going to be beating whoever's in here very quickly. I'm, I'm calling it. First try. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Well, oh, the health is pretty low. Well, Gwyn would definitely be easier than this, so this is a better ending. And we had Calamid, I can't complain about that. I wish we saw Artorius as one of the bosses. But rather than, like, that basic enemy. You know what, though? We could go back and fight him still. I get. Oh, actually, eh. I can't though, because in this game you have to end it. Okay, so if, if we don't die here, you guys are going to witness <laughs> something hor horrifying after this. This is going to be probably the best part of the stream. I'm going to eat all the remaining jelly beans in one bite. Uh, the last time we did a run like this, it wasn't as randomized on the game, but I ate 70-something jelly beans at once, and most of them were pretty disgusting from what it tasted like. Regardless of how many it was, it was uh, enough to... It was like the spirit bomb of bad flavor. So like if you think of like, these are like Hadoukens, like I'm getting blasted by like little fireballs, like this is like the spirit bomb. It's gonna be like a nuke inside me. And that didn't kill me, that's crazy. Yeah, so Senorita, this is randomized um, items and enemies on the unfair setting. I'm gonna do very unfair next, and we're not gonna we're gonna switch key items around. We'll do a triple randomizer with Foggy with the hardest settings for everything. Um, that'll probably not be a single day thing, and I'll find some other twist to it. I want to add a fourth thing to that as well, and then just do the most brutal randomization you could possibly. Maybe even change the AI, make it more aggressive with a challenge table of some sort. Add double enemies, <laughs> I don't know. Be crazy. Obviously I want it to be doable, but I, I, I want to definitely try out the other settings. And then we absolutely need to figure out a way to do the full randomization on DS2, because that is still yet to be done. And I think it would actually be more fun than this in some cases, just because like there's so many more things to randomize. 
Uh, and like I haven't even done a full run of DS2 in a long time. Fight Frost and Smash and eat a handful of random jelly beans each time I lose. <laughs> I can't make that the bet though, because if he loses, he's not able to do that because he's celiac, right? So he can't eat those. It would have to be something that, like, we could do, like, we eat a pound of beef every time we die, but then I would die first because he only eats beef, really. Nag, so yeah. <laughs> Call it, like, triple bypass bet. Full Dark Souls 3 randomizer. Uh, have I done that? Yes, I think so. I don't know if the settings were turned up to the highest. I'm pretty sure it was like a combination of high and medium settings. Maybe like a couple ones that allowed key items and NPCs to stay the same. But I, th I think I did the triple randomizer on DS3. If not, if you guys can't find it, then I, then I will. 100%. There's got to be a full attempt for everything that I can with all the, all the randomizers. And apparently there's a new Sekiro mod as well. And dude, there's like so many games that have come out that I have no idea of. Like, I just randomly will get uh, like a random trailer or an ad or someone will tell me about something. I'm like, what the hell is that? So I think I've missed a lot of releases of stuff too. Try out Wolong. Uh, Wolong is a... Uh... That's not Black Myth, right? That's that's Black Myth Wukong. Wolong is like uh, like Neo, right? It's like Chinese Neo, essentially. No. Oh my god. Dude, we, we can't. We can't lose on this one. Like, I might have to actually beat him with hot bars. I don't know if... Like, I can't use magic, but I can use lyricism. Thinking about buying it instead of Liza P. Instead of Liza P. <sighs> Man, I got a little bit lightheaded when you said that. I feel I feel faint now, dude. I don't know if it's the jelly beans or I'm just like I don't know. I had such a such a vibe inside me that was strong. It was enough to get through this whole thing, and I don't know if I can go on now. Wo Long instead of Liza P. Looks kind of boring. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean, obviously, everybody's got their preference. I actually like Liza P so much that that actually hit hard. Not in a way where I'm like, you're wrong, but more so in a way like, I'm like, how? How? How are there not more supporters of the cause, you know? <laughs> Liza P is so good that it's like, uh, it's it's an experience. It's not even just a game, in my opinion. It became something that was like a bigger deal than I thought it was going to be by quite a bit. And I don't even think the advertising did it justice either. I don't even believe the advertising appealed enough for me to guarantee buying it. It was just like, I'll check it out. Sometimes there'll, there'll be trailers for things where I'm like, that's enough to, to get it. Armored Core was like that. I was like, I'm just going to play it. I don't care. But they also made it look really cool, right? Doesn't vibe for you? There is definitely an atmosphere in Liza P that's really unique, in my opinion. I was even thinking about it earlier, too. I was like, I do want to play it again soon. Just, it has been a while. I'm going to have to brush up on it. But that run that you guys saw where I made the save file at Simon Manus, and I think it took eight hours, part of the reason I didn't go back to it and stream it again right away was because I did a run off stream that was literally so good that it could have actually been like a pretty cool video as well. And I was like, this is going to be a really hard run to beat. I beat the game in like almost, I think it was like three hours, just over three hours. And I didn't even die that many times. I actually did hitless on probably more than half the game. And then I was like, Ugh, why did it have to be on practice? <laughs> um, and then obviously I got, you know, more focused on the other stuff like the music. And then I did a little bit of practice for Smash with Faraz as well. But I, I almost wish I was streaming that one run. It was so good. All right, there we go. <sighs> Gwyn is dead, apparently. We got the lightning spear. <laughs>
just going to set everything on fire. And then as my character sets everything on fire, let me just make sure you guys have a proper view of this. This is the moment that we waited for, that I certainly did not want to have happen, but we waited for it. <sighs> All right. Let me just make this big enough so you can actually see everything. Wait, is there, is there a delay on me speaking with the camera? Dude, I don't think it's synchronized. It's like behind or something. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It looks like it's behind. All right, this is how many jelly beans are left, guys. The entire thing. We ate so many of them. And I say we because I feel like you guys felt the pain, but this is it. Ew. I'm getting a few good ones. I can feel some good ones. Mmm. Oh, that's brutal, dude. <laughs> Give me a second, guys. Enjoy the music. Why is the music not playing for the outro? What's the best song? Why is it not playing? Oh my god, don't vomit. I'm not gonna vomit, but like... I got really lucky because there was actually a decent amount of good ones left. So I'm just trying to chew carefully. I feel like there's one stuck on one of my teeth that's really bad. Yep. Ew. Okay. Ugh. Oh, dude, that's not good. I don't... Oh. Oh, yeah, my stomach can definitely feel that. <laughs> Masochist vibes? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I just ate a lot of sugar. We ate the whole box of jelly beans. I mean, sure, that's normal for people that like jelly beans that taste good. That's fine, whatever. But for me, I don't really do that that often. Um, I can eat meals. I can put meals down, but I don't, I don't eat candy like that. So <laughs> that's crazy for that sake. And then also the flavor. My mouth, I don't know how long it's going to take for it to taste normal, but I'm going to do something in the next five minutes to like remove the flavor. I don't know what I might brush my teeth or something like that and then just try to maybe have another flavor that's more powerful before I eat. Oh, my God. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a super fun stream to, you know, get back to the normal stuff that we do. But, dude, that was crazy. Is there any questions you guys have about this experience or anything you want to talk about before we have to go? Because I did give some updates on what's been going on. Um, when I took a break, I did make a music channel. It's going to be live on Sunday. Um, I did show you guys some of the music that's on there specifically. I guess for the sake of the YouTube video, just to shout it out, um, it will be in the pinned comment of this video when it's out already. And you will have already seen videos popping up on it, at least the first one by the time this video goes up on the main YouTube channel. But you might be watching the full VOD on the second channel, and you would have already seen it when we took a break, probably, um, if I just put it unedited. And then also, I'm going to show anybody that didn't get to see what's going to be on there. Just a couple more, you know, 30-second sneak peeks here and there. Um, but if you guys comment on these videos what music you like and you want to see me play, it doesn't matter what the genre is, it can be anything. I just want to kind of take that as a challenge and pick some of them sometimes and actually do them. And if there's enough requests over time, I believe that I can get through a decent amount. And it's also going to help a lot too, just for ideas. But here's an example. Let me see if I can... It's not... Screen. Music, here we go. Perfect. So, like, one of the ideas was for the music channel that I would go back in time and play music with myself in previous years when I did the guitar videos on the main channel. So all that stuff on the main channel and the playlist for the music, it'll still stay there. I'm not going to re-upload it on the second channel raw. I'm going to actually go back and collaborate with myself. 
so I can put a new spin on it. So, you know. So this is the Contortionist. This is a uh, Clairvoyant. Um, and the person that I'm playing with right here, other than me, so I'm, th these are both me. And then this is Lamour, or Soul Fruit is his name in chat. You see the name Soul Fruit, you can say good job on the guitar. He did a really good job covering this. He's got a really beautiful guitar too. But yeah, I'm not gonna show you everything, but that's that. And then a song that you guys would actually probably know or heard of at some point. Um, we, we also have this one. which is Everlong, so if you guys like Foo Fighters, specifically. And this one had a little bit of an edit where my editor put the actual album on the wall like a poster and changed the lighting and stuff, which is really cool. So that's an example of that. Again, I don't want to like show you the whole thing so you can actually just watch it. But that's the idea, and as we go, um, I'm going to actually be scaling the quality and the, uh, the, the like you know the performance level of this stuff because my goal is by the end of the year I want to be able to improvise four different genres on the drums, play one live show with a band of some sort, and then also um, have like content literally every single month, multiple videos per month for the whole year, and see a progression of getting better um, as well as like making the videos better, multiple camera angles, multiple cameras, um, better lighting, stuff like that. But this is just like the very basic start. I'm trying to do it better than I did before, as you can see with that music uh component that was me playing guitar from way back it wasn't filmed the, the craziest way or anything just the gopro on the desk so i'm trying to do a bit better with that that's the goal um follow the channel if you want it's in the pinned thing the banner above the chat if you can see it if you can't i'm going to put it in chat here and it'll be live sunday with the first video being the the cover that i did with lamore of the contortionist song and then Tom Sawyer, I'm going to record as well. I don't have enough time to do it tonight because we stream so long, but I will be doing it tomorrow before we even do anything, if I do stream tomorrow. So I'll let you guys know. If I finish that, then we'll be back again tomorrow with some more stuff, um, and I'll, I'll figure out something. Either way, um, thank you so much for enjoying the run. We did it. Here are all the socials. Dude, the flavor in my mouth is so bad right now. <laughs> my God. We have the Twitter. Um, the Instagram, the YouTube, the Discord, the TikTok, and then there's a long play YouTube channel that is specifically for like videos that are unedited. So if you want to see this full run, it's going to be on there hopefully tomorrow. Um, other than that, I will find someone I can host, and then we will we will go off into the ether. <laughs>